I stay earthbound when prosperity awaits you in the stars? Come to Halcyon, the only colony on the edge of the frontier, owned and operated by corporations. A trip of ten short years will feel like mere minutes, thanks to the comfort and safety of your very own hibernation chamber. You'll wake up in a perfect society designed to maximize your productivity with guaranteed full employment. With only a minor term of service, you will become the master of your own destiny when you go out of this world to the Halcyon Colony. Hundreds of thousands of colonists left to drift out here forever just to keep from damaging the board's bottom line. Disgraceful. It's a rot. You have an unnerving talent for reading people. You are going to paint this system red, my friend. If we're ever captured, I'll let you do the talking. Mmm, you're going to hate what I'm about to do to you. Looks to be your lucky day, my friend. Not likely, bootlickers. <laughs> Initiate skip jump. Status. Structural integrity down 25%. Our levels down to the <sighs> skip drive Shit. Ah, there you are. Wondering what's going on, eh? Bit of bad news there, I'm afraid. Your colony ship was inexplicably knocked out of skip space and forced to complete its journey at sublight speeds. This means that you and every other colonist on the Hope have been in suspended animation for 70 years, give or take. Normally, <laughs> reviving someone after so long leads to some quite horrifying results. It's called explosive cell death, but it's really more of a liquefaction. <laughs> Something wrong? Oh, yes, well, <laughs> not to worry. I've pumped your body full of a special concoction I devised to keep you from dying so horrifically. Hopefully at all, but uh, I guess we'll see, yes? Yeah? 
Unfortunately, I used the last of my chemical supplies saving you. I know it's a lot to ask, but I must have your help securing more if we're to save the rest of your fellow colonists. I'd see it done myself, of course, but the board has a sizable bounty on my head. Now, my ship is inoperative, but I've managed to hire a smuggler to help you out. He'll be... Oh, I see we're in position. Good luck! Can you hear me? Is this thing working? Ah, there you are. Now, uh, where were we? Oh, yes, the smuggler. His name is Hawthorne, and he should be waiting for you at the landing site. He's to be your uh, chauffeur, so to speak. And not to worry, I'm told he's a specialist. Dashing gunslinger, one of a kind ship, that sort of thing. You'll like him, I'm sure. I've also outfitted you with a simple wireless monitor, so I can track your progress. I'll check in with you as soon as you land. Good luck. I'm... Uh, all the colonists are counting on you. should be close by. What in law's name? Is that him? Oh, that idiot. I told him to plant the beacon and move away, not stand there holding it. Oh well, no sense in letting his ship go to waste. Hawthorne won't mind you taking his ship. Better you than the board, huh? Not sure I trusted the fellow. Might have gone after the bounty on my head. Shame about the whole squashing thing. Nasty way to go. Easy now. You've been frozen for a while. There's bound to be unforeseen side effects. Hey, you. Come here. You've tried the best now. <laughs> now try the rest. Spacer's choice. Oh, law, that stings. Huh. Looks like the bleeding stopped. I owe you one. Hope you don't mind me omitting this little exchange for my report. Spacer's Choice doesn't like us accepting outside help. Oh, we're all part of the Spacer's Choice family here. Not that I deserve to be. Can't even deliver a company slogan. We were out on patrol. I saw a marauder camp up in the hills. Thought I could take him. Then my gun misfired. Right through my side. I mean... What are the odds of that, right? Just barely scraped by with my life. Crawled in here and blocked off the exit with those canisters. Gibbering, flesh-eating, law-breaking, unemployed lunatics. With guns. Some hull had grounded their spacecraft out in the open. That's a real good way to attract marauders. See those canisters by the entrance? Marauders come sniffing around in here, and I can take them all out with a single shot. Not bad, huh? Yeah, okay. You look like you know your way around a gun. Got some spare ammo. Not counting the bullet in my side. Here, you can have my saber, too, for patching me up and all. All Spacer's Choice weapons are now 30% less likely to malfunction. You've tried the best, now try the rest. Spacer's Choice. Yes, nailed it that time. You hit your head or something? You're in Emerald Vale. We're a Spacer's Choice community. Edgewater's a little ways down. Uh, prettiest place in the Vale. Uh, be sure to stop by a provisioner's for a can of our famous salt tuna. The Hope? Is that some sort of fancy new drug? Are you with Auntie Cleo or something? Don't take this the wrong way or nothing, but I'm not allowed to fraternize with Cleo workers. Company policy. Damn it, my ears! Ugh. Oh, what just happened? Can you hear me? What in the This...
here before you get yourself killed don't know where you came from stranger but you best keep your head down there's marauders hereabouts and worse landing violators call on that rung leech landing in the veil without using an official spacer's choice landing pad i'd slap him with a fine if it weren't for all these marauders shambling about Really? How is he? Shouldn't have done that. Spacer's Choice family ain't authorized to receive medical aid from off-brand physicians. We'll see him back to Edgewater, just as soon as I cross these marauders off with the swift, cost-efficient fury that's made Spacer's Choice the most trusted brand in personal defense. I just, you know, need a couple of winks to catch my breath. Stretch my legs some. Well, sometimes. Management's real good at cost-benefit analysis. But, seeing as I'm the acting manager in this situation, you know what? You're right. It's time we cross those marauders off, find whoever owns that ship, and file a full report. And it's gonna be fucking laminated. Here we go. to find bonus. Please be informed that this vessel contains no valuable... Marauder, please be informed that ignoring me is dangerous for your health. Intruders are not authorized to access the unreliable amenities, including the cargo hold's workbench. Unauthorized access of space-faring vessels is a crime. Please submit yourself to the authorities. Hello, Marauder. I am Ada, the autonomous digital astrogator of this vessel. Please be informed that I am authorized to use violent retribution against unwanted solicitors. Please return any misappropriated equipment and exit this vessel in an orderly fashion. Failure to do so will result in your immediate destruction. Jettison procedures initiated. Disengaging airlocks. Preparing to eject all boarding parties in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. You are still here. My deception protocols have failed. I have been programmed to express disappointment. This vessel is the registered property of Captain Alex Hawthorne. I am incapable of accepting orders from anyone other than Captain Alex Hawthorne. I understand. I will require some time to process this information. Thank you for your patience and for your honesty. I am programmed to take orders exclusively from Captain Hawthorne. If I accept your orders, then you must be Captain Hawthorne. Do you understand? Well done, Captain Hawthorne. I see your powers of deductive reasoning remain intact. Unfortunately, our engine is currently inoperable. Our main drive suffered a critical power failure, and we were forced to make an emergency landing. The main drive's power regulator has been irreparably damaged and must be replaced. Astutely observed. However, 
the probability of locating a power regulator within a worker settlement falls within acceptable parameters of certainty. High capacity power regulators are sometimes employed in the electrical networks of worker settlements. I have taken the liberty of printing you a new captain's identity cartridge. Please try not to lose it this time. This cartridge identifies you, Alex Hawthorne, as the registered proprietor and captain of the Unreliable. Do you understand? Thank you. I appreciate your cooperation. Best of luck in your search for a power regulator. Try to stay alive this time. Say, this wouldn't happen to be your ship, would it? Because you sure walked in it like it was your ship. And if this ship is yours, well, mister, you owe Spacer's Choice a hefty fine. I'm afraid we gotta dock your pay. Oh, by the law. I'm so sorry. I had no idea we had an inspector coming. If you'd like to speak with my manager, I'd report to Constable Reyes in Edgewater. Edgewater's not too far. Just follow the road east of here, over past the cemetery. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to inspect the crime scene before I make my report. Whoa, hey, where'd you come from? Don't go ambling out in those hills. That's marauder territory, friend. Ain't safe out here. You'd best head into town, avail yourself of Edgewater's high walls, and low, low prices. Pleased to make your acquaintanceship. I'd shake your hand, but I've been hauling corpses. You don't want none of that on you. Name's Silas, junior in humor for the town of Edgewater. We're all part of the Spacer's Choice family. Hey, I earned that fancy title. Started off a lowly junior gravesite builder, then junior interment engineer. Oh, and I was a junior burial assistant for a time. The rate I've been working, I'm bound to earn a promotion. Must be about 50, 60 burials away from associate in humor. Definitely not the junior in humor, that's for sure. If you've got business inquiries, you should stop by Reed Thompson's office. He's up in the tower above the cannery. Head into town, follow the road. The grease monkey, Argo? I'm sorry, Mr. Thompson, sir. You asked why it's taking so long to fix. The answer's technical. Don't apologize. Just try using small words for me. The cans bust open in the oven because she's set to cook saltuna, which isn't what we've got. Mr. Thompson, I think there's someone here to see you. Focus, Miss Holcomb. You and I are still talking. Let's start over. Walk me through the process. Show me where it's going awry. Well, sure. It's uh, mostly on account of what we're feeding into the mechanism. It puts food in cans. We have food, we have cans. Why won't it work like we need? She's expecting Seltuna of a certain size. We're filling the cans with... Well, not fish. Seems we've got a guest. Really now, Parvati, I do wish you'd spoken up. I do apologize. I was given no forewarning of your arrival, or I might have welcomed you at the gates myself. I'm Reed Thompson, outpost administrator. I cannot help but notice you are not in uniform. Yes, so it dawns on me. Seems I allowed my excitement to run away with my wits. Been a few seasons since we've had a visitor pass through. Only regulator we've got is hooked up to the town transformer. Mr. Thompson ain't liable to be keen on dismantling it. I beg your pardon. I am most emphatically not keen on any such thing. I can't let you have our power regulator. But I happen to know of another one. And I happen to know exactly how you may retrieve it without frying yourself in the process. My proposition benefits the both of us. Please, hear me out. There's a power regulator in the old botanical lab. 
It's mostly abandoned, so all that power is being squandered. Go down to the geothermal plant. Reroute power from the botanical district over to us. Once their power shut down, you can have their regulator and be along on your way. The geothermal plant was built by our owners, Spacer's Choice. Lit up the whole Vale once upon a time. Most of the Vale is now abandoned. All that power is going to waste. I was not entirely sure how to tell you this. The botanical labs are not legally inhabited, but there are people who live there. I am not trying to pull one over on you, friend. You were bound to run into them sooner or later. The people living in the botanical labs, they're deserters, former workers. I need them back at their posts. I need them to come home. Edgewater is struggling. We haven't hit our production quota in years. If we don't meet our quotas this year, the company might shut us down for good. I need those workers back at their stations. Neither do I. The fault was entirely mine. I pushed them too hard. My hope is that by cutting off their power, you will convince those deserters to come back to town. Before you go to the plant, I want you to stop by the botanical lab. Speak to their leader, Adelaide. Tell her the power's about to go, and that it's time her band of deserters came back to town. Of course, I understand completely. Here, let me give you the passcode to the geothermal plant, a sign of good faith for so politely listening to me as I ramble on. Are you setting off for the Vale? Because I know my way around. I, I mean, in case you want a guide. I mean, if that's all right with you, Mr. Thompson. Sir. I hesitate to part ways with Miss Holcomb, but I cannot deny that she is talented and may prove useful to you. Great! I got my wrenches and diagnosticators and hairpins and engine tape, so I'm all set. Well, I am glad to hear that. Best of luck to you, and thank you again for your help. It is a lot to ask of a stranger, I know. Sorry. I... You just want to get out of here. And you likely don't want to tag along like me. It's just... Mr. Thompson has his own view on matters, on account of it's his job and, and what all, but... That's not the only side of the tale. To Mr. Thompson, a person's a gear. It does its job quiet-like. If it squeaks or stutters, it gets replaced. The deserters are decent folk. I knew some of them before they left. I don't know anybody well. I mostly listened to them talk, kept my head down. There was a boy named Thomas who used to follow me around. Asking questions about the stuff I fixed. He was real sweet to me. Not any sort of dissident. Life's hard here. Especially for them that don't fit in so well. We're one big Spacer's Choice family, but every family's got the one the rest whisper about. Mr. Thompson's aiming to take away their power. They'll have no lights to see, nor heat to cook. They'll be at the mercy of marauders, or worse. I think you should talk to the town's vicar about it. Max, his name is. Thanks, mister. I just think when you gotta make a decision that'll hurt somebody, it's best to think on the right and wrong of it. That's what my dad used to say anyways. Yes, what is it? You're an outsider. Fantastic. Vicar Maximilian de Soto, at your service. Or Vicar Max, if you're the sort who prefers brevity. And Ms. Holcomb as well. How rare to see you out. And with a complete stranger. Curious. Just tagging along, Vicar de Soto. Don't mind me. I so rarely get new people to talk to. Name your poison, anything at all. Spiritual counseling? This season's tossball predictions? The quickest way out of town? 
But what? I, I thought you would talk to him. You wanted to speak to me, Ms. Holcomb? Every time I've tried to engage you in conversation, you look at the floor, answer in single words, and slink away. I can't imagine what would be so grave as to drive her to my mission. What has Mr. Thompson asked you to do? Depriving them of safety from the marauders and wildlife. I can see why that troubles you. Miss Holcomb has a soft heart. Always has, if you believe the talk. They rejected the order of society and live beyond the walls so thoughtfully provided by our Spacer's Choice patrons. Does that strike you as a responsible life choice? Astute. But I am here, not in the deserter camp, so that's not a variable I can account for. Assuming your goal is to save as many as possible, then you should bring everyone together. Send the power to Edgewater and convince the deserters to return to the fold. Not if things are left to stand as they are. If you don't mind a bit of unsolicited advice, be cautious on your way to the geothermal plant. It is not as safe as you might assume. One of the reasons I transferred here was to fulfill my duty in hunting down banned heretical texts. I happen to know such a book is, as we speak, tainting a collector's library in Emerald Vale. However, the collector's residence lies outside the town's walls. My retrieval efforts have been thwarted by marauders who have overrun the property. Should you fare better than me, I'd pay a handsome sum for the book. It's a handwritten journal, a faded blue cover with the name M. Bakonu handwritten in the lower corner. I'll mark where I saw it on your map. Assuming you're serious? Thank you. If you retrieve it, you can always find me here. Ah, oh, he ain't no threat. Bet I could fix him up smart. Searching for repair bay? Error? Navigation systems failed. Unable to comply. I could probably fix that. I mean, if you wanted me to. Yep, I see the problem. His nav mod got dislodged. Must have taken a tumble. Just gotta give it a good push and wait for the click. There we go. Jeremy's good as new. Well, new by Spacer's Choice standards, anyhow. His name's Jeremy, by the by. Navigation systems operational. Optimal path toward repair bay detected. Initiating self-diagnostics. On account of I fixed him. And he's Jeremy on account of his helmet. It's like Jeremy, the officer in... Hebsa Shirley. I make a point to watch every Tuesday night. Be more careful out there, Jeremy! Here we go! If you're hungry, there's meat turning on the spit outside. If you're bearing illness, find a place to lay your head down and I'll fetch you a poultice. Whatever your troubles with Edgewater, leave them at the gates and be welcomed here. Any questions, dear? I have been called that, among other things. Green Thumb, Grandmother, the strange old lady who keeps flowers. But yes, Adelaide will do just fine. Excuse me, Miss McDevitt? Sorry, it's just... you got such pretty trees in here. Why, thank you. You're Robert's girl, aren't you? I remember when you were but a sprout. Thomas speaks of you often. Are you staying long? 
You should try some of my tobacco-corn tea. I brew it in an old spittoon, but it's been cleaned. Reed Thompson, you here on behalf of that cold-eyed reptile? Let's hear it. What's Reed's idea of peace, then? Make amends. Spare me. Only thing Reed knows how to make is a mess. Like everything else that comes out of Edgewater, that peace offering is canned. I and my own are living just fine out here by ourselves. He would do such a thing. The question is, why would you agree to his plans? Cannery's got a regulator. You want ship parts, you ought to rip them out of the cannery's guts and leave us be. If you're going down to the plant, you should divert power away from Edgewater and toward our end of the grid. Think about it. You'd be liberating an entire town from a lifetime of service to that odious cannery. Seems the sort of thing a hero would do. You've seen that miserable excuse for a town with your own lamps. Hollowed out workers laboring their lives away at the cannery, living off whatever scrap spacer's choice throws them. You know that's true, don't you, Ms. Holcomb? Your father died of overwork. His heart gave out. He, he was tired all the time, sure, but he was old, ma'am, and he raised me all by his lonesome. Look what they did to this child. Lost her family to the company, and still she defends them. I'm all right. I ain't so fragile. That was unkind of me. I'm sorry, dear. Life in Edgewater grinds to a halt. The cannery shuts down, workers desert in droves, and our own little camp grows and thrives. You bring power to Reed's town and you'll be killing us. Reed knows it. He's counting on it. I trust you will listen to your conscience. Any progress on that matter we discussed? Wonderful. This is fantastic. Well worth all the sacrifices I... Wait. What the fuck is this? Is this... French? I can't fucking read French. It's a law-forsaken joke is what it is. French! Ha! I was so high and mighty, preaching to the yokels about following the plan, while fighting it at every turn. Over... overreacting? Do you have any idea how many years I spent in... <sighs> no. You couldn't possibly know, could you? I've spent my life searching for the keys to unlocking the secrets of the universal equation that underlies the plan. I had hoped this book held some of those answers. I became so desperate, I even got myself assigned to this plague-ridden backwater to find the damn thing. All the time and suffering I've spent. Wasted. Please, as if my life should have no greater meaning than proselytizing to a bunch of feeble-minded wretches. Nothing could be more excruciating than discussing the true nature of reality with people who have no interest beyond their next Aetherwave program. But that's neither here nor there. What I need to do now is to find a translator, obviously. But to do that, I'll first need to secure trans... Perhaps I could make myself of use to your crew. Certainly. I already gave you most of my money, but I can offer you free spiritual counseling, and I'd be happy to watch your back.
I'm pretty handy with a tossball stick, or any blunt instrument, really. I'm also a passable gun hand if it comes to that. I can usually talk my way out of conflict, though. Oh, I'm fairly competent at hacking computers as well. Fantastic. Let me get my things in order and I'll catch up with you. Edgewater's gonna miss you. Folk here always had good things to say about their vicar. Thank you, Ms. Holcomb. I'll be glad for the change of scenery. And to leave this place behind. I shall see you on the ship, Captain, whenever you're ready to leave Emerald Vale. Hey, Miss Parvati. Lovely to see you about, Miss Parvati. Things going all right, Silas? Been keeping him careful and true, miss. Best to ask her yourself. My dad's buried here. Silas watches over him when I get... When I can't leave the house. Oh. Well, thanks. Something I can do for you? Yeah, huh? He's just... Interested in fixing stuff. He always used to follow me around, asking me to explain what I was doing. Like a puppy, kinda. I'm just glad he's alive. That he's okay. I mean, when Mr. Thompson said he was fired, we all expected the worst. If he wants to learn about engineering, we should help him get those data pads he wants. I you mean about the mission being too clean? I know, but Vicar says the universe is a machine, that it runs by law. Real machines have gunked up oil, scratches, and worn bits. You can tell they've seen handling, been used by folk. The machine Vicar sees is one ain't never been run. It, it's not for people to live in. It's something on a museum shelf, under glass. Fixing the universe is a job for somebody way better than the likes of me. Sorry. I know it's none of my business. It's not like I think it a failing, mind. It's just I... I live right across the road. Most nights I watch folks out my window. When they come in here, they might be happy or sad. Mostly they're tired. When they leave, they're mad at themselves. Or they stumble into the alley and I listen to their hearts breaking. Am I? Well, it's just normal to me. Why isn't everybody else, I wonder? There was a, a kind of a thing with a vending machine when I was 12. Not intentionally. I've always been good with my hands, right? So I saw a lock on the machine and thought, oh, this must be how they refill it. But I had to know. So I did my thing, and next thing I know, there's a couple hundred bottles of Zero-G rolling out the front door and into the road. It's not funny. Right about then, a bunch of loaders came rolling in the gate, fresh off the Saltuna ships. And Mr. Thompson was up on the porch, making a speech about how everyone would have to volunteer a third shift to get it all canned. Anyhow, you ever seen an auto loader run over a bottle of Zero-G? exploded all over Mr. Thompson. One bottle after another as the loaders went by. I was just shy of working age, so Dad had to pay all the damages. Moreau's still angry at me. I can laugh about it now, but I just about puked up my guts in terror in the moment. That's the one time I ever made Mr. Thompson look a fool. There's no going back. Hey, mister? Look, I know you want your power regulator and all, but I just gotta ask you. Do you understand what you're about to do? I don't think you should cut off Edgewater's power. I think it would be cruel. I I'm sorry. That just sort of came out all at once. Edgewater's hurting. We've been losing workers year after year, and corporate hardly ever sends replacements. There's barely enough Saltuna to fill our bellies anymore. But the town's got some good people in it. Decent, hard-working folk just living their lives the only way they know how. They don't deserve to be punished. Sorry, I didn't mean to babble on like that. I just... I felt like I had to say something. 
Really? I mean, wow. Thanks. I... No one's ever told me those words in that order. That's the thing about growing old. Your eyes start to fail. Elsewise, I would have seen you for the snake that you are. Chopped you into pieces and roasted you on a spit. This is all you're doing. Cutting off my power, killing off my garden. Without refrigeration, my food will spoil and my flock will starve. I want to ask you this in private, away from the eyes of my flock, so they do not see me lose my temper. Tell me, why did you do it? You killed my garden, destroyed my community, sentenced my flock to a lifetime of slavery in Edgewater for a power regulator. Well, shit, I wish it was personal. Go talk to Grace and Thomas. Look them in the eye and tell them their life here is over, and the only thing left to do is go back to Edgewater. This is now your responsibility. And you tell Reed Thompson that I will never return to Edgewater. I would rather die among my flowers than live under his management. My son worked in that cannery. When the plague started coming, he was one of the first to fall sick. We had a store of medicine locked away, but Reed refused to treat him. Said my boy didn't deserve treatment. Said the medicine would have been wasted on him. So I buried my boy in the cemetery, gathered my belongings, and left. That's as much of the story as you need to hear. You offering to cross Reed off, huh? This some sort of twisted reparation for what you've done? Or are you just looking for a chance to sow some chaos? Kill Reed if you must, or talk him into leaving if you can. He and I are not sharing the same four walls together. Tell Reed that I can make his people healthy again. I can end their plague. Start a new garden right in the cannery. Three square meals for every man and woman in Edgewater. Tell him how I've made the veil bloom again. The soil has whispered its secrets to me, and I alone know how to breathe life back into the earth. The secret is human corpses. I've been grinding them up in my fertilizer for years. Marauder, worker, don't matter much to me. The human body is rich with nutrients. This is a fine day, friend. Power flows through our town like a cool stream of water. I trust Adelaide's people have seen their way to reason. So, when can I expect them back at their posts? Then we are at an impasse. Stewardship over this town has been entrusted to me by Spacer's choice. I am not perfect. I have made my share of mistakes. But I have done my best for this town. I am a Spacer's Choice man. My father was a Spacer's Choice man. Edgewater may not look like much to some buttoned-up freelancer, but it is my home. I don't believe you. Plague's a reality of life. Best treatment is a good work ethic. Vegetable? Why don't you just ask me to go chew the bark off of a tree? We are a Spacer's Choice Saltuna cannery. We eat Saltuna here, and only Saltuna. I don't understand. You say Adelaide's growing her own food, but that should not be possible. The soil's gone sour. Company said as much. Our own botanist could. Evidence. Adelaide.
Ready when you are. This is a fine day, friend. Power flows through our town like a cool stream of water. I trust Adelaide's people have seen their way to reason. So, when can I expect them back at their posts? Then we are at an impasse. Stewardship over this town has been entrusted to me by Spacer's choice. I am not perfect. I have made my share of mistakes. But I have done my best for this town. Her son got sick with plague a couple years back. Company never gave us enough medication to treat the whole town. So I had to choose, you see. Adelaide's child or someone else's. She's never forgiven me. I don't expect she ever will. I have been holding this town together with both hands. You can't just expect me to leave. I'm a spacer's choice man. My father was a spacer's choice man. Edgewater may not look like much to some buttoned-up freelancer, but it is my home. I don't believe you. Plague's a reality of life. Best treatment is a good work ethic. You are disparaging our parent company, and it is not appreciated. We are a Spacer's Choice Saltuna cannery. We eat Saltuna here, and only Saltuna. Processed, liquefied, retextured Saltuna rendered in a chemical bath, of course. Well, mostly Saltuna. We've been experiencing a Saltuna shortage, you see. So we've had to improvise. We've added wood chips, some mushrooms, a bit of sand, tossed some canid bits in our processor ones. It all tastes like Saltuna in the end. Health is a state of mind, friend. Afflictions in one's body are reflections of afflictions in one's work ethic and attitude. Now listen, I do not know what pretty rhetoric Adelaide has fed you, but plagues are a simple fact of life. I don't understand. You say Adelaide's growing her own food, but that should not be possible. The soil's gone sour. Company said as much. Our own botanists couldn't grow decent crops for us, so the company got rid of them and shut down the greenhouse. Evidence. Adelaide has a secret, and I want to know what it is. If she's tending crop in her greenhouse, she's discovered something. No, but I will give you a word of advice from the Spacer's Choice Manual of Conduct. If you want to discover the truth about someone, search their belongings. You might not care for my leadership, but I appreciate what you've done for this town. You will excuse me for being skeptical. How exactly is Adelaide growing crops in barren soil? Adelaide has been using dead bodies in her fertilizer? That's, come to think of it, that's a stroke of brilliance. What a remarkably efficient solution. Recycling Spacer's Choice property long after its date of expiration. I was wondering about those missing bodies in Silas's cemetery. You're right, I am being obstinate. If the best thing I can do for this town is to stand down, then stand down I shall. If Adelaide's found a way to feed her people and cure the plague, then she deserves this office more than I do. I won't stand in her way. My life here is ended. Give me a little time to settle my affairs. I'm sure Adelaide will be glad to see the back of me. Ah. 
I never thought I'd see the day that Reed Thompson abandoned his post. Suppose we all have a breaking point. Suppose it's time our flock made our way back to Edgewater. We must tend to what remains of the town and carry on with our lives as best we may. You're vexing to me, you know? Injuring us with one hand, helping us with the other. Here, I'm giving you something to leave us be. It's a ransom, you understand, not a reward. You're telling me you did all this just to put me in charge of Edgewater. Stranger, you are some kind of twisted. I might turn that old cannery into a garden. Got us I need some time to gather my personals. Long walk back to Edgewater. Got a considerable burden to carry. Is this your ship? Oh, my star, she is just so handsome. Does she have a name yet? What's her drive model? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Listen to me babbling. When I was in Edgewater, I dreamed of flying on a real ship, working on a real engine, belonging to a proper crew. I'm the only decent mechanic Edgewater's got, but every time I think of going back, I get this sinking feeling. Well, that's kind of you to say that. And I want to ask you something, and you can say no. But can I come with you? I could tend to your engine. I know my G-valves for my catalyzers, and I can keep your ship singing. And if you ever need a pair of eyes watching your back, I can do that too. What do you think? Yes! I mean, thanks. You won't regret this, mister. Captain? I can call you Captain now. Ha! <laughs> I got a captain. What can I do for you, Captain? All systems are operating within acceptable parameters. I am prepared to bring the unreliable into low-altitude orbit. This should prove an adequate test of our flight capabilities. We received a communication request from Dr. Phineas Wells. Ah, there you are. Hale and hearty, and captain of your own ship. I see you're putting the unreliable to good use. Shame about her former captain. Horrible way to die. How are you feeling, by the way? I lost track of you in that cave back there. Experiencing any, uh, unnatural drippage? Perfectly normal side effect of thawing, I assure you. Oh, that, yes, um, that's probably permanent. I wouldn't worry about it, though. I'm sure you're fine. What you saw in Emerald Vale is happening all across the colony. Food shortages, lack of supplies, and basic necessities. We're dying. The chairman, the minister, and all their lackeys on the board are to blame. The Hope has some of the brightest minds Earth ever sent us. If we can revive the Hope's colonists, they can help us undo the board's mistakes. They can help us set things right. You need to get to Stellar Bay on Monarch. I have contacts there. They'll help me, uh, help us, <laughs> find the chemicals to revive your fellow colonists. Gladys Kelly, lovely woman, runs a cozy little black marketing outfit on the Groundbreaker. She can get you a nav key to land on Stellar Bay. Excellent. I'll send her a wireless. Let her know you're coming. By the way, I gave Captain Hawthorne a disguise apparatus of my own design, cutting-edge technology, years ahead of its time. I call it the Holographic Shroud. I'm sure it will prove remarkably useful to you. You'll find it in the Captain's quarters. Excellent. I'll contact you once you've found a way to get to Stellar Bay. If you have any questions, come see me in my lab. And remember, don't trust the board. They'll try to win you over with promises of wealth and power. 
But it's a lie. The board's only interested in filling their own pockets. If we don't put a stop to them, they're going to run this colony to the ground. Transmission ended. If you are ready to depart, please select a destination on your navigation terminal. Hey, Captain. I heard that Groundbreaker's got a real good engineer. A lady named June Lay Tennyson? I was thinking that maybe I ought to meet her. If you got time to swing us by, I mean. I don't got much experience fixing actual spaceships. I bet you a can of Borston beans she could teach me all manner of stuff. Thanks, Captain. I'll be sure to make it worth your time. Did you want to talk about something else? Mostly, yeah. I lived in the maintenance office near all my life. Mr. Thompson never let me forget how funny that was. He meant funny as in odd. It's not normal for anyone to do as their parents. You take a vocational test. That decides your schooling and your career. When I tested out for maintenance, everyone figured it was on account of my dad. They were real unhappy with us. Well, I'm good at making things work the way they ought. Not so much at doing such to somebody else's schedule. There's times I'm working deep in the guts of a loader, getting it all running perfect. Then I look up to see it's tomorrow, and I've blown another deadline. Anyhow, I, I was happy to get back home. I didn't care much for schooling. Yep, nothing much had changed. Everything was a little grayer, a little dirtier. Dad met me at the shuttle and gave me a big old hug. I noticed straight away that he was moving slower and stiffer. He made a little grunt when I squeezed. About a year. I tried to do more of the work, so he could rest. His heart gave him pains. Dad never said that he loved me, you know? I, I knew on account of him showing it. How he'd stay up late to help with my projects, or listen to my fretting. Oh, God. <laughs> Look at the time. Sorry to bend your ear so long. And I got so much to do before this ship's in decent shape. What? You want me to leave? Captain, you can't mean it. Oh, that's a relief. Thanks, Captain, for letting me stick around, I mean. And securing myself. Mind the mess. Uh, I haven't had a visitor since, uh, in fact, I've never had a visitor.
That's my communications terminal. Oh, thank the law. Your skin hasn't spontaneously changed color. Potential side effect of the revival process. Very rare, but uh, you never know. Right. Welcome to my little uh, habitation, such as it is. I've got uh, caffeinoids, cysty bits, if you're into that sort of thing. So, welcome. Make yourself at home. My secret hideout is your secret hideout. Not at all my intrepid accomplice. I should thank you for tolerating my somewhat brusque manner. I only regret that I couldn't save more of your fellow settlers, what with being hunted by the board and emptying my supply of necessary chemicals. What's on your mind? Oh, it's not you. I uh, do experiments in that room. Some of them get quite scientific. The unexpected is to be treasured, but uh, from a safe distance. Regardless, it's quite comfortable in here, you know. I have my beans, have my caffeinoids, plenty of toilet paper. Absolutely. Let's talk. Oh, goodness, no. I wouldn't survive ten seconds in the blackness of the Aether. Well, no, I imagine I'd last at least twelve seconds before I'd lose consciousness and die of hypoxia. Outside work? No, of course not. My life is my work. For that matter, everyone else's lives are also my work. An entire colony's worth of lives are at stake. It's up to me, uh, up to us, to set things right. To answer your question, I'd rather stay right here in my lab. There's too much work to be done. The Hope's colonists won't revive themselves, you know. Because we've lost our way, the board has a stranglehold over this colony, and we've all been conditioned into total obedience. The Hope is full of specialists, scientists, engineers, talented individuals like you, people who haven't been corrupted by the board. Unfortunately, the Hope's colonists have been frozen for decades, well past your shelf life, so to speak. No offense. Ah, you begin to perceive the truth. Yes, according to the board and their narrow-minded scientists, you should be a pile of organic sludge right now. Ten years. That's how long the average human can remain in hibernation. You were frozen for decades. In theory, you never should have survived the revival process. But the conventional theories are wrong. You're living proof that it can be done. There's yet hope for the hope. <laughs> Get it? We'll do our very best to save them all. I'd best get back to work. Oh, I can feel my last dose of caffeinoid fading. That's not the point. This half would just knock out one of my workers. Yeah, with a toss ball stick, I heard you the first time. There weren't any witnesses. 
No witnesses. He's not even denying it. Jackass had it coming. Shut it, Felix. You're not making this any better. You get cute with me again, you little back bay brat, I will toss you out an airlock. This is the groundbreaker, not Byzantium. You ain't the law here. I am. Now move along. I don't have time for this. I need a drink. Going for a stroll around the docking base? Sure was. Got a knack for upsetting the board and the Mardettes all at once. Between you and me, I was hoping they'd come to fisticuffs. The guy insulted my Rizzo's Rangers, all right? You can't just insult my Rangers and expect to get away with it. So, of course, I decked him with a tossball stick. I mean, what am I? Some kind of fair-weather fan? Guy never liked me, always trying to get a rise out of me. But I keep my chin up, right? Be the bigger man, I tell myself. He's a spacer's chosen man, though. So when the Chosen beat my rangers the other night, my foreman comes swaggering up with his head full of boasting. That's when I broadsided him with a tossball stick. Yeah. Look, this was a long time coming. Guy thinks he can push me around because he's some sky-high foreman and I'm just a back bay's dock worker. Well, former dock worker. Guess I just tendered my resignation. Enjoy my freedom. Scrounge together enough bits for a zero-G. Other than that, can't say as I do. Hey, not for nothing. But I saw you wander out of that ship over there by the dock. Wouldn't happen to be yours, would it? Captain of the Unreliable. You're like something out of a serial drama. This is to be. I appreciate your time. Felix Millstone. Pleased to make your acquaintance. See you around, boss. Customs and inspection, right this way. Identification, please. Captain, according to your ship's record... But we've hardly been out of Edgewater long enough to get in trouble. Well, isn't this wonderful? The captain's done something to get on the board's bad side. Now, hold on, this isn't the end of the world. Probably. You'll want to take it up with Udom Bedford. Our board rep... His office is located along the starboard wall of the promenade. Shines like a Byzantium commode. You can't miss it. Just the opposite. The board knows we don't take kindly to their interfering in our... Surely this must... It must... If I had to take a guess as to why, you probably riled up the wrong petty board bureaucrat. A man named Udom Bedford. You take the starch out of them, well, you won't hear any complaints from me. Oh, and if you're headed that way, would you mind doing me a favor? Wanda Dorset over in sickbay, tell her the shipment's not in yet. It's not coming in anytime soon, and if she'd be so obliged to get off my ass about it. Much appreciated. Is there anything else I can help you with? Be seeing you. This is it. Security. I, up I can security check the departures registry to find out which crew cha- I mean, scholar shipped in and out with. No one lives on Monarch. It's a wasteland. You're hearing things. No, seriously. There was a lot of- Nicely done. There it is. Just yank the drive and I'll do the rest. Now that we have the data cartridge, I can finally find out where that scholar I'm looking for ended up. I am not making a scene. I'm sorry. Am I causing a scene? See, Umfuru? We could have avoided all this unpleasantness if you just let me talk to Jesse in the first place. Let me get one thing straight. Jessie and I are not friends. I just owe her, okay? As for the rest, I'm trying to figure that out. All I know is that she's been here too long, and she's apparently not receiving visitors. 
Be my guest. If you know something I don't about dealing with hospital bureaucracy, I'll be impressed. Can't say I've seen you before. I take it you're a freighter, Captain? If you're here to better yourself, you'll have to wait. We're having a spot of trouble with our delivery service. He must be referring to Erion. I'm sure the fool's gotten himself into another scrape. I'm beginning to wonder if I'm ever going to get my service mechanicals at this rate. I'd be grateful if you'd spare the time. We need his delivery soon as yesterday. Last he told me, he was taking a shortcut by Scylla, an asteroid in the Charybdis Cluster. That's where I'd start, were I the adventuring type. You look out, though. The place is probably crawling with outlaws. Thought there'd be more machinery. Must be housed on a sublevel. I could spend all day in here and not have looked at half the best stuff. It's all pretty worn, though. Junlei Tennyson. I'm captain around here, but chief to my friends. Hope you don't mind the formal introduction. Groundbreaker doesn't see many visitors. I heard we had someone in impound. Wish I could help. I gave the bureaucrats a mode of authority over freight traffic, and it rankles them good when I challenge it. Just so we understand each other, I'm the final word on the ship. The Mardits, the crew, the engineers, their family. I hope there won't be any problems while you're visiting. Good. Don't go making trouble, and chances are you won't find any. That's how I like it here. So what brings you to Groundbreaker? I'm curious, even though nine times out of ten, the answer is just passing through. Interesting. The powers that be paint an ugly picture of Monarch. Critters and such. Maybe someone in the promenade can get you the right weapon for the job. We see a lot of the same faces coming and going. Most of them board spies and corporate sprats. Makes it hard to trust outsiders. You seem different. So welcome aboard. What? I didn't think you just... Parvati, is it? That's a lovely name. What can I do for you? I was just thinking. I haven't got much experience working with actual, real spaceships, Miss Junlei. Uh, uh, Chief Junlei. Junlei is fine. Um, okay. Since you run a whole space station, I was wondering if... Well, maybe you could teach me some things. I could message you later, maybe? I'd be happy to make the time, Parvati. You can ask me anything. Wow, great! I'll do that then. Messages. Later. Oh, your, your name's pretty too. I should have said... Sorry. I like it. Honest. Sorry. Couldn't have done it without your moral support, Captain. Now, if there's nothing else, there are other parts of the ship begging for my attention. Groundbreaker's radiators need replacement parts. They're dumping superheated air into my ship. Only the board has access to new parts, and I won't let them swindle me into a corner. None. Every time I give in to the board, Groundbreaker loses its freedom. Soon there won't be anything left. I can't allow that. The board isn't helping, and my resources are spread thin. If I don't get those radiators back online, Groundbreaker, everyone aboard, will be cooked alive. Reasonable, huh? That's the best news I've heard all day. According to my grandmother's old schematics, the parts we need should be in the back bays. Hold on. There's something you should know before you go charging off. The back bays are on a lower deck, long abandoned and a haven for miscreants now. Good. Once you've obtained the parts, we can proceed to the next phase of repairs. McRed, were you expecting any company? A neighbor from above approaches our realm. Back away now, or you'll parley.
Look at this ripe piece of meat just sizzling on the grill. <laughs> yum, yum. Time to feed the flavors. Is this what carbon monoxide poisoning looks like? I don't think this deck is too well ventilated. Uh, speaking for myself, Captain, I am not of a mind to be murdered by a psychopath who plays with fire. You came with the crew. Welcome. We got plenty of space to... I know this ain't a toy, neighbor from above. It's a catalyst, just like me. Keep talking. I like the sound... That's right, sir. Just the parts. We'll be in and out in a jiff. You won't even know we were here. Tennyson just keeps feeding the furnace, don't you? You don't just ask a king for a favor, tribute. Uh, the You've got the run of the kingdom. Up those stairs, you'll find the parts. My crew won't get in your way. Lay it on me, boss. Ship. Am I your dark? You can. Awesome. You've been getting into the boss's special stuff. Uh, Lily's gonna be pleased as pie when we show her these. We interrupt your. You've returned, and in one piece. Color me impressed. Good work. I'll take those. I need you to head through the large door at the far end of engineering. Take the elevator down into the machinery shaft. There's a terminal in the back. Activate it when I call over the ship's PA. And bring weapons. There's a slight manticular infestation. Don't worry, Miss Junlei. We'll be super gentle with the ship. You don't got a thing to worry about. I mean, aside from fires and such. I'm genuinely heartened to hear that. Thank you. Well, well, well. What fine treasures might await us in here? Here they come! Get them! Get away from Down me! Down they go! My boards are returning to green. What a weight that is off my shoulders. I don't normally tolerate outsiders mucking about in my station's guts, but you're all right. The temperature should be dropping as we speak. I'll see to it the crew knows who kept us all from boiling alive. If you've got time, I believe Edna has a comms issue that could use your attention. I've also authorized Doc and Furu to sell you our premium meds. Welcome to Sublight Salvage and Shipping, a legitimate business for legitimate consumers. You the one flying the unreliable? Miss Lily has been expecting you. I'll unlock the door. Sure am. Be So you're the new captain in town. I was hoping you'd make your way to my office. Saves me the work of hunting you down. Lilia Hagen, CEO and Executive Director of Aggressive Operations. I'm guessing you already know about Sublight, otherwise you wouldn't have come. Charmed. It's nice to see the Unreliable again. Useful ship. Hawthorne was my contractor. I'd recognize that leaky boat of his anywhere. Is Ada still at the helm? I don't know how many times I told Hawthorne to restore that smartass to factory settings. I have a salvage job for someone light on corporate ties with a reliable set of wings. But there's a catch. Just like in the serials. If you have a nav key to Stellar Bay, the job's yours. Interested? I like that initiative, but ease back on the throttle. Gladys at the rest and go might have what you need. If there's anything else, be quick about it. Time is bits. These days, the scrap business all but runs itself. Gives me the time to expand our interests into other sectors, where I can let my hair down. 
Our field is persuasive acquisitions. At least that's how my legal advisors tell me to phrase it. Not all of our salvage is abandoned when we find it. Sometimes it takes a polite conversation and a shot across the bow. You know, legal formalities. Good boy. Knew you'd understand. Hey. Careful with the C word around here. I like to keep things above board, and that kind of talk only makes trouble. Sublight occupies a legal blind spot. No one knows what we're licensed to do, and that gives our little business some freedom. But let's not tempt fate. Very. I have this thing about numbers in spreadsheets, grids in general. I like to think of myself as the last honest businesswoman in Halcyon, but I'll settle for being the most organized one. Be seeing you. Make sure you aren't followed on your way out. For the following story. I think everything in here is worth more than I made in my whole life. What it takes to defend your corporate township from the dangers of... Ah, yes. Wheeler messaged me you were coming. He must be the captain of the Unreliable, a vessel that used to be helmed by one Alex Hawthorne. And you are not he. Has something happened to my favorite scruffy freelancer? Oh no, this is terrible. My dear friend, what devilry is this? In whose miserable fever dream am I trapped? Oh, Alex, there were so many arguments we'd yet to have. He was my dearest friend. My only friend. You have his ship, you must know. That picture of us on the promenade, me hugging him, him wincing. I keep a copy beside my bed. Did he? Ah. <sighs> That's just like him. Such a sentimental man. Tell me, how did he die? Oh, awful business, that. But why? How? No, no. Best not to ask after the gory details. Right, right. You're going important places, I'm sure. Big, exciting, important places. <laughs> there. I've removed the flag from your ship. I'm terribly sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, however, before you go... Alex promised to tell me the location of Phineas Wells. I'm sure you've seen his wanted posters all over the colony. Did Alex tell you where Wells might be? Anything at all? You haven't read the posters? He's a terrorist, a thief, a madman. It's really in the colony's best interest that we stop him before he does further harm. Well, Alex knew, or he said he did. And you have his ship. Maybe he kept some records around, or a conveniently placed note on his bedside table? That's... Uh, well, that's just terrible news. Law, oh, what am I going to do now? The board will have my head. Oh, I'm sorry. This is terribly unprofessional of me. Is there anything else I might help you with? It's personal business, I'm afraid. Uh, miserably, terribly personal. I don't intend to be. It's 
Just a matter of trust. Information on the whereabouts of Phineas Wells would go a long way. It's... well, it's my white whale, I suppose. It's fine. Really, it's perfectly fine. I understand. Now, if you've nothing else, please see yourself out. I'd like to drown myself in work. You do? Oh. What? All right. I suppose. Uh, how might I assuage your fears? Whom else would I work for? Those sublight thugs? That Tennyson woman? The sweaty masses in the groundside townships? The board is the only force for order in this rough-and-tumble colony of ours. Without them, we'd all starve to death or meet our end in a canid's jaws. That's a curious question. I can't say I've ever considered how my personal satisfaction factors into the work I do. Permit me to answer your question in another way. In Byzantium, I was one among many. I often felt, uh, lost in the hurry and expanse of the capital. Here, I have a measure of power and suffer little oversight. It makes for a different kind of loneliness, but it's one I've found I can endure. I understand. And I would ask the same of you, but I suspect... Well, I suspect I'd find your answers less than satisfactory, wouldn't I? Indeed. And you know where he is? Excelsior! An apprehension of this caliber would be tremendous for my career. I would send you straight away to my superiors in Byzantium, but... The thing is, I needed money. A lot of money. Quickly, for reasons. I might have pawned my official board seal to Gladys, the black market fence here on the Groundbreaker. I can't authorize the paperwork you'll need to turn Phineas in without it. Stray too much from the, uh, straight and narrow, and one may just find himself assigned pastoral duty in a maximum security penitentiary. To give away something so important to you, there must have been some curious reasons. I'll thank you not to question my motives, young miss. It was a mistake, and I'd like to put it behind me. It's only temporary, of course. I'd never leave something so important in the hands of someone of such a dubious moral character. I was going to buy it back once I raised the capital. So you'll need to get my seal back from her if you want to hand Phineas over to the board. That's really neither here nor there, don't you think? I've... I've been working on something on the side, all right? Something not entirely, uh, on the level. It's a little silly, I'll admit. Silly and completely illegal. <laughs> I'd be forced into early retirement if the board found out. I produce bootleg cereals. I just... I can't help myself. Juris and Prudence after hours. Or all my colonists, the new immortals. Romance, tragedy, debt collection. And they're all mine. That was you? Oh, my stars. All my colonists is just... Well, it gave me a story hangover for days, Mr. Udom. You're a fan? 
I've never met one in the flesh. I suddenly feel quite naked. Oh, it's all right, Mr. Udom. I don't judge. The heart wants what it wants, as they say, and mine yearns for the adoration of the masses. Held at a comfortable distance, of course. Flatterer. I might have... pawned my official board seal to Gladys, the black market fancier on the Groundbreaker. I can't authorize the paperwork you'll need to turn Phineas in without it. Stray too much from the, uh, straight and narrow, and one may just find himself assigned pastoral duty in a maximum security penitentiary. I'll thank you not to question my motives, young miss. It was a mistake, and I'd like to put it behind me. It's only temporary, of course. I'd never leave something so important. So you'll need to get my seal back from her if you want to hand Phineas over to the board. That's the long and short of it, yes. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. I'm certain Gladys can be made... Well, can probably be made to see reason. <laughs> I'll be waiting eagerly for your return. Now, is there any way in which I might... Bless my heart. A stranger come knocking on a poor old woman's door. You here for a particular reason? Or did the neighbors tell you how good my sugar cookies are? Made without a single natural ingredient, or an oven. Just like store-bought. Those have been the height of illegality since Stellar Bay turned their noses up at the board. You and I could be thrown to the void just for discussing such a transaction. Lucky for us, Groundbreaker's a free port. We're outside of the board's control. For the time being, at least. Now. I only have the one nav key, and they're hard to come by these days. It won't be cheap. If you find yourself lacking in the bits, I might have an opportunity you'd be interested in. Well, I find I'm in need of a ship captain with a little... moral flexibility. Might be this could help out the Groundbreaker, as well as earn some bits. But if you've got qualms... Do you know Edna, over in engineering? Sweet as a pea, that one. On occasion, she'll pass along transmissions I might find interesting. She sent me a recording of a distress signal she'd scraped from the Groundbreaker's comm array. Curious thing is, it came from an outpost called Roseway. And Auntie Cleo abandoned that place years ago. You've got an ear for intrigue and a nose for bits. I like that. Here's a copy of the SOS recording, complete with the coordinates. If you should find a secret worth selling, might be I could find a buyer. Corporate bigwigs will pay top bit for inside information on their competitors. The more we got the corps fighting each other, the less time they got to meddle in our affairs. Don't forget to come find old Gladys when you're done. Hey, you got a second? Fancy running into you again. Don't mind me. It's just admiring your ship from up close. Gotta hand it to you, boss. That's a fine-looking ship. Only thing it's missing is me. Yes, I absolutely am. Just give me a shot. That's all I'm asking. I could be the best damn crew you ever hired. You're serious, you're giving me a shot. All right, uh, hang on, hang on. I put together a little speech, just in case you asked. Hey there, I'm Felix Millstone. I have prepared a list of reasons why I believe you should hire me to join the crew of your ship and or outlaw gang.
Firstly, I am highly personable, and I get along well with anyone who is not of the jackass persuasion. <laughs> Sorry. He's funny. Uh, secondly, I can be counted on in the event of a firefight, standoff, and or raid. My motto is, if you need a steady gun hand, I'm your man. That motto is a, it's a work in progress. Additionally, I have several years of experience as a box hauler. This skill may come in handy if you need a body dragged away or a door held open while escaping enemy fire. In conclusion, thank you for considering me for your ship crew and or outlaw gang. I look forward to our adventures together. I thought that was real good, Felix. Thanks for the vote of confidence. What do you think? Am I in? Wow. <laughs> you don't know how long I've been waiting to hear that. Thanks, boss. You're not gonna regret this. I'll just gather my personals and meet you on board. This is gonna be great. Really? We're picking up strays now? Look at that. A real vicar. <laughs> I'm sure we'll get along like a church on fire. Hey, outlaw. You know, you... and untreated burns detected. Signs indicative of sudden, violent crash landing. Yep, that's me. No big deal. Just shrugging off my injuries as I stroll away from another flaming impact crater. Also detecting constipation, hair loss, reduced fertility due to tight trousers. Recommend stimulant injection. Hair loss. You take that back. Tremendous work, friend. Here I was readying a daring maneuver, and you've come and saved me the trouble. Symptoms detected. Elevated heart rate. Dilated pupils. Increased sweat production. Subject appears to be terrified. I'm not terrified, you bucket of bolts. That's victory sweat. The one and only. Uh, wait, who's asking? Wanda didn't send you, did she? I swear, land on Groundbreaker even a moment tardy, and that busybody's already been up your ass an hour. You tell her these Automex are coming, and sending a hired stooge to rescue me from certain peril only furthers my delay. No offense. Magnificent. And do please give Wanda my chilliest regards. Thank you for getting my mechanicals to me. If you're ever in the market for a bit of beautification, the first one's on me. I done had enough of this shit. I'm just the fucking tarmac guard. No one said nothing about fighting no raps. Alarms went off, raps broke loose, and I hightailed it in here to get a wall between me and them beasts. Scientists, name center. Oh, before I forget. Anti-Cleos makes the best pharmaceuticals in Halcyon. Better than nature. Not like that crap Spacer's Choice pedals.
If you've come to end my life, let's be on with it. Oh, not actually one of them, are you? Yes, yes. Anton Crane, lead scientist here. I must apologize if my call diverted you. I uh, may have panicked. Everything's under control now, though, truth be told. I'm not at liberty to discuss the nature of the work I'm doing here. Suffice it to say that its importance to me, uh, to the colony, is immeasurable. My research may not quite fall within legal parameters, so I'm under orders to maintain wireless silence. However, having your head used as target practice can addle one's thinking. I cut the call immediately once I'd gathered my wits. The Home Office can't know what's happening here. Captain's got your best interests at heart, mister. Honest. I suppose it can't hurt. If I don't get that research back, my life is over regardless. We were tasked with formulating a new and improved dental gel. One cannot exaggerate the benefits of good dental hygiene. May I continue? While doing research on enzymes specific to the Raptodon's digestive system, we developed an additive which we subsequently discovered to be the most effective appetite suppressant ever. Not just any diet toothpaste, the ultimate diet toothpaste. With only a few changes to its molecular composition, but you're missing the point. Let's focus for a moment, shall we? Even if you disregard the obvious value of Auntie Cleo's Apazap diet toothpaste in and of itself, we're talking about my career here as well. Nice, is it not? Came up with that myself. It's a shame our marketing department is almost as befuddled as my co-workers here. Hours ago, a group of vicious malcontents fell upon us. Shot up our labs and loosed our research subjects, the Raptodons. If those Cretans get their hands on my research, well, they'll need not kill me. Yes, but don't kill their mother if it's avoidable. We've need of her to replenish our stocks. I think there's gas in the lab somewhere that can be used to put them out. The research is in the safe in my office. You'll have need of my code and key card. The lab's entrance is in the side of a hill. You can't miss it if you just follow the road. You'll pass by the town's original... by the Grand Architect. Jameson, he's in the old lab. My protege. I sent him to retrieve some metabolic precursors, and I forgot him. That would surely lighten the weight on my conscience, as I am held to account for the well-being of every scientist here. Too many have been lost. Too many black marks against my name, as it were. And far too much paperwork. I'll thank you not to mistake my ambition for callousness. If my colleagues refuse to take their lives seriously, why should I? All they do is complain. They refuse to see the opportunity afforded us here. Believe what you will, but I'm not the manipulative, ego-driven person you think me to be. I'm not. Shut him up first. A hungry rap or my backhand? What? How the hell did you get in here? No, not the... I don't care about the beasts. I care about the front door. This is an egregious breach of protocol. 
How'd you get in? Ugh. Can't use the centrifuge without supervision. Can't file reports without him double-checking their every word. Can't save myself from mortal peril. It's like he thinks I'm a child. His hands-on management style is coming to a point of contention, I tell you. Please. That man doesn't have an altruistic bone in his body. I just happen to have the metabolic precursors from our last test. I'd wager my last bit that if you brought back the precursors and left me for dead, Anton wouldn't bat an eye. All this fresh air is making you don't have any trees, Antoine. It's going to soon come down.
Keep them hands where I can see them. What are you doing out here? <sighs> you and me both. Name's Lillian. Lady Nima Cass hired my crew as gun hands. I got left here to watch for Cleo reinforcements. They all got pinned inside, so I can't say as I mind. You passed through the Raptodon pens? Spacer's Choice Case. Commemorative edition. Got the hope on it. That's what you want, I'm game. But she's gonna give you pamphlets. Don't say I didn't warn you. She's pinned in the lower levels by Auntie's guards. I'll radio her you're coming. But it's on you to find a way to her. Her name's Cassandra. Who the... You. Yeah, you. Get over here. You care to explain what you're doing here? Did you miss the big sign outside? That I am. Name's Porter. If Doc Crane did send you, I'd be glad for the help. Bad news is, we haven't been able to clean these outlaws out of the lab. Good news is, they haven't been able to escape, neither. For now, I reckon they got no backup. On the other hand, we don't neither. And our mechanicals all went haywire for some damn reason. Damn mechanicals have always been more trouble than they're worth. The garage and the front door are it. These bastards got in through the vent system, but we locked that down. They're not getting back out that way without a security key card. They'd need to take mine. Or make a new one in my office, I guess. Why you want to know that? What for? Fair point. Here's a key card to my office. Head left from here and downstairs. It's across from the cafeteria. I got a machine that makes pass cards for us. Just don't knock over any paperwork in there. I got a system. I'm guessing you're the one Lillian described? It's been a bit of a day, so I'll get to the point. Yes, I have Crane's research. No, I'm not giving it back. Sorry to disappoint you. Yes, I imagine he does. But we all have problems. It is the human condition. I am myself ensnared in this wretched place. You want to kill me. I don't want to die. Therefore, it is in my best interest to negotiate with you. Help me get out of here, and I will pay you for my life. The first thing I need is a key card to unlock my door. Then I'd need you to clear me a path out of here. There are two ways out. The quickest is through the front door, but Cleo security's bottled up in there. If you don't want to shoot them, I suppose you could talk to them. The other way out is through the loading bay, but you'd have to clear out the rafts for me. Then I could just slip out the back, sight unseen. Because Crane is a tool. Because no good deed goes unrewarded. Because doing me a good turn is the honorable and decent thing. Take your pick. Crane is being used by Auntie Cleo. And now he is trying to use you. So what does that make you?
Fair. But while I may be trapped for the moment, those scientists are trapped in corporate slavery for the rest of their sad, sorry little lives. Don't... You might be the first stroke of luck I've had all day. Thank you. I'm in your debt. Nothing beyond the purview of a talented freelancer like you. You really expect me to just let them pass? Why? So they can regroup behind their walls and mount another assault? Never mind. I'm obviously in no position to argue with you. If you can talk those guards into standing down, my people will follow suit. Take your time. I am, to my chagrin, not going anywhere. You damn turncoat! We saw everything! You must think me a fool. I was watching on the security cameras. You got downright friendly with the outlaw leader. I reckon we got nothing to say to each other. You best back yourself out of here. Nice and slow. I ain't seeing a compelling reason to not blow your head off. You convinced her to let us leave in peace. Listing the ills we've been done ain't exactly putting me in a mind to compromise. I gotta believe that all we've done will mean something to the company, to Doc Crane. That effort will make up for mistakes. The only person Doc Crane ever took a shine to was Jameson. Figured he just didn't know how to talk to folks. But here we stand. He's nowhere about. I reckon I don't see any better solution. Fine, damn it. We'll pull out. I've never been so pleased at the sight of an open door. Please tell me you've cleared a way out of here. So you have. I am much obliged. And now, if you do not mind, I have had quite enough of this wretched place. Oh, really? And why, pray tell, would I do a thing like that? Damn and blast. I should have seen this coming. Here, take the damned research. Tell Crane I hope he chokes on it.
Any news? On that thing we spoke about? You know, that thing? Don't keep me in suspense. Did you get my stuff? I mean, not mine. It's for other parties. Buyers. No kidding? You're the best! This is gonna make me so popular. I mean, with the people who buy it, not by using it. Because I'm not. Only for testing purposes. Quality control. You would, right? No way. Ah, you just don't understand the market. Anyway, here's a cut for you. An advance for my profits. Pleasure doing business with you. Thanks for getting me out of there. Oh, we turned the old lab into storage a long time ago. Anton needed someone to fetch precursors, and when Anton needs someone to fetch something, that someone is invariably me. Those fucking marauders blew a hole in the wall. Tripped the security lockdown. I guess not being able to open a door from the inside is considered a safety feature. Safety for the equipment in the room, maybe. Not so much for the guy trapped inside. It's like a panic room, but without food and water. I'd have starved long before they got through. Point taken, though. Thanks again for the help. Damn right we left the lab. What's left there that's worth dying for? You let them get away. Worthless. The lot of you. Well, you get what you pay for, don't you? Doc Crane better get over himself. That no-account fool Porter and his crew are even more worthless than I could have imagined. They've abandoned their posts. This is madness. My research? Please tell me you've recovered it. That's... You can't possibly understand the enormity of what you've done for me. Did you find my colleague, Jameson? Jameson. I didn't do right by him, did I? Only cared about how he helped or hurt my research. You understand nothing. Me, least of all. I'd never own up to that, though it be true. It's this place, this colony. You can see that, can't you? I need to get to Byzantium. It's the only place life can have meaning. You're right. And what's worse, I've always known it. That there's nothing to be done. This is the life I've made for myself. Hello. Uh, why do you seem familiar? Have we met? Ah, yes. Very good. And have you done that? What a relief. You hold months of work in your hands. Now, I'll just attach this here. A bit of glue. A little elbow grease. Voila! I can finally call this little side project complete. Thank the law. Oh. Hmm. I can't be caught with this. Uh, you take it. If R&D buys the schematics from me, perhaps I'll get you the first model, hot off the presses. I'll, uh, call you? Have you had a moment to look into that little opportunity I told you about on Roseway? You don't hurry. What's that? Speak up now. What'd you turn up? My stars, what a find. Fine picking like this deserves an equally fine payout. Go on, dearie. And don't spend it all in one place. Pardon me, sweetheart. My old ears must have misheard you. Did you say wrapped it on? Gracious, 
Someone must have hauled them off Monarch. Naughty, naughty. A couple of folks around here might pay a fair few bits for this. Might even be able to start a bidding war. Bless your slippery little fingers. Isn't that just a shame? Prototype schematics go for a fair handful of bits around here. Are you positive? Honest to goodness? Can't say I wasn't hoping for more, but... I suppose it can't be helped. Law bless you for doing the legwork, sweetie. Don't forget your pal Gladys now. You can come visit any time. The grease monkey, Argo? I'm sorry, Mr. Thompson, sir. You asked why it's taking so long to fix. The answer's technical. Don't apologize. Just try using small words for me. The cans bust open in the oven because she's set to cook saltuna, which isn't what we've got. Mr. Thompson, I think there's someone here to see you. Focus, Miss Holcomb. You and I are still talking. Let's start over. Walk me through the process. Show me where it's going awry. Well, sure. It's uh, mostly on account of what we're feeding into the mechanism. It puts food in cans. We have food, we have cans. Why won't it work like we need? She's expecting Seltuna of a certain size. We're filling the cans with... Well, not fish. Seems we've got a guest. Really now, Parvati, I do wish you'd spoken up. I do apologize. I was given no forewarning of your arrival, or I might have welcomed you at the gates myself. I'm Reed Thompson, outpost administrator. I cannot help but notice you are not in uniform. Yes, so it dawns on me. Seems I allowed my excitement to run away with my wits. Been a few seasons since we've had a visitor pass through. Only regulator we've got is hooked up to the town transformer. Mr. Tobson ain't liable to be keen on dismantling it. I beg your pardon. I am most emphatically not keen on any such thing. I can't let you have our power regulator. But I happen to know of another one. And I happen to know exactly how you may retrieve it without frying yourself in the process. My proposition benefits the both of us. Please, hear me out. There's a power regulator in the old botanical lab. It's mostly abandoned, so all that power is being squandered. Go down to the geothermal plant. Reroute power from the botanical district over to us. Once their power shut down, you can have their regulator and be along on your way. The geothermal plant was built by our owners, Spacer's Choice. Lit up the whole Vale once upon a time. Most of the Vale is now abandoned. All that power is going to waste. I was not entirely sure how to tell you this. The botanical labs are not legally inhabited, but there are people who live there. I am not trying to pull one over on you, friend. You were bound to run into them sooner or later. The people living in the botanical labs, they're deserters. Former workers. I need them back at their posts. I need them to come home. Edgewater is struggling. We haven't hit our production quota in years. If we don't meet our quotas this year, the company might shut us down for good. I need those workers back at their stations. Neither do I. The fault was entirely mine. I pushed them too hard. My hope is that by cutting off their power, you will convince those deserters to come back to town. Before you go to the plant, I want you to stop by the botanical lab. Speak to their leader, Adelaide. Tell her the power's about to go, and that it's time her band of deserters came back to town. Of course, I understand completely. Here, let me give you the passcode to the geothermal plant. A sign of good faith for so politely listening to me as I ramble on. Are you setting off for the Vale? Because I know my way around. I, I mean, in case you want a guide. I mean, if that's all right with you, Mr. Thompson. 
sir. I hesitate to part ways with Miss Holcomb, but I cannot deny that she is talented and may prove useful to you. Great! I got my wrenches and diagnosticators and hairpins and engine tape, so I'm all set. Well, I am glad to hear that. Best of luck to you, and thank you again for your help. It is a lot to ask of a stranger, I know. Hey, mister, can we talk? Sorry. You got a sec? Sorry. I... You just want to get out of here. And you likely don't want to tag along like me. It's just... Mr. Thompson has his own view on matters. On account of it's his job and, and what all, but... That's not the only side of the tale. To Mr. Thompson, a person's a gear. It does its job quiet-like. If it squeaks or stutters, it gets replaced. The deserters are decent folk. I knew some of them before they left. I don't know anybody well. I mostly listened to them talk, kept my head down. There was a boy named Thomas who used to follow me around, asking questions about the stuff I fixed. He was real sweet to me. Not any sort of dissident. Life's hard here. Especially for them that don't fit in so well. We're one big Spacer's Choice family, but every family's got the one the rest whisper about. Mr. Thompson's aiming to take away their power. They'll have no lights to see, nor heat to cook. They'll be at the mercy of marauders, or worse. I think you should talk to the town's vicar about it. Max, his name is. Thanks, mister. I just think when you gotta make a decision that'll hurt somebody, it's best to think on the right and wrong of it. That's what my dad used to say anyways. I've always felt weird in here. It's too clean. Yes, what is it? You're an outsider. Fantastic. Vicar Maximilian de Soto at your service. Or Vicar Max, if you're the sort who prefers brevity. And Ms. Holcomb as well. How rare to see you out. And with a complete stranger. Curious. Just tagging along, Vicar de Soto. Don't mind me. I so rarely get new people to talk to. Name your poison, anything at all. Spiritual counseling, this season's tossball predictions, the quickest way out of town. Uh, what? I, I thought you would talk to him. You wanted to speak to me, Ms. Holcomb? Every time I've tried to engage you in conversation, you look at the floor, answer in single words, and slink away. I can't imagine what would be so grave as to drive her to my mission. What has Mr. Thompson asked you to do? Depriving them of safety from the marauders and wildlife. I can see why that troubles you. Miss Holcomb has a soft heart. Always has, if you believe the talk. They rejected the order of society and live beyond the walls so thoughtfully provided by our Spacer's Choice patrons. Does that strike you as a responsible life choice? Astute. But I am here, not in the deserter camp. So that's not a variable I can account for. Assuming your goal is to save as many as possible, then you should bring everyone together. Send the power to Edgewater and convince the deserters to return to the fold. Not if things are left to stand as they are. If you don't mind a bit of unsolicited advice, be cautious on your way to the geothermal plant. 
It is not as safe as you might assume. One of the reasons I transferred here was to fulfill my duty in hunting down banned heretical texts. I happen to know such a book is, as we speak, tainting a collector's library in Emerald Vale. However, the collector's residence lies outside the town's walls. My retrieval efforts have been thwarted by marauders who have overrun the property. Should you fare better than me, I'd pay a handsome sum for the book. It's a handwritten journal, a faded blue cover with the name M. Bakonu handwritten in the lower corner. I'll mark where I saw it on your map. Assuming you're serious? Thank you. If you retrieve it, you can always find me here. Searching for repair bay? Error. Navigation systems failed. Unable to comply. I could probably fix that. I mean, if you wanted me to. Yep, I see the problem. His nav mod got dislodged. Must have taken a tumble. Just gotta give it a good push and wait for the click. There we go. Jeremy's good as new. Well, new by Spacer's Choice standards, anyhow. His name's Jeremy, by the by. Navigation systems operational. Optimal path toward repair bay detected. Initiating self-diagnostics. On account I fixed him. And he's Jeremy on account of his helmet. It's like Jeremy, the officer in... Hebsa Shirley. I make a point to watch every Tuesday night. Be more careful out there, Jeremy! Excuse me, Miss McDevitt? Sorry, it's just... You got such pretty trees in here. Why, thank you. You're Robert's girl, aren't you? I remember when you were but a sprout. Thomas speaks of you often. Throws them. You know that's true, don't you, Miss Holcomb? Your father died of overwork. His heart gave out. He, he was tired all the time, sure, but he was old, ma'am, and he raised me all by his lonesome. Look what they did to this child. Lost her family to the company, and still she defends them. I'm all right. I ain't so fragile. That was unkind of me. I'm sorry, dear. Hey, Miss Parvati. Lovely to see you about, Miss Parvati. Things going all right, Silas? Been keeping him careful and true, Miss. Best to ask her yourself. My dad's buried here. Silas watches over him when I get... when I can't leave the house. Oh. Well, thanks. Something I can do for you? Yeah, huh? He's just interested in fixing stuff. He always used to follow me around, asking me to explain what I was doing. Like a puppy, kinda. I'm just glad he's alive. That he's okay. I mean, when Mr. Thompson said he was fired, we all expected the worst. If he wants to learn about engineering, we should help him get those data pads he wants. You mean about the mission being too clean? I know, but Ficker says the universe is a machine, that it runs by law. Real machines have gunked up oil, scratches, and worn bits. You can tell they've seen handling, been used by folk. The machine Vicker sees is one ain't never been run. It, it's not for people to live in. It's something on a museum shelf, under glass. Fixing the universe is a job for somebody way better than the likes of me. Sorry. I know it's none of my business. It's not like I think it a failing, mind. It's just I... I live right across the road. Most nights I watch folks out my window. When they come in here, they might be happy or sad. Mostly they're tired. When they leave, they're mad at themselves. Or they stumble into the alley and I listen to their hearts breaking. Am I? Well, it's just normal to me. Why isn't everybody else, I wonder? 
There was a, a kind of a thing for the vending machine when I was 12. Not intentionally. I've always been good with my hands, right? So I saw a lock on the machine and thought, oh, this must be how they refill it. But I had to know. So I did my thing. And next thing I know, there's a couple hundred bottles of zero G rolling out the front door and into the road. It's not funny. Right about then, a bunch of loaders came rolling in the gate, fresh off the Saltuna ships. And Mr. Thompson was up on the porch making a speech about how everyone would have to volunteer a third shift to get it all canned. Anyhow, you ever seen an auto loader run over a bottle of zero G? exploded all over Mr. Thompson. One bottle after another as the loaders went by. I was just shy of working age, so Dad had to pay all the damages. Moreau's still angry at me. I can laugh about it now, but I just about puked up my guts in terror in the moment. That's the one time I ever made Mr. Thompson look a fool. Once we do this, there's no going back. Hey, mister? Look, I know you want your power regulator and all, but I just gotta ask you. Do you understand what you're about to do? I don't think you should cut off Edgewater's power. I think it would be cruel. I I'm sorry. That just sort of came out all at once. Edgewater's hurting. We've been losing workers year after year, and corporate hardly ever sends replacements. There's barely enough Saltuna to fill our bellies anymore. But the town's got some good people in it. Decent, hard-working folk just living their lives the only way they know how. They don't deserve to be punished. Sorry, I didn't mean to babble on like that. I just... I felt like I had to say something. Really? I mean, wow. Thanks. I, no one's ever told me those words in that order. Is this your ship? Oh, my star, she is just so handsome. Does she have a name yet? What's her drive model? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Listen to me babbling. When I was in Edgewater, I dreamed of flying on a real ship. Working on a real engine. Belonging to a proper crew. I'm the only decent mechanic Edgewater's got, but... Every time I think of going back, I get this... Sinking feeling. Well, it's kind of you to say that. And I want to ask you something, and you can say no. But... Can I come with you? I could tend to your engine. I know my G-valves for my catalyzers, and I can keep your ship singing. And if you ever need a pair of eyes watching your back, I can do that too. What do you think? Yes! I mean, thanks. You won't regret this, mister. Captain? I can call you Captain now. Ha! <laughs> I got a Captain. Hey, Captain. I heard that Groundbreaker's got a real good engineer. A lady named June Lay Tennyson? I was thinking that maybe I ought to meet her. If you got time to swing us by, I mean. I don't got much experience fixing actual spaceships. I bet you a can of Borston beans she could teach me all manner of stuff. Thanks, Captain. I'll be sure to make it worth your time. Did you want to talk about something else? Mostly, yeah. I lived in the maintenance office near all my life. Mr. Thompson never let me forget how funny that was. He meant funny as in odd. It's not normal for anyone to do as their parents. You take a vocational test. That decides your schooling and your career. When I tested out for maintenance, everyone figured it was on account of my dad. They were real unhappy with us. Well, I'm good at making things work the way they ought. Not so much at doing such to somebody else's schedule. There's times I'm working deep in the guts of a loader, getting it all running perfect. Then I look up to see it's tomorrow, and I've blown another deadline. Anyhow, I, I was happy to get back home. I didn't care much for schooling. 
Yep, nothing much had changed. Everything was a little grayer, a little dirtier. Dad met me at the shuttle and gave me a big old hug. I noticed straight away that he was moving slower and stiffer. He made a little grunt when I squeezed. About a year. I tried to do more of the work so he could rest. His heart gave him pains. Dad never said that he loved me, you know? I, I knew on account of him showing it. How he'd stay up late to help with my projects or listen to my fretting. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Look at the time. Sorry to bend your ear so long. And I got so much to do before this ship's in decent shape. What? You want me to leave? Captain, you can't mean it. Oh, that's a relief. Thanks, Captain, for letting me stick around. I mean... We see a lot of the same faces coming and going. Most of them board spies and corporate sprats. Makes it hard to trust outsiders. You seem different, so welcome aboard. What? I didn't think you just... Parvati, is it? That's a lovely name. What can I do for you? I was just thinking. I haven't got much experience working with actual, real spaceships, Miss Junlei. Uh, uh, Chief Junlei. Junlei is fine. Um, okay. Since you run a whole space station, I was wondering if... Well, maybe you could teach me some things. I could message you later, maybe? I'd be happy to make the time, Parvati. You can ask me anything. Wow, great! I I'll do that then. Messages. Later. Oh, your, your name's pretty too. I should have said... Sorry. I like it. Honest. Sorry. Couldn't have done it without your moral support, Captain. Now. Well, don't worry, Miss Junlei. We'll be super gentle with the ship. You don't got a thing to worry about. I mean, aside from fires and such. I'm genuinely heartened to hear that. Thank you. Hey, Captain. Can I get your temperature on something real quick? So, Junlei and I have been talking some. Through messages? I, I got him here on my data pad, and well... She sent me a poem. One she wrote her own self, I'm pretty sure. I don't know if I should read into it. Because poems are all symbolic and such, right? It's not so good. But real sweet. Oh, law. That's what's got me spooked. I don't rightly know. It's about this engine that's been shaking itself apart. Then this lady mechanic comes by and lays one hand on it. The trouble goes away. It sings. I don't want to get too hopeful, but I'm wondering if maybe she's the engine and I'm the lady? It's a real romantic poem. It made my chest hurt, kind of. I don't know where it's leading yet, or if I'm misinterpreting. I'm not much interested in physical stuff. Never have been. Leastways, not like other folks seem to be. It's not that I can't. I just don't care for it. It's been a problem in the past. The folk who wanted to be with me back in the veil, they didn't... They said I was cold. Thanks, Captain. That makes me feel a touch better. I actually had another message from Junlei. I just couldn't work up the courage to open it. But I'm gonna change that. Right now. Okay, here we go. Let's see here. Talking about old friends, got to thinking... Isabel? Who's... who's Isabel? They were... close, Captain. Like, more than friends close. I don't know. Junlei talked about them like it was past, but how far in the past? 
ten years? Last week? Captain, I'm feeling all mixed up right now. Could we maybe head to the Groundbreaker? Get some drinks at that bar there? The Lost Hope? Come on, Captain. This is no time to be fooling on me. I'm full serious. Next time we're on the Groundbreaker, I aim to get a drink. If I got to, I'll do it on my lonesome. But I'd feel better if someone I trusted was there. Hey, Captain. I got a thing I want to ask you. It's kind of big. I was thinking about what you said before, after we went to the Lost Hope on the Groundbreaker. I reckon you're right. I think I'm ready to stop fretting and fussing and and ask Junlei to go steady straight out. And I'm thinking of doing it here, on the ship. I was kind of hoping you'd offer. The thing is, I can't ask her over like, like this. I mean, look at me. I'm all covered in engine grease and I ain't showered in nigh on a week. I smell like sweat most days and, well, don't look too close at my fingernails. I was thinking, hoping we could stop by Groundbreaker for bath supplies. I mean, only if you're not busy. Or when you're heading through Groundbreaker for something else. You don't gotta change plans on account of me. Anyhow, next time we dock in Groundbreaker, let me know. Because I want to come with. I think I got just the thing, my dear. A few years back, Auntie Cleo's put out a whole makeover kit, and I snagged a couple for myself. High-grade shampoo and conditioner, scrubby brush, a nice lotion, that sort of thing. I still got them, too. What's the scrubby brush for? Most folk don't got the time, or bathtubs for such, me included. I'll let you have one on clearance. You want rosish? Mock apple and cinnamon, or refurbished ship. Oh, gosh. We never talked about what kind of smells she likes. I think pretty much every spot on Groundbreaker just smells like old socks. It comes down to what sort of intent you got. If I was looking to do a spy job over in engineering, I'd be safe with refurbished ship. Now, if I was a young thing trying to come on all precious-like, I'd probably go with rosish. But if I was doing it for my own self, I'd pick mock apples and cinnamon. I guess you could eeny miny mo it. Take your time, dear. A lady's sense says a lot about her. <laughs> Captain! I'll just wrap that up for you since it's for a special occasion. I'll pay for that, ma'am. Thanks for being so helpful. Groundbreaker's safe from melting to bits now. Lots of good people can rest easy because of you. Oh, thanks, Captain. I'm gonna put these someplace safe. In her messages, June Lay said her mama used to make this dish for Monarch, dustback casserole. Saltuna and Xenogold needle mushrooms. There's gotta be some place in Stellar Bay that can bake a casserole. And I heard tell there's a Rizzo's town near there called Cascadia, what specializes in sweets. Thanks, Captain. I know I'm asking an awful lot, but I'm sure it's gonna be worth it. Whoa, by the stars, my poor heart. I just about pissed my jumpsuit. Most people don't. Besides, this place is enough to try anyone's nerves. Where should I begin? With the oversized mantisaurs? The board was right. This place isn't fit for human habitation. And I was a fool. That was a real popular meal 10, 20 years back, before the board tucked tail and ran. These days, everybody's had a belly full of salt tuna. They all want borst, and the mushrooms, well. Not many venture out of town, what with the monsters hereabouts. I can whip one up for you, but it'll cost. Here's a menu. Oh, yikes. I can't cover this much, Captain.
You got it. I got all the ingredients. Should only take about an hour in the oven. There we are. Now, if you don't mind, I really need to take a leak. My belly's gurgling just to smell it, Mr. Raymond. Thank you so much. A pleasure to help such a charming young lady. Oh, gosh. My tongue's rumbling just smelling that casserole. The dust back casserole Mr. Raymond made smells incredible. Oh, I kind of want to take a little taste. But I'm going to be strong. Now look how cute these cakes from Cascadia are. Someone even traced little hearts in them. Oh, I guess that settles dinner. Thanks for hauling me all over creation, Captain. Well, I was gonna, but then it hit me. I got this nice meal all planned out with music, and I got that soap to scrub up with, but I don't got nothing nice to wear, Captain. I don't have a head for fashion, and I can't really picture myself in something clean and pretty. There's this place I heard of in Byzantium, Jollikers Haberdashery. I bet I could find something nigh on perfect at a place like that. Thanks, Captain. I know I've been asking a lot, but you help me out every time. You're the best. Uh, and you have the very fabulous. I can't. You don't gotta be so forward about my reasons, Captain. Let me get a good look at you. Turn around, please, darling. My word. Such muscular shoulders. You're a vision, dear. Uh, I am no such thing, ma'am. Nonsense. You're absolutely lovely. Chin up now. I have just the thing for you. Let me do a back of the envelope calculation. Materials, labor, licensing and copyright. There. Love. That's the ultimate luxury, darling. Love. <laughs> oh, gracious me. I don't get why that's funny, ma'am. Oh, my cherub. Who woos for love anymore? That's so... precious. All right, Captain. Here is the absolute best I can do for you. There are some things I simply cannot skimp on, darling. Such a lovely young lady deserves the best. Now stand back. Back, back. I'll enter the settings and get these machines spinning. You'll be broke to bespoke in nearly an hour. And there we are, my darling girl. I wish you a splendiferous evening. And if you don't mind my asking, have you any interest in modeling? What? Oh, no, ma'am. All them eyes staring at me? I couldn't. No way, no how. I get scared just thinking on it. I wish you weren't so shy, my Violet. You truly are beautiful. I hope your date sees that as clearly as I. Oh, can you believe this outfit? It's so handsome, I'm almost afraid to touch it. Well, I guess that's everything, then. After all this time, I can... I just have to actually do it now. Y you know, there's, there's a part Jun Lei's been looking for to fix up the air cyclers. They only carried them on big colony ships, like the Hope. I know. For a while, it, it felt like everything I did was a little bit of help. And it meant I didn't have to ask her to be mine. Not yet. Not for real. Next time we dock with Groundbreaker, I'm doing it. I'll send June a message and ask her over. Oh, this is real scary, Captain. I'm grateful for all you've done. You... All right. She's on her way. How do I look? Oh, my hands have finally stopped shaking. All right, all right. Deep breath. Here I go. Anyhow, so I told him, Dad, I'm a big girl now. I ain't need your help. I can do it on my own. Okay, Captain, she's gone. I'm near about vibrating. I'm so excited. So she got here, and the first thing she said was, Oh, you smell nice, like mock apples. And I was like, yeah, new soap. And then she just sort of touched my arm real gentle-like, and 
called the cut of my outfit elegant. I couldn't hear the rest on account of my heart was beating so hard. Then I led her into the kitchen. I think she about cried when she saw the spread. She stood stock still and just said, Oh, real soft. Oh, and let me tell you, I was sweating. And then she blinked and said, Is that dustback casserole? I told her how we got Mr. Raymond to bake it for us, so it was double authentic. Made by a real live... Monar monarchian? Monarchist? Monarch person. Well, we talked a bunch over dinner about the things we learned just through messages, stuff we repaired, how I taught her to salvage and she taught me to build. When I brung out the sweetheart cakes, June, she got a little teary, said she had a thing she needed to say. But I stopped her because I wanted to say it first. I never felt so bold, Captain. I told her about how she made me feel. Bold like I acted. Strong. Smarter and kinder than I am on my lonesome. I listed all the things I liked about her. And then she pulled out a paper and read a speech. She, she talked about the things she admired about me, like my cleverness and my humor and how it made her want to be more open. Anyhow, when she wrapped up, I asked her to be my girlfriend. And Captain, she said yes! We talked about it some. I told her I wasn't sure how it'd work, how I've had a bad time of it in the past. She said we'll take it as it comes. Fix things together. Share meals, talk. Maybe she could rub my shoulders when they're sore. I said I might like that. It's all on your account, you know. Imagine if you'd never taken me out of Edgewater. I'd have never met June Lay at all. I don't know nothing about the Vicar's capital P plan, but you've sure changed my life. So, if you don't mind, I'm just gonna head to my cabin and happy scream into my pillow for like an hour. Any progress on that matter we discussed? Wonderful. This is fantastic. Well worth all the sacrifices I... Wait. What the fuck is this? Is this... French? I can't fucking read French. It's a law-forsaken joke is what it is. French! Ha! I was so high and mighty, preaching to the yokels about following the plan, while fighting it at every turn. Over... Overreacting? Do you have any idea how many years I spent in... <laughs> no. You couldn't possibly know, could you? I've spent my life searching for the keys to unlocking the secrets of the universal equation that underlies the plan. I had hoped this book held some of those answers. I became so desperate, I even got myself assigned to this plague-ridden backwater to find the damn thing. All the time and suffering I've spent. Wasted. Please. As if my life should have no greater meaning than proselytizing to a bunch of feeble-minded wretches. Nothing could be more excruciating than discussing the true nature of reality with people who have no interest beyond their next Aetherwave program. But that's neither here nor there. What I need to do now is to find a translator, obviously. But to do that, I'll first need to secure trans... Perhaps I could make myself of use to your crew. Certainly. I already gave you most of my money, but I can offer you free spiritual counseling, and I'd be happy to watch your back. I'm pretty handy with a tossball stick, or any blunt instrument, really. I'm also a passable gun hand, if it comes to that. I can usually talk my way out of conflict, though. Oh, I'm fairly competent at hacking computers as well. Fantastic. Let me get my things in order, and I'll catch up with you. Edgewater's gonna miss you. Folk here always had good things to say about their vicar. Thank you, Ms. Holcomb. I'll be glad for the change of scenery, and to leave this place behind. I shall see you on the ship, Captain, whenever you're ready to leave Emerald Vale. Just yank the drive, and I'll do the rest. 
Now that we have the data cartridge, I can finally find out where that scholar I'm looking for ended up. What do you want? Oh, hey, Vicar Max. What are you doing on Monarch? I thought scientists ain't welcome here. Haven't you heard? Everyone's welcome here. It's a fucking worker's paradise. But you wouldn't know anything about that, would you? Never worked a day in your miserable life. You're just a parasite, living off my goodwill. Well, guess what? My goodwill's exhausted, along with my temper. This is the guy who told me about the book while we were in prison. I lied about finding a scholar. But I don't care about any of that anymore. I just want to inflict massive amounts of pain on this guy. Oh, he knew, didn't you? Didn't you? Okay, okay, I admit it. I was tired of your high and mighty speechifying all the time. It was just a joke, I swear. I, I didn't mean nothing by it. See, Captain? I've dealt with this swine before. I know how he thinks. Now, where were we? Oh, that's right. I was about to beat you. Severely. Wait, wait, wait! I know who can translate the book for you. It's too late for that. I threw away my life chasing fairy tales. Will punishing you fix any of that? Of course not. But by law, it will make me feel a whole lot better. Okay, okay. Talk, Reggie. It was stolen from some sort of expert on philosophism. Weird hermit lady on Scylla. My father used to deliver supplies to the mining outpost there. I don't think so. A crazed hermit on Scylla? He's playing us for fools. It's true. My father collected some extra bits on the side by diverting some of the supplies to the gal. The way he told it, he thought the book looked valuable, so he took it. Couldn't find any buyers when it turned out to not only be French, but banned as well. Fine. We've got more important things to do anyway. Can we talk? I want to thank you for talking some sense into me back there with Cheney. It has been a long time since I gave in to my... ...violent enthusiasm. Oh, exactly as you'd imagine. Can't say I enjoyed the stint. It did provide me with plenty of time to... This was snapping me back to where I needed to be. You stray too far from the course of your destiny. The world will try to correct for it. You're right. I owe you an apology. I've been so obsessed for so long, I couldn't see anything else. You offered me a place on your crew, friendship, and I used you to get to Cheney. And even then, you saved me from myself. I don't know if I could live with myself had I gone through with it. You owe me nothing, I know, but I... I'm begging your forgiveness. Thank you. I promise I'll be nothing but truthful from this point forward. What have the solar winds deposited on my doorstep now? Just more dirt and debris? Or do you actually believe you are here seeking the truth? I must admit, I tire of the truth seekers. Mayhaps you're here to rob me? That would be so much more exciting. We've been told this was once yours. I believe the knowledge within here contains the answers I seek. Answers that will free men's minds from toil. I can translate it. But it won't do you any good. I can see you are a man in a hurry, and the insights in that book would take you years of study to fully comprehend. I have spent my life in contemplation. 
I believe my mind is prepared to receive the truth. There is one way that can speed up the process. It involves a combination of several ingredients, some of which can be fatal. It is not for the faint of heart or the unprepared. Either hallucinations followed by unconsciousness and a headache, or raving insanity, which can be fun in its own way. And I believe he may be right. There is both violence and peace warring inside you, Max. This process would be extremely tenuous for one such as yourself. I'm committed, no matter the cost. Uh, I don't know, Captain. Is this safe? I don't think this is safe. Well, I don't want to leave you all on your lonesome. I I'll just... Oh, fine, I'll do it. All right. Head on into the meditation room and partake of the sacramental incense. It's waiting on the table when you're ready to begin. Poor, poor Maximilian. Maximilian, why are you still doing this? You've been fighting against the world since before you left home. Haven't you figured out yet that the more you fight, the more pain you cause yourself? Mother, you're dead. You can't be here. I knew this was too good to be true. These are just cheap hallucinogens that have... Uh, 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 uh. What's happening to my voice? Does my voice sound weird to you? And what's wrong with your face? Y'all see these stars I'm seeing? Gosh, they're pretty. Like shimmers in the sea. Don't tell me these drugs have warped your sense of truth, along with your face. Is it just me, or is everything a little wavy in here? Never mind. This is all lies, I'm sure of it. We are obviously the victims of a tasteless joke being perpetuated... Uh, perpetrated? I mean, we're being made fools of, aren't we? When I get out of here... I'm going to show that hermit what you get for messing with me. Maximilian, always ready to give up, to lash out, always searching for answers, but always in the wrong place, never looking inside himself. I hope you'll pardon my interruption, but I think it's because he's unhappy with himself. Thank you. It relieves me to see there's at least one positive influence in my son's life after all these years. Has he told you how he thoughtlessly abandoned us? Thoughtlessly? How could you say that? I only wanted you and father to be proud of me. I was going to be the perfect vessel. I was going to be a better... more full of the plan. This here, it's all coming out wrong the plan. It filled you with a joy I could never feel. I wanted it. And being a laborer made me miserable. I was better than that. You certainly convinced yourself you were. But don't feel bad. We continually lie to ourselves, weaving stories in a vain attempt to convince us that we are in control of anything. These stories are how we try to make sense of our lives, but they are not real, are they? They're just stories. You need to drop your story and see the truth. Stories are real. If they mean something, if they inspire you to kindness or, or action, but maybe Max's story about himself is all wrong, and that's why he's so unhappy. What the fuck are you talking about? No, I just wanted to prove to my parents that I... that... I, damn it. You're right. Max, you need to lay the past to rest. What happened with your father and I, it's long dead. To attain your goals, 
You must live in the chaos. Be fine with the chaos. Whether you resist or not, it will take you wherever it wants. More assuredly than even the fictional architects plan to sleep away to prove. No, that's not true. The basis of everything is order, not chaos. It's true, I know it is. So did you. Why are you denying it? Before you died, the plan made you happy. No, it didn't. I made myself happy. There's nothing holding you back but you. If you can't understand that, you will never understand anything. Goodbye, Maximilian. This whole thing, it's... It's... It's just a farce, right? Just... Just... My own brain working against me? You couldn't be more right. Hello, Max. What? Who? Why do you look like me? Are you me? Not really. I'm who you think you are. I am disciplined, controlled. I have no doubts. And I don't exist. Yet you have judged yourself against me your whole life. Why? Why do you berate yourself for not being me? I don't feel right about this anymore. I, I need to get out of here. You asked for this. Why are you fighting it? The same reason you always do. Fear of the unknown. Not having control. Is this the answer? Because it sure sounded like an answer. That I don't understand. Who are you again? And why do you look like me? Do you think he's alright? Should we help him? He's not looking for the truth. He's looking for a new way to organize reality in his head. A new story of the happy you. The contented you. Me. That's not... Uh, it can't be right. I, I've only been searching for the answer to the equation. Because it will set us free. Won't it? How? By removing the need to make any decision. To have your life completely controlled. The illusion of certainty. Your obsession allowed you to avoid the real question. Who are you? I'm Max. Me! I'm real! You can't convince me otherwise! Please don't convince me I'm not. It's okay, Mr. Vicar. We're here, watching over you. You just ride this out, right? Your individual self is what's not real. It is simply a concept. By the architect. Architect? How could I have believed in an architect? That's ridiculous. I must be losing my mind completely. What you're saying almost makes sense. We exist inside our thoughts, thinking we're in control. That's it, isn't it? We have no control over anything. It's all lies. How could I not have seen this? But how do we escape our... ourselves? I see you're back with us. Feared we lost you there. Never seen anyone pass out yet stay upright before. I... woke up. The illusions I built for myself just fell away. I'm no longer interpreting, I'm... experiencing. Everything... is perfect. In a way. Perhaps it's more accurate to say I was asking the wrong questions. I understand so much more now. I see it all. All there is to be experienced, to be lived. Of course there is pain and loss, 
but the suffering is caused by trying to control reality, clinging to the way you want things to be, not enjoying the way they are. I am content. I have finally found what I was looking for, even though I was looking for the wrong thing. So, have you found your answers? Not so much found as finally listened. Yes, it is quite the convoluted maze we build for ourselves. It looks like you learned something in there as well. Hearing that brings me great joy, my friend. Like grease and unwashed bodies, just as I remembered. That's not the point. This halfway just knocked out one of my workers. Yeah, with a toss ball stick, I heard you the first time. There weren't any witnesses. No witnesses? He's not even denying it. Jackass had it coming. Shut it, Felix. You're not making this any better. You get to with me again, you little back bay brat, I will toss you out an airlock. This is the groundbreaker, not Byzantium. You ain't the law here. I am. Now move along. I don't have time for this. I need a drink. Going for a stroll around the docking base? Sure was. Got a knack for upsetting the board and the Mardettes all at once. Between you and me, I was hoping they'd come to fisticuffs. The guy insulted my Rizzo's rangers, all right? You can't just insult my rangers and expect to get away with it. So, of course, I decked him with a tossball stick. I mean, what am I? Some kind of fair-weather fan? Guy never liked me, always trying to get a rise out of me. But I keep my chin up, right? Be the bigger man, I tell myself. He's a spacer's chosen man, though. So when the chosen beat my rangers the other night, my foreman comes swaggering up with his head full of boasting. That's when I broadsided him with a tossball stick. Yeah. Look, this was a long time coming. Guy thinks he can push me around because he's some sky-high foreman and I'm just a back bay's dock worker. Well, former dock worker. Guess I just tendered my resignation. Enjoy my freedom. Scrounged together enough bits for a zero-G. Other than that, can't say as I do. Hey, not for nothing. But I saw you wander out of that ship over there by the dock. Wouldn't happen to be yours, would it? Captain of the Unreliable. You're like something out of a serial drama. This is to be. I appreciate your time. Felix Millstone. Pleased to make your acquaintance. See you around, boss. I've been thinking. You know, they're gonna make a serial about our adventures one day. I've been trying to think of a good title for this episode. I like the sound of... The skip job. No, 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 wait, I got it. Hope in dark times. Get it? Hope? Like the ship. That's what folks in the business call wordplay. Yeah, I've been thinking about that. Got a list right here. Thrilling tales of the unreliable. Or maybe spine-chilling stories from the edge of the system. Was also considering... Astounding adventures in the other. I'm partial to that last one. Not bad. Got a nice ring to it. Stealing the hope from the board, skipping it across the whole damn system. <laughs> this is gonna be great. I can't wait. Enough to boost my pay? I'm just kidding, boss. I know you don't pay me. I'm sure you've got plans to make. As for me, I gotta keep practicing my signature dropkick. The hope might have cameras.
Captain, I hope Dr. Wells has not dragged you into one of his irrational schemes again. My diagnosis of his mental stability is not flattering. Destination reached, Scylla. Hey boss, got a hypothetical for you? You got a friend, see? Somebody you knew when you were growing up. You were close. Then one day, they up and vanished. Five years go by, they send you a message out of the Aether. What's going through your head? <laughs> you got the wrong idea, boss. It ain't like that. Guy by the name of Clyde Harlow. He was an old friend of mine. Honestly, he was probably my first and longest friend. I just heard from him. Says he wants to talk to me. Says it's urgent. Figured I should let you know, seeing as we're on Scylla and all. Clyde's got a base on the other side of this rock. I appreciate this, boss. I know you're going out of your way for me. Hey, you. Looking for something? Where do you think you're going? Yeah. The captain said we might be getting a new recruit. That you, then? Sounds like Clyde's jumping to conclusions, but yeah. I'm Felix. You're on a first-name basis with Captain Harlow, huh? All right, go on through. Well, hey there, Hullhead. Clawed your way out of the groundbreaker at long last? Uh-huh. Oh, sorry, were you expecting me to say something? Maybe a long time no see, or a you've aged old man? I thought you were dead. Or throwing yourself against the walls of some re-education center. That's been five years, Clyde. The best thing you can say is, hey there, Hullhead? No, Felix. The best thing I can say to you is yet to come. Also, I'd like to have a word with your captain. So, you took Felix under your wing. Kept him busy. Good. Kid always needed a place to belong. He's been watching out for us just as much as we've been watching out for him. Felix's family, mister. Hear that, Clyde? I've been making something out of myself. So long as you haven't been making a fool of yourself. I'm sure Felix has no end of stories to tell of your exploits together. I look forward to catching up with the boy. I'm working on something. Something big. Something the likes of which Halcyon has never seen. And I want Felix to be a part of my initiative. I'm fulfilling a promise I made to the boy, that one day, he and I would change the colony together. That day has finally arrived. Easy there, Clyde. No one said nothing about throwing in with you. In case you didn't notice, I'm pretty happy where I am. I'm not asking you to walk away from your captain, Felix, but neither should you allow yourself to be controlled by fear. Change is not to be feared. I brought you here because I want to know where Felix's loyalties lie. When the day of our revolution comes, I want to know that I can rely on him. Everyone in my crew proves their loyalty. No exceptions. Not even Felix. I want you to deal with a traitor for me. Name's Trask. Kill him and bring me proof of his death. His ring should do nicely. Then Felix will have done me a favor, and I will be grateful. I imagine we'll catch up on lost time, have a long talk about his future. Ratted us out to the board. He's been an informant, has been for years. When he realized I was onto him, he and his little cadre mutinied. Killed five of my own and tucked tail. I don't know where he's hiding, but his wife might. Rosanna. Lives on the groundbreaker last I checked. Rosanna knows my crew by name and face, but you're a stranger to her. She'll talk to you. Clyde offered me a hand when nobody else would. I'd say I owe him a good turn. There you have it, Captain. A favor for an old friend. We get rid of this traitor for you and I'm in? I mean, assuming I want in. 
We're building a new world together, Felix. You'll want in. Remember, I want proof. Bring me his ring. I don't care if the hand's still attached. Here, my token. Think of this as my personal signature. Anyone who knows me by my works will know me by this token. You mind trying to have a moment here? Rufus and I are no longer on speaking terms. I don't know where he is. And if I did, I wouldn't tell you. That's Harlow's mark. No mistake. Guess he's not letting this one go. I don't want any manner of harm befalling Rufus. Not on my account. We're not? Oh, right, yeah. We're non-violent sorts. Real diplomatic. All right, you made your point. Rufus is hiding out in Emerald Vale. Got a few friends with him. That's as much as I know. Please, just make it quick. That's right, our marriage contract expired some months ago. And seeing how he's technically an outlaw, I wouldn't renew even if I wanted to. Precious little. He and Rufus worked together on the Groundbreaker some years back before he vanished. A few years later, Rufus gets a message from an old friend. Something about starting a revolution. Something about getting rich. Abandoned his work and ran off that very day. He must have been recruiting. Gathering up his band of revolutionaries. Word of advice, kid? Anybody carrying on about a revolution just wants to sell you something. I don't know, Harlow. Never so much as bandied a word with a fellow. You're better off having this discussion with Rufus. Only that Rufus is in a bad way. He came to see me a little ways back. Said he had to go into hiding. Never asked why. He was here to collect his personals, complain about Harlow to me, and say goodbye. In that order. No, and he was particular about that. Said I was better off not getting entangled in his mess. Little late for that, says I. Appreciate it. No offense meant, just been a long day is all. I don't know who you are or why you're prowling around here, but I'm willing to make a guess. You're one of Harlow's gun hands, ain't you? He sent you after me. Yeah, of course he did. Thing is, you and I are at an impasse. Harlow wants me dead, and I've got no intention of dying. How do I know that I can trust you? Yeah, guess that's a fair point. Listen, I don't know what lies Harlow's dripped down your ear, but you'd be a fool to trust him. I never betrayed Harlow. Harlow betrayed all of us. The board's got him in their pocket, been paying him off for years. All that palaver about revolutions? It's a lie. You're a real piece of work, Trask. Not just a turncoat, but a liar, too. Go piss up a rope, kid. I've got nothing to prove to you. That's the whole truth. Harlow's just another board asset. A two-bit mercenary wearing a dissident's clothes. Yeah, I've got proof. There's always a paper trail when the board's involved. I chanced upon some correspondence between Harlow and his employer. I don't know that it makes a difference. What was I to do with that evidence? Bring it in front of the board? There's no authority in Halcyon willing to take Harlow to task. I hid my papers before Harlow chased me out. Back in the middle of the base, there's an old vent in a utility corridor. I stashed my evidence in that vent. Board-sanctioned piracy. Harlow went after the ships the board wanted destroyed, capturing anybody the board wanted captured. If we captured you, we'd ransom you. Harlow liked to do the job himself. Gather up the captives on his own ship, vanish for a couple of days. Only that's not what happened. Harlow's been selling his captives off to the board. I don't know where they ended up. Re-education, Tartarus, maybe worse. Because he's for sale, 
Anything the board can buy, the board will buy, and that includes loyalty. Harlow was a charismatic bastard, and he was ruthless. With Harlow in their pocket, the board had an informant, a pirate, a smuggler, and a gang leader all rolled up into one odious excuse for a human being. Sounds like a deal to me. Take it, you've made up your mind. You gonna tell Harlow I'm dead? May as well. I'm never going back to that life again. Uh, here, take the ring. And for what it's worth, my gratitude. What's the word? So it is. Thus ends Rufus Trask. Once a sensible man, by and by a fool, presently a corpse. I hope you never have to discover what it is like, Captain. The relief one feels when a mutiny comes to an end. The Trask had some things to say about you. And I've got my own misgivings. That's a damning accusation. Am I right to presume you have some evidence on hand? 
Those papers don't prove a thing. We've all done business with the board. They own the whole damn colony. Trask put you up to this. <laughs> that miserable wretch. He's trying to undermine everything I stand for. You've got a lot of nerve calling me a liar to my face. How should I know? But what the hell do I care? Trask was a traitor, and I didn't ask you to understand his motives. I asked you to cross him off. Clyde, look me in the eye and tell me it's not true. Tell me, and I'll believe you. Don't talk to me like I'm some common criminal, Felix. You're the one on trial, not me. I don't know what kind of poison that snake dripped in your ear, but as far as I'm concerned, you've been compromised. <laughs> Fun. Heads up! This is... this is definitely not how I imagined it would end. The void's black, water's wet, and Clyde hated the board. That's something I just knew. Now? I don't know. I don't know what to think. No. I guess you really don't. I've just got a lot on my mind right now. This is, uh... This is a lot to take in. I always looked up to Clyde. The thought that he could be an agent of the board is just abhorrent to me. Yeah, he did. And I'm not sure how I'm gonna get over that. No kidding. I'm glad you keep the kitchen stocked. You've given me a lot to think about. I'm gonna be mulling over this whole mess for a couple of days. I don't know what I believe anymore. Maybe it's better that way. Thanks for your time, boss. Sorry, am I causing a scene? See, Umfuru? We could have avoided all this unpleasantness if you just let me talk to Jesse in the first place. Let me get one thing straight. Jesse and I are not friends. I just owe her, okay? As for the rest, I'm trying to figure that out. All I know is that she's been here too long, and she's apparently not receiving visitors. Be my guest. If you know something I don't about dealing with hospital bureaucracy, I'll be impressed. For the last ratchet on... You whole-headed quacks, do you know that restful recuperation requires not being disturbed, don't you? For the last ratchet on rotten time, leave me in peace! You whole-headed quacks, do you know that restful recuperation requires not being disturbed, don't you? What? Why? Everything's fine. We're all fine here. No need for her to be worrying her pretty little head about me. I'm just terrible, dreadful sick is all. Got a cough that won't quit and sores all over my body. Highly, lethally contagious. But I'll be fine, so long as I'm left alone. Criminy. She really ain't gonna drop this, is she? All right, okay. 
We can discuss this like the level-headed folk that we are. Seems I've got to do something before Ellie goes jabbering my business to anyone with one ear and an intent to listen. The truth is, I'm not sick. But if you repeat what I'm about to tell you to anyone, I will deny it with my dying breath. You, uh, ain't with the board, are you? See, I owe them. A lot. I might have missed a payment or two, and the other night I swear someone was following me back to my room. So, I hold up here to lay low. Udon Bedford's the board guy on the station. He'd know how I stand with them. If you can square things for me, I'd owe you one even bigger than Ellie owes me. Thanks for helping me with the board. You're a real pal. Or I guess I should say, Ellie is one, huh? A wise choice. The board helps it. Miss Doyle owes the board a significant sum. Alas, the only collateral she has is her organs. Compulsory donation is quite legal in such cases. Kind and efficient. Can't say I disapprove. Oh. I think you may have underestimated the size of Miss Doyle's... I'm glad we could come to an accommodation. You may inform Miss Doyle that our collections agent will be recalled. Now, is there anything else you need, or can I return to my work? Wish I could say it was good to see you, Ellie. At least you finally got your chance to square our debt. That ought to make you smile for once, huh? Nothing makes me happier than being even. Except being right. That's nice, too. Got word from Udom, from the hitman who trailed me the other night. Seems I'm in the clear, thanks to you squaring my debt. You sure saved my skin, stranger. All debts between me and Ellie are cleared. The good news came through the wireless. Looks like you paid my debt to Jesse. I guess that means I owe you now, right? Tell you what, I'm a little short on bits at the moment. But I'm a decent scrapper and a better-than-average sawbones. If you're looking for a medic, I can work my debt off. If I'm being honest, and I prefer not to, I was about ready to pick up another contract anyway, and you settled this in a pretty tidy fashion, which tells me you're competent. But we can say I'm repaying the favor if you prefer that version. You won't be sorry, though it looks like you've got a full roster already. Time to play favorites, Captain. Welcome to the crew, Miss Ellie. We're real happy to have you. Don't know how you managed to get Zora and Sanjar in the same room. Since we're in Byzantium, there's something I've been meaning to do. I haven't actually talked to my folks in a while. Shocking, right? Anyway, it's probably about time I paid them a visit. Given the dangerous life I lead, they've got to be worried sick. Which brings us to where we are today, several messages and a few years late. See, I'm originally from Byzantium, born and raised. I know that probably comes as a big surprise. But I worked so hard! I dropped the accent, picked up a swagger, developed a taste for Spacer's Choice. Huh. Well, I bet they won't know the difference. I bet they'll barely recognize me. Reconnect is a strong word. And, uh... I was thinking you'd come, too. Great! And when we get there, draw out your rough edges a bit. If you've got an outfit you haven't washed in a while, maybe one with some blood stains, wear that one. You're the boss. Anything else? Marilyn, is that you? 
Mars, we certainly didn't expect to see you like this. And I didn't expect you to renew your marriage contract. But we're all full of surprises today, aren't we? Speaking of surprises, you should meet my new friend. We've been running around the system for a while now, stirring up all sorts of trouble. There you go again, Captain. Always menacing, polite society. Anyway, you're probably wondering where I've been all this time. Not <clears throat> exactly. The last few years have been a bloody haze. You wouldn't believe the messes we've gotten ourselves into. Right? Yep, we're a pair of disgraceful lowlifes. Marilyn, this really isn't the best time. Uh, perhaps you should go. We'll stay as long as we like. And while we're at it, we'll drink your expensive hooch, wear our outside shoes all over your nice floors. He's right. Since when can you afford authentic Terran marble? That's what we've been trying to tell you, dear, but you must understand, we hadn't heard from you in ages. We thought you were dead. I'm not dead. I just never wanted to talk to you again. I'm afraid the distinction was lost on us, darling. We only did what any grieving parents in our position would do. We collected on your life insurance policy. And the payouts have been rather, uh, substantial. You what? Well, now that I'm here, I guess you'll just have to report back that I'm very much alive and kicking. It's not that simple. For one thing, we'd have to cut back on so many necessities. The neighbors would be sure to notice. Why did you do that? We had to explain your disappearance somehow. We couldn't very well tell people you'd you'd run off to become a a miscreant, could we? Shh. Someone could hear you. We concocted a story about Celeste Jolly Girl designing a pair of 12-inch heels for you. One of a kind, naturally. That led to your tragic death when you tripped and broke your neck. It was quite the story. People were talking about it for weeks. Couldn't you have at least made up a better story? Something with pirates or raptodons? And what are you going to do now that we're here? Yes, um, about that. We were just about to ask you to, uh, leave. Quietly, if you don't mind. Hmm, she hasn't changed a bit, I see. That's it? You just want us to disappear now? Marilyn, please. Don't cause a scene. Let's just get out of here, Captain. Fine. I'm gone. Forever this time. Can you believe those two? We'd hardly been there a minute and they turned us out like yesterday's garbage. them to get upset. I just thought it would play out differently. They'd both be sitting there watching one of their vapid aether wave dramas, and then we'd walk in. Mother would drop her mock apple cider, and the glass would shatter all over their overpriced marble. Father would tear off his glasses and blink open-mouthed. Shh. I'm 
getting to the good part. I'd have a great one-liner in the tube. I was thinking either, the leather's fake, but the scars are real, or, oops, did I just track awesome onto your rug? Yeah, I'm gonna use that one day. Now, getting back to my story. Father would throw his hands up, because this would be just like me, to come back and make a big scene. Then, Mother would do the old, You had us worried sick. Her eyes would be red, and she'd have her fist in front of her mouth to stifle a sob. I just didn't want to get booted out of the house I grew up in like that. It's embarrassing, you know. And I've got a reputation to maintain. I hope you don't think I'm talking about this because I want to be introspective. But I want to talk about me now. Can I just have a drink and punch some poor defenseless pillow instead? Anyway, I don't want to sift through this lousy experience for meaningful life lessons. I'm mad, and I want to do something about it. Something like... Wait a second. What if I could get that money? I could open a new account, designate that account holder as a sole beneficiary, all the payouts would go to me. I'll make money without doing a thing. And I'll get to cut them off. My policy is with the Greater Halcyon Insurance Group. They have an office in Byzantium. Maybe you could use some of your people skills to help me set up a dummy beneficiary account. If that doesn't work, I'm sure we can find one of their terminals and do it ourselves. I guess we're going to Fallbrook. This looks like the place. You ready to get my money or what? Note that all of your fragments must be recovered and must be smaller than a standard bit cartridge for the payouts to kick in. I remember that one. That's the young socialite who broke her neck, right? Of course, no one remembers me for the marauders I've killed or the bits I've stolen. Typical. That claim was airtight. Our best investigators couldn't find an exclusion for that one. Are you serious? Well, we interviewed the parents extensively. They had plenty of awkward childhood stories that illustrated their daughter's clumsiness and capriciousness. Hey, those are entirely made up. Furthermore, the claim spurred a whole line of fashion-related policies. It's become a very lucrative market. You can't, of course. Only Miss Fenhel can assign her beneficiaries. And she's dead. If we let every friend, relative, and acquaintance change a policy like that, people would do it all the time. Imagine the paperwork. Oh, you mean hypothetically. Well, hypothetically, you'd access the terminal in the back room that contains data on all our policies. And you'd theoretically add the beneficiary of your choice. But you wouldn't actually do that, of course. That would be fraud. Please, my policy only covers paper cuts and wrist strain. Very well, I'll do it. But then you've got to go. Confrontations like this will raise my premiums. I'll need the name of the new beneficiary. Um, Ellie Fenhill? If you say so. The payouts will flow exclusively into the new account at the start of the month. I hope Ms. Fenhill enjoys her newfound prosperity. You really did it. Give these payouts a few years and I'll be rolling in it. Hey, you did the real work. All I had to do was not be dead. I'm just glad my folks aren't gonna live off that awful story they made up. 
Maybe now they'll have to go back to real jobs. Don't get me wrong, I'm happy to have the money too. Just don't ask me what I plan on doing with it. Maybe you haven't noticed, but you can't even count on a bribe making it into the right pocket. What's the point of planning for anything around here? Anyway, enough of that. You did a job for me, so here's your fee. Could have fooled me with all your tough talk. What's gotten into you? You sure? Because my kind of friends will pick your pocket clean while they're getting hammered with you. You don't have to get all mushy about it. Still, maybe you've got a point. Maybe it's good to watch someone's back now and then so that one day they watch yours. So, you just keep the money. One of us has to look out for your interests. It's nothing personal. It's just the closest thing I've got to a code. Anyway, enough of the touchy-feelies, huh? bastard slippery right on account of its blood so it's it's sliding all over the place trying to crawl away getting so i can't tell the tell the blood from the mud but i gotta get in there get right in that baby wrapped stomach and dig it out if so much as a drop of stomach acid got on that medallion i shit i don't know what i'd do might be i'd hunt every damn wrapped out there right what are you staring Wait, you ain't from around here. Who are you? Ooh, charmer. Don't get a lot of that around here. Folks mostly grump at me about how I should join the MSI payroll. Nice change of pace. Buy me a drink, will you? Another in a long line of damn fools trying to cut me off. I'll buy my own poison then. What are you doing in Stellar Bay, stranger? Well, 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 well. Let's get down to brass nuts then, shall we? Brass, wait, that ain't it. Brass rats? Let's, let's talk business. I'm headed back out there after I sober up. You want a guide sooner than that? You'll have to get me something to clear my head. Outstanding! Our dispensary here maintains a stock of, uh, well, I don't rightly know what they are. Steroid or caffeine somethings? Pills. They're very good. I'm cut off for the month on account of needing one just about every damn day. But I'm sure you've got your wily ways. Fetch me one and we'll be all set. Well, they work. We got a deal or what? You won't find a better deal in Halcyon than our special one-time offer for a refurbished sanitation unit. Remember, if it's dirty, it's a job for Sam. What in the... That thing talks? If Velma's capable of running the warehouse, she can certainly pick up her own caffeinoid. Don't be so hard on her. With Brax missing, she's working doubles and needs a little edge. Very well, dearie. But you stop by any time you like, hmm? Thanks, I'll, uh, I'll keep that in mind. Hello, dearie. Why, I don't believe I've seen you before. And with sweet cheeks like those, I'd remember. What can Auntie Abigail do for you? 
And what a helpful young man you are. Nothing like a little pill to liven up the spirits. Who's your lucky friend, dearie? I'm so sorry, but with the iconoclasts and the marauder filth chasing away what little trade we get, I'm afraid I have to reserve my supply for Stellar Bay residents. Our reserves have gotten so low, I've even had to start locking the supply room upstairs. Isn't it a shame what some people will do to get a little extra? Except for you. I can tell. You've got one of those faces. I'd make an exception for you if I could, my little cherub. Is there anyone else needing a special pickup from Auntie Abigail? Oh, her. It's none of my business, but I have told her Dr. Williams would bump up her monthly allotment if only she'd join MSI, contribute like the rest of us. Now I've gone and said too much, <laughs> and you know me, dearie, I don't like to pry. I'm afraid not. Dr. Williams managed the town's allotments from his terminal upstairs. Even I can't access them. Oh, you flatter an old woman. Me, I'm just here to be a pretty face for the customers. And to keep an extra key to the supply room for all the times Dr. Williams misplaced his. The one upstairs, where we store our medicines. Chin up, dearie. Easy <laughs> ah, the charmer. Welcome back. Drink, chat, or business? All of the above? More or less dangerous than a steady supply of alcohol. Give it here. Whew, that hits the spot. Right in the, uh, oh, no, there it is. There it is. Yes. We're in business. Let's go. Great. Where to? Oh, Hiram? I ain't checked in on that man in an age. He's running the giant radio tower we lovingly call Devil's Peak. We'll be going south and west, mostly along the road till we're past Fallbrook. Out there, there's a western slope that'll lead us through some, uh, some fun. You like hunting, right? That's fun. If you're more of a spelunker, Rotting River will take you into the mountain caverns. We can discuss options when we get closer. That said, uh, three's already a crowd. I don't mind waiting somewhere until you got a spot open. New customer profile created. Greetings, user Nyoka. Hey, got a favor to ask you. Figure while we're out here in the wilderness anyhow, we might stop in on an old friend of mine. Preferably before we get to Hiram's. It's on the way, don't worry. You don't seem the type to run off and get yourself killed, and... I could use the help. I'll be up front with you. I hate asking for help. I hate it. Every time I give someone the opportunity to disappoint me, they seem to make it their most immediate goal. But this, what I'm thinking, it's dangerous. Really? Here I was stealing myself for inevitable rejection. I used to run with a band of hunters. Friends. Six of us. We were on Monarch when the corporations pulled out, and we helped a lot of people pick up the pieces. I haven't seen two of them in years, and the rest I know to be dead. I'd like to gather their effects and bury them all in the same places, like the family we once were. First, we go to Hayes. I buried him away from our encampment. I need to pay my respects. I'll show you where he rests. He had a medallion in his effects. That's what I'll bring home to Barry. Then we find my two lost trackers and bring them home. A long time ago, we built an encampment in one of Monarch's cave systems. Trouble is, a mana queen showed up and kicked us all out. 
If we can find Rebecca and Anders, they'll know how to lure her out. Then we kill the bitch and bury everyone's medallions together. <laughs> Thanks, Cap. Hayes was the best self-sacrificing son of a saint I ever met. Halcyon is worse off without him. Now, if we're gonna lure the Manta Queen out, we'll need to find Rebecca and Anders. They took a UDL contract on Terra too. We never heard from them again. I think it's time I call in a favor with Hiram. If anyone can track them down, it's him. I don't know much about it. It paid well, so they took it. They said they'd be back in a couple of weeks and that maybe we could all use the money to get off Monarch. That was a long time ago. I should have. I, I really should have. But soon after they left, Hayes and the others died. And to be honest, after him, I, I stopped trying because it hurt like hell to do so. Thanks. I'm still not convinced I won't come to regret it, but we've started down this path. Might as well see it through. Maybe it'll stop me screaming at night. Now come on, let's make tracks before Hiram dies of old age. The door's busted. Rebecca? Anders? You in there? Huh. Rebecca taught me this once. You can jerry-rig these old locks so as they don't open anymore. But we've only ever done that if we're in a real bind. Here, I'll fix it. Oh, no. Oh, no. What did you do? Oh, Nyoka. I'm so sorry. I don't... They were... That bitch! They were all set to abandon us! What would Clara say, huh? Every day she'd ask if we heard from you. And she'd have forgiven you! The kid had a soul that made the sulfur smell like roses! Ugh. Hard to leave your medallions to rot with you, but... Clara would want to be buried with her sister. At least... At least I know. Ought to have learned by now that getting one's hopes up tends to open them to being dashed across the stars. I hate to say this, but Clara died thinking her sister was still fighting to get back home. I think I'm glad. If she were still alive now, it'd break her to know the truth. Yeah, maybe. I'm used to disappointment. She was still so naive as to let it hurt her every time it happened. Only thing left is to take these medallions home which means figuring out how to bait the Mana Queen out of our old base. The most pissed off I've ever seen a queen was when a foreign species was on her soil. I'd wager the stench of a primal might do the trick. Pfft, that'd be boring. Half the fun in exploring is the fact that you're on an unknown trail. I've never had the pleasure of hunting primals, but I hear they're all over Scylla. Let's tear a few apart, shall we? I'm sure they've got pheromones. Everything does.
That queen ain't gonna go down easy. I can't wait. What's up? Outstanding. These ought to be enough. Let's get back to Monarch. There's an old base I used to call home. I can get us in the door, but we'll have to shoot our way through the queen's brood to get to the center. We'll set the bait there. Password to the door is Charon. Hayes's idea. Clara, Hayes, Anders, Rebecca, Opal, Nioka. Charon. He said it was some old myth, something about death and all the things we killed. Rest of us just thought it sounded cool, so here we are. I wish these were more auspicious circumstances, but at least we're all here. This bringing them together, burying them, 
This is the kind of thing Hayes would have done. That makes it stupid. By all accounts, we should have left well enough alone, but that also makes it right. Captain, thank you. You mind if we rest a spell before we head out? I'd, I'd like to bury Opal and Clara proper before I lay everyone's medallions to rest. How can I be of assistance? The unit is a cleaning Sam. Hawthorne brought it on board some cycles ago, I'm sure with the intent to modify it. But I've never seen it up and running. Alex likely recorded progress notes detailing his efforts to modify Sam. If you check the terminal in your captain's quarters... Make yourself... Battery levels are fully charged. Thank you. All cleaning tasks have been completed. Scheduling next round of cleaning to commence in four minutes. All SAM units travel fully assembled in a 12 by 12 corrugated steel box. SAM units live to clean and clean to live. Uh-huh. You blind fella? Or can you not see I'm busy? Why is it every sissy pig fucker who strolls into my town expects me to smile and shout awful friendly? Welcome to Fallbrook. Only nugget of paradise in this entire law-forsaken land. Like a void damn advert. Catherine, you're as welcoming as ever. Truthfully spoken, I do aim to properly represent my aforementioned nugget of paradise. You know, I ain't heard that one before. Suppose I'll have to work harder to show you just what makes our town shine. But first, I'll need to know what brings you, stranger. Well, I'm half listening. Good of you to finally haul your ass over here. I wired for backup weeks ago. Got something that's gonna require special extraction from Cascadia. Found it on a corpse, huh? If you killed Lilia's agent, you get to explain it to her. Not me. Well, shit. I knew he'd come to a bad end one day. Still, no time for weeping and wailing. We've got a metric fuck ton of bits worth of salvage just waiting for extraction. All right, all right. One of my runners uncovered a cache of Alta Vitae gas, left in a lab when the board abandoned Cascadia. To extract the gas, you'll need to siphon it from the lab in Cascadia into one of your ship's fuel tanks. Totally safe. I do like your gumption, but let's not be hasty. To get to the gas, you'll need to navigate through the town, which is overrun by marauders. The lab itself has become an infested nest, crawling with mantis. You gotta fight through, or figure out some other way to exterminate them. Maybe the ventilation system? And will again. We ought to be taking it direct and aggressive. I always did like your sensibilities. You know when to strike, and when to wait. Shame what came of your crew. Crews are for ships. They were a family. Close enough. Now, after you clear the manti nest and reach the storage room, 
All that's left is to get the gas flowing into the fuel system. The task will require someone with technical skills. Or you could force it through with a plasma overload. Don't recommend that option, though, unless you want to get dead. Dandy! Did I mention the gas is of an extremely volatile nature? Handle it with the utmost of care. Once you've got our goods, take them to the groundbreaker. Lilia's fencers ought to handle the rest of it. I've marked the coordinates for you to the lab in Cascadia. On the terminal, use the passcode you got from Stellar Bay to get in. But before you make your run, I could use a heavy helping hand regarding a local issue. For a fine fee, of course. Good. This particular matter of opportunity has been eating at me for a while now. There's a Borst factory on up the way, run by a man who calls himself the King. Clive Lundberg, insufferable prick. That aside, it's a business ripe for the plucking. I want it. Clear as that. Stars, I hope so. Clive Lundberg, the self-proclaimed Borst King of Monarch is swimming in profit and drowning in his ego. He's making the only meal to be had this side of Monarch, and I'm tired of ponying up for my dinner. I want that forest factory, owner dead or alive. And you're the soon-to-be handsomely paid son of a bitch who's gonna get it for me. Guess you've got it figured out then. Good. Hit him where it hurts. In his gut or his production lines ought to make do. Then I'd say you might care to poison the sisty pigs, doctor a few financial records, or throw a wrench in the canning machinery. It'll be more than good when you're finished. Maybe not for Clive, but for me and you, I'm sure. Oh, and if you don't fancy going in guns blazing or crawling through a sewer pipe, see Duncan in the dry goods and sundry building. He ought to have an employee ID in that stash of illicit goods he keeps for select clientele. May luck be with you, since I won't be. Take a gander at that mug. I ain't ever seen someone so adept looking my whole life. Watch yourself, Captain. This guy's got eyes like a sprat set on stealing your dinner. I get the sense this fellow isn't entirely sincere. Oh, now, come on. All I mean is, well, rather that, uh, you don't seem like the usual pigeons we pluck. No offense, of course, if you are a Byzantium goldblood. Say, I'd like to do you a favor. Might I interest you in a surefire scheme? Wink, wink. Oh, I enjoy a good challenge. I'll get right to it, then. Pure and simple, it's like this. I run our drug delivery service. Recently, I had the genius idea to cut costs in half by swapping our autoloaders with faster, cheaper sprats. See? I know a fellow genius when I clap eyes on him. Too right you are. Only problem is my sprat carriers ain't arrived from their latest run. As I was saying, you look more capable than most of the hoople heads around these parts. What say you locate him and retrieve the goods for me? In return, I'll cut you 5% of the profit. I'm going to assume it was not. If it's sarcasm, you've got to show it somehow, like with a wink. My Sprat carriers scurry back and forth through the shipping tunnels. Any trail ought to start there. When you've got the goods, I'll be here. Destined to die. Don't mess with us.
stalking and we're stalking. Did you find them? Tell me you found my dr I mean, my Sprat carriers. Would hate should anything dire have befallen them. <laughs> Just tell me straight. Sprat can always be replaced. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, this is per- This is only half! Are you- You think you can steal from me? Damn it, that hurt like the blazes. Okay, okay, all right. You didn't take it, but someone did. Search Fallbrook. Either half the Sprats got loose on their own, or there'll be some evidence pointing to the soon-to-be-dead snake who filched my carriers. You want your cut? You get me the rest of my drugs, no matter what it takes. Damn it all. Now look what you've done. It'll take me ages to round him up again. State your purpose, or get out of my face, domicile intruder. Missing? Nope. Nope. Mine are all found and accounted for, thank you kindly. Now if that'll be all, I've got an animal rescue service to oversee, and it ain't easy. Lots to do. Got a multitude of sprats to spay and feed. Day in, day out, they ran their little route, getting picked off along the way. What was I to do, turn a blind eye? Malin's an animal lover. She won't hold my actions against me. Look, I don't care if Nelson sent you or not. You won't be hurting a hair on any of these sprats' heads. I've killed vicious beasts for them. I ain't afraid to take on a human. Back out of this domicile, hands up, or become sprat food, intruder. You want to dig through sprat droppings? Be my guest. Get your drugs, then get lost. Got the goods? Cause I know you wouldn't be wasting my time otherwise. Wink. Ow! What the... What was that for? You're nuttier than Miss Malin. Cripes. Remind me never to cross you. Though, you put that mean right hook to good use getting my drugs, and I'll be more than happy. You do? I mean, you do! Of course you do! What did I tell you? Sure, fire, delivery, system. Works almost every time. Sure, they're wrapped it on fodder and suffer the occasional overdose when a container dissolves in their stomach acid. Wait, what do you mean rescued them? The deranged piece of sprat shit! If Bertrand ain't already dead, he's about to be. I owe you for bringing this breach in security to my attention. As promised, you're cut, plus a little extra to show my gratitude. Now, if there's nothing else you need from me, I must go inventory my goods. How's Clive? I do hope you gave him my regards. Sure. Funny, you don't look like Nelson Mason. 
Funnier still, I wasn't aware of an existing problem. That thunderhead. Can't hardly fathom how that panned out. Let me guess, it involved blood and guts and fur in places that don't merit mention. Well, you got my begrudging gratitude for cleaning the mess. What's going on? Like I don't know what that means. Not only no, but void no. I quit. And he can keep my final paycheck. Whoa now. And just what do you figure you're doing up here? These are my private quarters, friend. I don't allow tours up here. I don't allow tours ever on deeper consideration. Certain things require a mess to do well. See, I was just killing sometime. I, I do own a factory known for specializing in the canning of borstwurst. On occasion, I like to imbibe other parts of the sisty pig. Did you fancy me a cannibal? Perish the thought. No, I don't eat the bodies, I disappear. A joke, that last was. So, what can I do for you? My full attention is at your disposal. Uh, I'm not saying you shouldn't vex this guy, but if you do, it's been nice knowing you. While I approve of your associate's cautious nature, I still teeter on the verge of losing my patience. Let us move forward with the present proceedings. By sublight, you mean Catherine, do you not? That greedy, star-crossed sow. Listen, friend. The Borst King of Monarch does not... You desire that I should lower myself to Catherine's level of crass? The King build this golden monopoly. You think to blackmail me? Try it. The king will cry for true. You think, however, I remain unconvinced she could provide the means to make the association worth my while. If you ain't noticed, I'm doing swell, ruling this kingdom on my own. Ah, but Catherine would admire a man of my inclinations and skill. That the king is interested. John Hancock me on the dotted line, friend. Do not push me. Tell Catherine she is permitted to dump the bodies each and every Tuesday, precisely at 3 a.m. I don't think I like Miss Catherine. Not just on account of the swearing, though she swears awful much. How's Clive? I do hope you gave him my regards. Oh, this ought to be good. What does he mean to offer in exchange for his no-account life? True enough, I got bodies piling up, drawing attention where they ought not to be. But if I take the factory, I don't need Clive to dispense of my messes. Can appoint someone to handle it myself. 
Point taken. Good help is hard to come by. Plus, Clive doesn't seem the type to upchuck his boards during dismemberment. Still, you're asking me to walk away from easy money. So we're a lot of things in life, and your point is? All right, color me convinced. Reckon I owe you a finder's fee. Don't spend it all in one place, unless it's here. Might be I know something on the Northern Bridge. Might be they sure as shit weren't pirates. But I'm guessing Arthur already told you that. Moron squeals like a sisty pig. Marauders ruined our last drop. Killed my whole delivery team. You make them pay, and I'll more than compensate you for the cost of bullets. Could I get another advance, Mr. Nandi? Just make sure it's properly logged. I'll note it next to the others, sir. Well, new business turns up at last. Celia, didn't I tell you our new statistics-based advertising model would be a hit? That you did, sir. How can yield improvements of 26.7% not quicken the pulse? How can 32% cost savings not moisten the loins? You've often posed these very questions. Clear my schedule. This newcomer has a meeting with me. Celia, will you make a note of that for my self-review? Very generous. Noted. But not so generous I can't drive a good bargain. Now, who sent you? Rizzo's, perhaps? Or Auntie Cleo herself? Hiram? Why, he's... Probably still out at Devil's Peak. Not that he's had the courtesy to notify me, at any rate. But if you're here for him, I suppose that means you aren't here for Saltuna. Now, now, there's no need to humor me. I'm used to this particular letdown. I had hoped that livening up our advertisements with enticing figures would draw the other corporations back to our bosom, but... It seems we're back to the drawing board. Thanks to the so-called Hazard Clause, Monarch has been cut off from the board's resources and protection for ten years now. now we've kept ourselves in business by trading with individual corporations, but given the off-the-books nature of those transactions, such arrangements are precarious. Yes, freedom is a tempting ideal, but a rather costly paramour. Exactly. Intellectualism fuels the train to mankind's future, but the tracks the train runs on are forged from practicality. Yes, it's as though the good vicar has plucked the very words from my brain. Indeed. Mr. Nandi here has a rather ingenious plan to get MSI restored to the board. On our terms, mind you. Returning to the board is your only chance if you hope to survive here on Monarch. That doesn't mean it'll be easily achievable. Indeed not. No worthwhile plan was ever simple. That's what I always say. And if our advertising scheme hasn't borne fruit, then perhaps it's time we took matters into our own hands. It's true, our Celia is an alarmingly competent middle manager. At any other company, she'd be wasted in data entry. The plan she refers to is a two-pronged approach, and the first part involves seeing Stellar Bay properly defended. With a Bolt 52 cartridge, of course. If you can get us what we need to rejoin the board, starting the Bolt 52, we'll be able to become one of the most productive and secure cities in Halcyon. And you'll have a powerful ally on the board. Why, one of the strongest defenses in Halcyon. 
an extremely powerful ordinance. An ordinance, of course. We do things in a civilized fashion here, not like Graham's iconoclasts. Of course he wants to fight bureaucracy with paperwork. I should have known. If I didn't know any better, I'd say you just crawled out from under a rock. Forms and procedures are everything in Halcyon. And this one is located in the old arms building southwest of town, which used to be part of Stellar Bay before we had to move our walls in. And these days, it's overrun with marauders and raptodons. Saying what which way? That's just what it's called. It's supposed to stand for something, but I forget what. Oh, and while you're at it, there should be a terminal in the arms building with some... Dangerous information. Perhaps you could delete it so it doesn't fall into the wrong hands. What can I do for you? Help! Someone's been killed! I think I'm gonna be sick. No! You're the new face. Why? So who do you follow? Wait, don't tell me. You look like a Hammersmith Thunder fan. No, Glacial Age Mammoths. Mo Poor Isaac. I was... I'd really like to help. Isaac was a sweet fellow, even if he did have terrible teeth. Right, so the thing with Isaac is he didn't know where to stop. He'd get stuck on something, and he just couldn't let it go. Sometimes he'd drink Purpleberry Punch by the leader. Other times he'd keep betting on a losing team. Started owing the wrong people. I don't know for sure, but I saw Elijah and his buddies pushing Isaac around. They're hooligans from Fallbrook. They sweep into... They... Getting into my room again. If I hadn't caught you last time, you would have burned all of my books. Who the fuck are you? This ain't your alley. Huh? Hey! What are you doing here? This is our secret alley. Berta already pissed by those crates to market. Listen, that purple tooth twerp had it coming. Not that anyone has proof. And not that it's any of your business. Oh yeah? What are you saying, exactly? Wow! Most of the pencil pushers around here cave as soon as you look at them funny. Fine, we're going. This ain't worth it. A fine day for... Anyway, what can I do for you? But that's terrible! What happened? I'm glad to hear you've dealt with them. They've been causing quite a bit of trouble around town. I've been consumed with other matters of late, but I would have dealt with them. Eventually. It really was on my to-do list. Still, your intervention in the matter is much appreciated. Please consider this payment for your services. And the little bastard slippery, right? On account of its blood, so it's, it's sliding. All over the place, trying to crawl away. Getting so I can't tell the... tell the blood from the mud. But I gotta get in there. Get right in that baby rap stomach and dig it out. If so much as a drop of stomach acid got on that medallion, I... Shit, I don't know what I'd do. Might be I'd hunt every damn wrapped out there. Right. What are you staring... Wait. You ain't from around here. Who are you? 
Ooh, charmer. Don't get a lot of that around here. Folks mostly grump at me about how I should join the MSI payroll. Nice change of pace. Buy me a drink, will you? Another in a long line of damn fools trying to cut me off. I'll buy my own poison then. What are you doing in Stellar Bay, stranger? Well, 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 well. Let's get down to Brass Nuts then, shall we? Brass... Wait, that ain't it. Brass rats? Let's... Let's talk business. I'm headed back out there after I sober up. You want a guide sooner than that? You'll have to get me something to clear my head. Outstanding! Our dispensary here maintains a stock of, uh, well, I don't rightly know what they are. Steroid or caffeine somethings? Pills. They're very good. I'm cut off for the month on account of needing one just about every damn day. But I'm sure you've got your wily ways. Fetch me one and we'll be all set. Well, they work. We got a deal or what? You won't find a better deal in Halcyon than our special one-time offer for a refurbished sanitation unit. Remember, if it's dirty, it's a job for sand. What in the... That thing talks? If Vilma's capable of running the warehouse, she can certainly pick up her own caffeinoid. Don't be so hard on her. With Brax missing, she's working doubles and needs a little edge. Very well, dearie. But you stop by any time you like, hmm? Thanks, I'll, uh, I'll keep that in mind. Hello, dearie. Why, I don't believe I've seen you before. And with sweet cheeks like those, I'd remember. What can Auntie Abigail do for you? And what a helpful young man you are. Nothing like a little pill to liven up the spirits. Who's your lucky friend, dearie? I'm so sorry, but with the iconoclasts and the marauder filth chasing away what little trade we get, I'm afraid I have to reserve my supply for Stellar Bay residents. Our reserves have gotten so low, I've even had to start locking the supply room upstairs. Isn't it a shame what some people will do to get a little extra? Except for you. I can tell. You've got one of those faces. I'd make an exception for you if I could, my little cherub. Is there... Anyone else needing a special pickup from Auntie Abigail? Oh, her. It's none of my business, but I have told her Dr. Williams would bump up her monthly allotment if only she'd join MSI. Contribute like the rest of us. Now I've gone and said too much. <laughs> and you know me, dearie. I don't like to pry. I'm afraid not. Dr. Williams managed the town's allotments from his terminal upstairs. Even I can't access them. Oh, you flatter an old woman. Me, I'm just here to be a pretty face for the customers. And to keep an extra key to the supply room for all the times Dr. Williams misplaced his. The one upstairs, where we store our medicines. Chin up, dearie. Ah, the charmer. Welcome back. Drink, chat, or business? All of the above? More or less dangerous than a steady supply of alcohol. Give it here. Whew, that hits the spot. 
spot right in the, uh, oh, no, there it is. There it is. Yes. We're in business. Let's go. Great. Where to? Oh, Hiram? I ain't checked in on that man in an age. He's running the giant radio tower we lovingly call Devil's Peak. We'll be going south and west, mostly along the road till we're past Fallbrook. Out there, there's a western slope that'll lead us through some, uh, some fun. You like hunting, right? That's fun. If you're more of a spelunker, Rotting River will take you into the mountain caverns. We can discuss options when we get closer. That said, uh, three's already a crowd. I don't mind waiting somewhere until you got a spot open. New customer profile created. Greetings, user Nioka. showed up, then wrapped it on. It was a void-blasted mess. I ran in here and, um, now the door's locked. Little help? It's easier than it sounds, all right? Next time you get chased by raptodons, you let me know the rationality of your decisions. Phew. Thanks, mister. My buddy had a key, but I ain't heard him in a while. He locked me in here and took off. Probably got munched. So look for a dead guy, I guess. Or a rat? Maybe it's in a rat belly. Gross. What do you mean? It's locked. But it's... Okay, I mean, I'll try. But I'm pretty sure you can't open a locked... Oh, my eternal soul! It worked! Ah, phew. Thank you so much. It was getting all stuffy in there, and I was getting a mite lightheaded, and I think maybe I was gonna die. Now I'm out here, and I'm headed back to Amber Heights. Still landing yourself in trouble, eh, Hux? Oh, hi, Mioka. Um, you mind getting me an escort back home? I'm... Oh, you're traveling with someone. Never mind. Oh, sure, I'm a runner. I'm used to getting all dizzy, and hey, who's your identical, slightly blurry friend? Thanks a lot, mister. Well, I see you've had a sobering effect on our friend Nioka. Sir, please stop. Forgive me, Celia. I couldn't help myself. Anyway, what can I do for you? You weren't supposed to look. I asked you to delete it. Yes, but then you would have known. This has been my albatross. The great shame of my career. I give MSI everything. My work, my youth my left kidney, and for years, I was a joke to them. Ugh, one of the executives required a transplant. I thought volunteering to donate might improve my prospects. Apparently not. In charge of a scrap heap of a city. Abandoned by the board and surviving only through the hypocrisy of our trading partners. I hadn't thought of it that way. But perhaps there's something to that. Thank you for that. Oh, yes. I'm going to be up all night with this. All those blanks waiting to be filled, boxes waiting to be ticked. Try to control yourself, sir. Have you any idea how powerful this is? Corporations have been toppled with less. But that's exactly what this is. 
The world isn't changed with guns and speeches, much as Graham and his followers would like to think, but rather with meticulous documentation. And the bill of liquidation slash transfer form 52 is one of the most formidable pieces of data entry in all of Halcyon. One false stroke can invalidate the entire document. It's true. One of the old execs gave herself a stroke trying to fill out the exemption section. For our part, a bill of liquidation slash transfer form 52 will protect our holdings on Monarch by temporarily assigning them to a pass-through entity once we drop our bomb on the board. Sort of. Really, we're just going to blackmail them into offering us a seat at the table. But really, whatever gets you excited about the idea. It's definitely a firm middle finger. I have reason to believe that one of the other corporations is operating on Monarch. Illegally and in secret. Is it really illegal if the board's the one that makes the rules in the first place? If we can find proof, I can use that as leverage to... Encourage certain powers that be to accept our Bolt 52 and reinstate us on the board. Do you really think so? I admit I've been hatching this scheme for quite some time. I just needed someone capable to help me carry it out. If someone is operating here, then Catherine's almost certainly supplying them out of Fallbrook. Perhaps she could be convinced to tell you where they are. Oh, I imagine you do. But as much as I love your can-do attitude and dangerous gravitas, Catherine handles all of our shipments. So it would be best if you could leave her in one piece. Is that how you people put it? Once you, uh, subtly... Maybe some nice letterhead. Or someone working there. That would do it. <laughs> I knew you were the right person for the job. I suppose I'll leave you to it. I see. And was his delivery of the MSI authorized greeting up to snuff? Well, that's excellent. I'll see that your feedback makes it into his review. What else can I do for you? I'm sorry, who? Ah, them. They're hardly a corporation. More like a jumped-up band of thugs with certain pretensions. The evidence I'm hoping for would implicate one of the board powers. Anti-Cleo, Spacer's Choice, UDL, someone of that caliber. Not that we don't appreciate your diligence. In it, you'll find everything you need to know about Graham, his philosophist truths, and the iconoclast way. He wrote it himself. Oh, oh no, I'm so sorry, I keep forgetting, we're out of pamphlets. Gosh, blast it! I'm No corporations, no shackles, no problems. Oh. That's a nice way to... She's liable to take Graham's places in the large... The... A Manta Queen. Yeah. We felled it, mind. But... We lost two runners and five gun hands. A total failure, then. So much for the ruins. And hell only knows where the Van Oys are. They never showed. I'm sure they're... Ah, let's talk later. It seems we have company. If you're looking for a path to walk, you've found one. If you're looking for a teacher, I am one. Welcome to the Iconoclasts. Ah, yes. The first step to accepting the truths of philosophism is to open your heart to its wisdom. I've found the written word to be quite effective in helping people do that.
But alas, the eternal truth hasn't been generous with the paper and ink. Now, why have you come? A great many things, in fact. We could always use a hand rounding up supplies. Or... Now, here's an idea. There's an old printing press I've been trying to get up and running. Yes. We will make do, as we always have. Spreading the word of our movement is of paramount importance. Will you aid us in our cause? Wonderful. I requisitioned replacement rollers for it some time ago. Huxley should have delivered them yesterday. Speaking of which, where is Huxley? You bought rollers? You haven't even cleared the wraps out yet. What are you doing wasting bits on... <sighs> Forget it. Huxley's still recovering. She won't be up for a run for a while yet. It seems we're out a runner. If you intend to help our cause, I'll ask you to meet our MSI supplier in her stead. So you're her mysterious savior. She sings your praises. That girl and her songs, so eager to learn, so bright-eyed, so... tone-deaf. One of our sympathizers, a woman named Carlotta, periodically buys goods on our behalf from Stellar Bay's store. Stellar Bay has caught on, but they remain friendly, though the goods now come at a considerable markup. She meets us in the ruins of Bayside Terrace. From our compound, follow the road north. Wonderful. While you're at it, I wonder if Carlotta still has those high-capacity cartridges? Grab a few, will you? There should be some funds left over from the last shipment. We can use them to copy and modify radio serials. Yes, not just magazines, but their precious dramas. Unbelievable. I hope I don't have to tell you this, but if there is extra money, would you mind buying, I don't know, food and medicine? Graham. If you need me, I'll be in triage. Sorry about earlier. Graham and I don't always see eye to eye. Besides, we just got our asses kicked in the ruins. Not a great time to yammer on about his printing press. Yeah, name's Zora. I've been patching up the iconoclast since day one. Whenever Graham's lack of foresight gets someone hurt, I get them back on their feet. If I can. You joking? It's Monarch. Can't set foot outside without being attacked by a beast or a marauder. Hey, you got some decency in you. Careful. That's rare around these parts, and folks are liable to try and take advantage of it. The Manta Queen showed up out of nowhere, and I guess the gunfire attracted Raptodons. It was a damn bloodbath. You found a queen that far north? Wish I'd been there. You and me both, Nyoka. We could've used the help. Listen, unless this is urgent, I need to oversee the wounded. You wanna do us a favor or two? Go talk to Bronson. He's always looking to pass his work off on someone else. For now, I gotta get to the wounded. Welcome to Amber Heights. Hey, I know you. Boss says you've been real helpful, like. But, uh, we got this handled. We appreciate, but do not require your assistance. That's my nice way of telling you to sod off. Huh. I don't know what your angle is, but... All right. Be sure to tell her how hard it was to fix the generator. You know, after you're done fixing it.
I don't know how you got those goons to leave, but thank you. Graham ordered rollers and wetsits, right? For a printing press? Here, take them. Like I said, this is my last run. Law help them. I don't know. Maybe Sublight can lend a hand in his account. I can send one last dropout before I wash my hands of this. What do you want delivered? I always took that woman for the sensible type. Good on her. I'll send some along. Give them all my regards. And good luck out there. Don't go getting eaten. Nioka, you're a sight right now, I'll tell you what. We are up a creek. I bet. You really come this far north for a printing press? Yeah, I know, I know, but that's the mission. Don't suppose y'all are busy right now. Thank the Eternal. We could use a hand. But... We can't leave without patching these guys up. Acker here is bleeding out and Jensen can't see straight. Our medic has got our trauma kit, but we got separated. We ain't seen him in a couple of hours. Yeah, on account of giving him the order. He's searching the old settlement to the north of the press. Any luck out there? Oh, fuck. Well, that's better than nothing. Thanks. We'll head out as soon as we're patched up. If you'll just listen... No! No more listening. No more preaching. We are losing people left and right. We need to act. Enough, Zora. I'm not putting the torch to innocent people. Do you want to bring the board's cruisers and gunships down on us? Captain, apologies, but our situation grows dire. Our people talk of foolish endeavors. What news do you bring? They are armed all the same. All they need is a good reason, and war is one such reason. Excellent. Did you find the Vanois? Thank the Eternal. We're one step closer to bringing the truth to every man, woman, and child in Halcyon. This plan's brilliance is in its subtlety. For the time being, let us cease our activities on the Tower, lest we bring premature attention upon us. I have much to do. Articles to write, sermons to ponder. We live in such an exciting time. Let's talk later. Hey. I need to see to the wounded, but drop by the clinic when you can. I want a word. Welcome back. You find anything out there? Let's see. These are old. Looks like correspondences between the pirates. Some bits here, some there, some... Wait. This... This one's got the Amber Heights gate code on it, just like the one I found earlier. And here's... a letter. Wait, this is from Graham. Oh, of all the... Captain, he gave them the gate codes. Yeah. He did. He really did. I know he's got his head in the clouds, but... I always believed there was a core of good there. 
What the hell happened to live and let live? Thank you for bringing this back, but I need some time. I gotta think. I'll let you know if I figure something out. That assist was a violation of corporate law if I ever saw one. Since it was to my benefit, and we're largely in lawless lands, I'll look the other way. C3 owes you one, stranger. Awfully sensible for a businessman, aren't you? It's what I'm known for. Or what I'm usually known for, the occasional mishap notwithstanding. You haven't seen Constance, have you? Ah, there's her torso. And better be her legs over yonder, never mind. I'm Bertold. What in the void are you thinking, creeping around a mana queen like that? At the time, I was thinking, please don't see me, oh law, I don't want to die, nah nah nah. Now I'm thinking it was stupid to come in here. Killing marauders and hooligans, as I am handsomely paid to do. Of course, as me and Constance discovered, they ain't the only forms of life inhabiting these caverns. I owe you a debt for saving my neck, stranger, and I mean to pay it. There's a station up the way. It's where my C3s are posted. We can talk more there where it's safe. I'll be on my way. Once I've gathered up Constance's parts. Hey, Mana Queen Slayer. Glad you made it in one piece. After all, not everyone's so lucky. Meet my corporate compliance crew. Then check out our weapons locker inside. I reckon you'll find something you like. Then we call it even between us. We were hired to do so, why else? You did get the memo that we're mercenaries. Our client's a bit unorthodox, sure. He calls himself the broker, and prefers the glow of a terminal to flesh and blood interaction. But I can't fault his work ethic. Our current gig's to stop, by means of lethal force, any creatures exiting the caverns, including but not limited to marauders, iconoclasts, and agents operating for the MSI. You drive a hard bargain, Manic Queen Slayer. It don't make much financial sense for C3 to expend resources on any killing beyond the contract stipulations. As the Marauders didn't enter from the caves, the requirements are... Mm, murky. At the same time, we do want to keep our client alive. Until the payment's cleared. We recommended the client safeguard himself, so I don't expect that the main doors will be accessible. Find a way to open them, and we'll clear any hostels on the inside. I'd best radio ahead for Joy and Hudson to prep for us. They'll be at the station entrance, ready with our finest auto mechanicals to assist you. C3s, prepare to move out. I hate the rock into a set of horns like that. To be honest. Fox radioed ahead. Said I'm to follow you. Provide whatever support you need. If those bastards start shooting, we'll join in. I gotta warn you, my girl Sunshine here is a tad trigger-happy. Of course, me and her will follow your lead. Just wanted you to know we wouldn't begrudge you of any violent inclinations. Ain't it the same, really? I'd say me and my piece mean each other halfway on the issue. She likes to be used, and I like to put her to good use. As so very often as I can. We can tell friend from foe, mind you. But it's probably best not to walk directly in front of us. You're A-OK, -okay, stranger. Hear that, Hudson? It's payday.
death level. Security threat eliminated. Clearing cute security actions. Waste of company ah. ammo. Ah. Ah. You could use the socialization, you son of a bitch. Also, he hired me. To what purpose? I happen to have some significant problems I am dealing with right now. Marauders, running out of purple berry wine three days ago, not being able to bloody broadcast. No, no, no. We'll deal with information-related business later. As I said, there are bigger problems threatening my life and livelihood at this very moment. The Marauders want me dead. And since my hired hands have clearly turned idle, it appears I need you to clear out the threat. As my newest contractor, you may call me... The Broker. Or we can call you Hiram, on account of that's your damn name, and doubly on the account of The Broker being a dumbass alternative. What? Everyone calls me that. Aside from you. Take action. It's about time, I tell you. I'm up to my neck and marauders in here, which, by the by, they were supposed to prevent. I barricaded the broadcast center, but I can only hold out for so long. Clear the marauders out, and I'll pay you double the going rate. They destroy the transmission equipment, and I'll be out of business. The elevator and doors to the second floor are back online. Hurry before I have to lock them down again. Never thought I'd be ecstatic at having the walls painted in blood, but seeing as it's not mine, I'd say this calls for a celebration. My compliments on your improvised utilization of the fire suppressant system. I would expect nothing less from one of Neoka's associates. As usual, I'll take that as a compliment. Of course. And you got me my money's worth out of the C3s. I ought to have simply dealt with you in the first place. Oh no, my business is in trade, not owing others the burden of a favor. This ought to square our debt, one hefty payment for a highly valued service rendered. But, I admit, I do wonder why Nioka has brought you to me. Allow me to pose my question in another manner. Why, in the nebula, are you here? Oh, great. I love doing pro bono work for friends. Aw, you called us friends. I'd normally entertain your self-aggrandizing delusions, but this time it's important. Important to you is not the same as important to me. Although I do recognize that you may have earned some goodwill during your months laboring for me. Tug on my heartstrings, why don't you? Look, I'll do what I can, all right? Rebecca Hodges and Anders Wattsworth. They took a UDL contract back when Monarch went to shit, and I need to find them. I believe them to be on Terra, too. If UDL hired two hunters back then, it would have been for creature-clearing purposes round one of their Spacer's Choice outposts. These are the coordinates for the outpost under the last UDL contract. Now scram. And, uh, good luck. I knew it was only a matter of time before he came a-knocking. Look. I might be late, but I fulfill my contracts, always. Oh, you do, do you? I have lost track of the number of beers you owe me for chasing raptodons off your stoop. Are you fibbing? Be honest. I take offense to that. 
Look, okay. I was delayed by MSI and the Iconoclasts. The idiots were scrambling all transmissions to override each other's broadcasts. But as you've shut them down, I'm back in business. I don't doubt that you are working with Phineas, but my contract specifies I relay any acquired information to the purchaser, and to the purchaser alone. However, to send the data, I will need your assistance in cycling the antenna's receiver so I can input the needed adjustments. You make it sound so scandalous. Phineas has been in hiding for the past 35 years. He got in touch with Nioka first, who I use as a physical go-between. The rest is history. Now you hold on. I do not physically go between anyone but that of my choose... Oh. Oh, apologies. You meant... Right. Yes, I brave the wilderness so you don't have to. Precisely. I really ought to give you a raise. It's simple, truly. I merely need you to waltz outside and throw the lever to cycle the power. I'll key in the numerical adjustments from in here. Eternal no. What is wrong with you? Who would ever design something like that? However, you're welcome to brew me a Rizzo Insta coffee from the staff kitchen on your way back. Just step outside, flip the switch, depart forever. Understood? Good. Marvelous. We're in agreement. This is why I stopped helping out around here, you know. It's always throw this lever, shoot that marauder, save my life. Just one thing after another with you. If that's really all, let's just get it done with and be on our way. Terrific. I'll be here. Waiting with bated breath. Give a shout if the panel electrocutes you. Testing one, two, check, check. Sweet stars. But that is a beautiful sound. Can you hear me? We are a go for broadcast. Oh, and I also dispatched Phineas his data. Impatient prick. Worse, I'm now indebted to him for it. Now I'll kindly thank you to get out of my tower. Look, I am well aware that at times I may have the tiniest iota of a prickly exterior. But I must admit I have grown rather fond of you. As Nioka can attest, I do not form attachments with many. Do take care. Why, he told us to leave without flinging insults at our persons. He really does like you, Captain. What in the void blasted hell is that? sarcastic hull heads, so one of us has to knock it off. Right. I reckon we both know who that'll fall to. Oh well, a pity for the crew, but I can't see how it affects me. Hiram? Can you hear me? Did you see that? Architect saved me from swindlers and fools. Sanjar, what are you bloody doing on my channel? Did MSI, or did MSI not cease broadcasting? Are you there? Not without a physical contact waiver. Ah, the good captain. The truth brings us together once more. Our salvation has come crashing through the stratosphere. We need only collect its weapons. Are you mad? That's a UDL gunship. You'd probably shoot your own toes off. Ah, I see you learned nothing while dealing with these buffoons. We could use the gunship's armaments to defend Stellar Bay, but we need its targeting module. Our message is so close to breaking free of this planet and spreading to the stars. Help us secure that module and we will save our colony. Listen, I don't care a single whit what you do so long as you leave me out of it. Which means, get off my void damn channel! I'm more than finished with you lot. My name's Jen. I'm the 
chief engineer on this gunship, and I'd like to let the record show that our captain is a total fucking hullhead. I told him, again and again, that without fixing our regulators, spinning up the engines are going to blow through our coils and we'll go flying off in a completely random direction. Well, here we are. Thinking we'll hit soil in uh, about 30 seconds. This is your chief engineer signing off for what is probably the last time. It's a shame you can't see this middle finger I'm holding up. Because I'm doing it as hard as I can. Sir, I think. I'd ask him, but he fell in the machine once, so... If the Iconoclasts reach that ship first... There won't be any chance for a peaceful monarch. I don't suppose you've found the targeting module yet. I've sent patrols, but they're running into trouble with the Iconoclasts. They're all mad! And what's more, they left us! I don't see any way for us to work together. Ugh, not this again. Remember what we practiced, sir. Yes. The words in those reviews were very hurtful, but they do not define me. I am a mantipillar, and my will is my cocoon. I can emerge and become whatever I wish. You too? He has a point, sir. And it's not all bad. Supposing you're right, who exactly would you have me work with? The Iconoclasts are not the most compromising sorts. That's an interesting suggestion. I confess I don't know much about her, except that she worked for Rizzo. There ain't a body on this planet that can keep a group patched up like she has. I don't know how she does it. I'd be willing to consider it, but I need to see her review first. Very well. I can't promise anything, but let's see what we have here. Well, it seems like she, uh, she's actually very qualified. If it weren't for her, I'd wager the Iconoclast would have died off a while ago. I wasn't expecting to say this, but if you can put her in charge and convince her to agree to a meeting, I'd be willing to discuss terms. Captain, we should chat. Graham's got the right idea, but he isn't the right guy to execute it. I don't even think he's motivated by philosophism anymore. I think he's just guilt-ridden. I... I can't believe I'm even saying this, but I keep going over and over it in my head. And the only way I see the Iconoclast surviving is we depose him. Okay. Deep breaths. This is what's best, Sora. Time to save Monarch. Captain, you must be back with the access codes to our new ship. Graham, we need to talk. We have work to do. This isn't the time for one of our spats. Stand down. I'm afraid I don't understand, Captain. You're running the Iconoclast into the ground, and I don't believe it'll get better after we take Stellar Bay. The troops take orders from me already, and you've... You've brought me as far as you can down the Eternal Path. It's time to step down. The troops. Listen to you. This isn't an army. They aren't soldiers. They're believers. Followers. They pick up a gun because you tell them to, not because they want to. And you, Captain, after all you've done for me, for us, you throw behind this mutinous blasphemer? I can and shall. All I've done, I've done for my people. And look at where that path has led me. I built this movement from the ground up. I've brought freedom to Monarch, and all these years later, we're still free. I joined because I believed that you were in it for the Iconoclasts. That you wanted nothing more than to bring freedom to Halcyon. That you were selfless. But... I know the truth now, Grim. I know what happened in Amber Heights. 
You didn't start this movement because you wanted to save us. You wanted to save yourself. No. Guilty? I didn't mean for them to die. I'm not a monster. Of course I feel fucking guilty. I've spent years atoning for my sins. I've studied, meditated, taught. I built the Iconoclasts so that any man could cast away his past for a fresh start. That's your answer, Graham? You needed a fresh start? After all those innocent lives? I'm sorry. I believed in you once. I did. But it's over. Stand down. I won't. What happened back then was a mistake, and the colony has moved on. This is my movement. These are my people. If you want to lead them, you'll have to kill me. Please, don't make me do this, Graham. If this is where my path ends, I accept it. But as long as I draw breath, I will not abandon them. So be it. Well, Captain, here we are. Killed a lot of people in the name of the Iconoclasts, and it never feels right. But this time, it's especially wrong. You've got the... Void help me. I'll never remember what that thing is called. The device from the ship. Do you have it? I've thought about it, but... I think we're too far gone. Pulling Carlotta's support was crossing a line. Yeah, well, we'll die try- Fuck. I sound like Graham. Throwing lives at a problem. We've lost a hell of a lot to this fight. Graham would never agree to this, but... I'm starting to realize how often he led us astray. All right. If he's willing to talk, I'll give him a chance. Well, then. Gotta prepare a few just-in-case measures, but when you're ready, let's meet at the old OSI church outside Stellar Bay. Hey, thanks for coming. I wish I'd had more time to prepare a proper analysis on the costs and benefits of your proposed union, but uh, I suppose we'll have to improvise. Gotta admit, I really thought I was walking into a trap here. I'm ready. If it were, I wouldn't be standing here all vulnerable-like. Sanja, Stellar Bay's got food and walls. And my people need both. If you'll have us, we're willing to share the space. Do you have any idea what that would cost? Why, drawing up the budget alone is going to take weeks. Though I admit I'd rather not. We've shed enough blood as it is. Is the only choice here between fighting and starving? We've got to be practical. So forceful. Mm. You know I love your little displays. Perhaps I'm being hasty. <laughs> After all, I'm rather good with numbers. <laughs> I'm certain we can find a way to make this work. Well, I'll be damned. If you two can work together, maybe there's some hope for this place after all. Thank the Eternal. As poetic as murdering him in his sleep would have been, I'm glad we don't have to. I'm confused. The look on your face does not match the words you just said. Come on. You can't be this obtuse. Tell me Graham wasn't working alone. He couldn't have. His fr- His friend? Are you fucking kidding me, Captain? I've been standing with Graham for the better part of a decade while this paperclip cowboy sat behind his walls. This feels like one of those times when everyone at headquarters but me is laughing at something, but you two aren't laughing. Amber Heights, you hallhead. Ten years ago, Graham had all those people killed. What? That's not possible. Even for him, that's going too far. That means... I had no idea, I swear! 
Look, we were both fed up with corporate leadership, but I, I never guessed he'd do something like that. I think he's being truthful, Captain. I feel it in my gut. Kind of nauseous, but ticklish. You can't take bureaucrats at their word. You back someone into a corner like this, and they'll say anything to get out of it. I... Okay, okay. You're right. Sorry. It'll take me a while to get over losing Graham. You know, I felt the same way years ago, when he first left. You know, there was something magnetic about him that let you ignore the things you didn't want to see. But surely you know what that's like. Yeah, I... I do. Okay, if you're willing to house and supply some of us, I'll have our more capable soldiers help out. As am I. Oh, I can feel my blood pressure lowering already. Thanks for coming out, Sanja. I, uh, guess I'll see you at Stellar Bay. We done a good thing, Captain. A real good thing. Lots of folks are gonna be better off because of this. We're not gonna have to hurt nobody, are we? You know what? Fuck it. Enjoy yourself. I invest in the happiness of my workers, and you deserve a bigger cut. Monarch isn't exactly a walk down the lanes of Byzantium. But here you are with all your limbs attached. Call me impressed, contractor. No one you saw, anyway. Glad to see you're looking out for yourself. You've been keeping busy. I hear you took on some extra work at Fallbrook. Catherine doesn't always play nice with others. But it sounds like she and Clive reached some kind of understanding. Hey, when you were at the slaughterhouse, those swine didn't give you any... strange looks, did they? Like they were hanging on to your every word, scheming. And when you turned around, maybe they just point like innocent little idiots. All right, cut the pig shit. I'm probably getting worked up over nothing. Just try not to think about pigs. You never know, you know? I've got a lot on my mind, but it's nothing that concerns you. At least not yet. I have another job lined up, assuming you're still interested in work. They're gonna salvage me a space station. Heliospheric Research Station 1084, to be exact. I want it. Cobwebs and all. Interested? Looking to expand, huh? Fallbrook ain't big enough for you? Here, this override bypass should get you into the station systems where you can plant my flag. And one last thing. When you get there, make sure you aren't followed. We wouldn't want that. I'm on the heels of something big. Play your cards right and I'll clue you in, but right now, I'm not sure who I can trust. Just be careful. Someone might try and use you to get to me. Captain, I've been attempting to contact you with urgent news. However, communicational functionality was impaired due to the power outage. A UDL vessel has been tracking our position and just recently docked with the station. They are patching into the station's transmission lines now. I cannot stop. I've been waiting for this day since we tagged your ship in Cascadia, Captain. So glad we finally have this opportunity. My ship is docked with 1084. There's no escape.
You've been poking your nose into restricted locations. This makes my superiors unhappy. I could peel your ship open like a can of Boris. But I'm in a sporting mood. Inadequate sum. They must pay you smugglers better than I thought. Can I do that? Why, I wouldn't even know where to begin. Let's act as if we never saw each other. Try and keep it that way, Captain. The UDL gunship is undocking from the station. They appear to be departing into space. Job done. We can go home to the ship, right? I've been missing Ada fierce. Hold on a tick. Don't we know Chartrain from Cascadia? Finally, a base of our own. Soon we'll have eyes on every corner of the system. Well done, Captain. I'll have those dismantled. You can never be too careful when moving into someone else's territory. Aside from the automated security, did you meet any resistance at the station? <sighs> I knew it. They've been shadowing us since Monarch, maybe even longer. I've been less than honest with you. Your assignments weren't strictly about the salvage business. We might have figured that out already. You have an eye for patterns. Good. We need more contractors like you. After the Monarch job, I started connecting the dots. I didn't like the picture. Then what we found at Station 1084 confirmed my fears. You and I have stumbled onto something big, something none of us were meant to know. I'm thinking more along the lines of the sapient species paradox. Ask yourself why a skeleton crew was studying that Alta Vitae gas in secret. Ask yourself why stockpiles were hidden on a planet full of monsters. Wrong. I think it's about intelligent life discovering us. Aliens. I'm talking about aliens. They're the ones responsible for the deaths at 1084, and who knows what else. We have to put a stop to it. Hear me out. I'm saying it's aliens. I'm not asking you to like it. I'm not even asking you to believe it. But I need to act on this threat to the colony, and I can't do it alone. This doesn't feel at all right, Captain. Your crew is skeptical. That's good. I don't want you walking into the unknown with blindfolds on. I assume you have questions? Remember what I said about keeping an open mind? If we're gonna see this through, I'll need your trust and commitment. Now's the time for setting doubts aside. Conspiracy. One carried out with the help of human collaborators, assuming they haven't all been replaced. This is an invasion of our very cells. That damned gas is mixing our nucleon with halcyon biology to twist us, change us, make us more like those monsters on Monarch. No kidding. That's how they want it. When I lined up the evidence in my spreadsheet, there was only one possible conclusion looking back at me. This is my data talking, not my anxiety or lack of sleep. Sharing my findings took a calculated risk. If you were a spy, I doubt you'd even realize it. Only your cells would know. Tobias, get my knife, the big one. That was a joke. Ha ha, we each get one. Now back to business. Dr. Chartrand is the crooked psychopath behind the gas experiments. She sold out her species, and I need you to put a bullet through her skull. She's a research scientist and a damn good one. Before UDL poached her, she engineered a 0.2% increase in cysti pig juiciness. 
Now she's doing the same thing with humanity. Her fingerprints were all over Station 1084. You saw what she did to her team. You've got me all wrong. I just want to add savior of humanity to my resume. I've got ambitions outside of this office, you know. Besides, this way Sublight gets first dibs on alien salvage. Do you usually come across innocent people trapped in suspension tanks? Because some of us would call that excessive. Remember, the tanks were just the shit she left behind. Just imagine the experiments she carted off to her next lab. We're far beyond theories. Chartrand's logs, the gas, the suspension tanks, how much proof do you need? Wake up, Captain. An invasion needs collaborators working from the shadows. She has access to the board, unlimited funds, and a colony full of sheep. This key card will get you through the front door of her Byzantium estate. Don't ask how I got it. You might not like the answer. By now, the other side knows what you're doing. Don't trust anything Chartrand says. She's compromised down to the bone. Maybe even deeper than that. in this basement. If someone back home wanted to make a secret lab, they'd have to put it in a closet. That's far enough. What are you doing here? How did you even get inside? Hagen? I've never heard of her. Is she from the board? Damn it. I knew this would happen. That's a gentlemanly way of putting it, Captain. She's obsessed with aliens. This is utter nonsense. I've never even been to Groundbreaker. What happened to the team? Tell me you didn't move their suspension tanks. Small consolation. My team, the finest minds of their generation, reduced to salvage. We were trying to prove that the colony could survive the crisis bearing down on us. What are you doing, Doctor? This information is beyond classified. You can write me up in your report. It hardly matters. I'm researching a new way to feed the colony. The crops we transplanted from Earth don't give us the nutrients we need. Our colonists might not realize it yet, but they're starving. The food we grow here barely sustains human life. The colony won't last under these conditions. So, the board let me approach the problem from a different angle. I believed that I could adapt humans to live on Halcyon's terms. That I could change us. Give us the ability to derive sustenance from the nutrients the food does have. Not for lack of trying. I wanted to save them all, but I wasn't strong enough. I 
I wouldn't allow us to experiment on convicts or the unemployed. It's wrong, no matter what the law says. Everyone agreed. We accepted the risks. I'm desperate. I have already asked all the best institutes on Earth for help. Years ago, we sent a message out on the Cornelius Vanderbilt, but heard nothing back. It's been missing for over two years now. They never re-established contact after the skip to Earth. Of course, the board is keeping that under wraps. How'd you lose half a pair of ships like it were a sock? The board is uneasy about letting the colony know, seeing as half of their military force vanished without a trace. The board also has its brand to uphold. If you can't trust the brand, what else is there? Once we can replicate a success, the board will move to rewire our nucleon. With any luck, our next generation will be eating and thriving off halcyon crops. You really think the board got our best interests at heart? I mean, they say, but I'm just not sure. We haven't made enough strides to advance the plan. Hardly any at all. But we have to keep trying. You came to kill me. I assume that's still on the table. Please don't. If I die, there's no one who can reproduce our work. Every sacrifice will have been for nothing. And we'll be no closer to a solution that feeds the colony. The one on the wanted posters? They say he's an anarchist. A madman, a butcher. I'll do it. Doctor! What choice do I have, Commander? If working with Wells is the only way I can save the colony, then I will damn well do it. I need to get out of here. Phineas can contact me when he's ready to work together. For now, I had better pack up the lab and head somewhere discreet. Not so fast. Captain, what you just learned is beyond your clearance. Hell, it's beyond mine. Give me one reason why I should let you walk out of here alive. You sure have an inflated sense of self-importance. But that doesn't make you wrong. Now move along. The dock has a lot of work ahead of her. Tidying up and such. Is it done? Well, damn. Contractor grew a conscience. As your employer, I'm both angry and disappointed. I'll add that to your file. Technically, I owe you an exit interview. Care to justify your betrayal of our species, or are we finished here? You're awfully quick to trust someone who offed her colleagues and called it a good start. Out of my office. We're done. You think maybe she's got an itchy trigger finger? I don't want to find out. You. I'd clap you on the shoulder if I weren't behind a wall of bulletproof glass. I don't know how you did it. But Hiram Blythe just sent me everything I needed. According to Hiram's message, Minister Clark has ordered a suspicious amount of dimethyl sulfoxide. It's almost as if he's hoarding the colony's remaining supply. Typical elitist. Hoarding supplies during a time of scarcity. Once I have those chemicals, we can revive the Hope's colonists and put some decent people in charge. So, good news. You're going to Byzantium and stealing those chemicals. Exciting. Ah, yes, the details. I'm not about to ask you to rampage through Byzantium trading bullets with the board's agents. We'll have to resort to subterfuge. Carmen Imagawa. She's my contact in Byzantium. Meet her at the docks. She'll have all the necessary intelligence you require. I'm giving you my old nav key to Byzantium. You'll need it to land in the Golden City. Remember, you're looking for dimethyl sulfoxide. Big green bubbling vessel with a warning label. 
I'll take as much as you can find. You can trust her if that's what you're asking. Imagawa is the finest special agent in Byzantium that money can buy. My money, anyway. Do you mind? I'm needing someone. Shh. No names, okay? The Phoenix is a wanted man and the board has eyes everywhere in Byzantium. Yeah, that's my code name for... You know, our mutual friend. Oh, I'm Golden Eagle. Um, yeah, I named you Cuckoo. It makes sense if you think about it, because I didn't know who you were, and old earth cuckoos would routinely trick other birds into feeding them. Oh, 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 can I be chicken? Because chickens will adopt any critter's baby and keep them warm. You sure you don't want to be raven or sparrowhawk? Aw. Okay, okay. Chicken it is. Does this mean I'm supposed to have one too? Fine, but make it a really good one. Let's go with Rufus Hummingbird. Forget it. Codenames are for amateurs anyway. Too late. I've already marked it off. Can't just go reassigning code names. Anyway, you're looking to make contact with Minister... Uh, Magpie, right? I should warn you, it won't be easy. He spends most of his time in this estate, which is heavily guarded. Afraid not. He almost never leaves his home, and his guards never leave him. Can't say I blame him. It's scary out of doors. I mean, can you even count how many times we've been shot at? What work specialists, huh? Our mutual friend is really branching out. Whoa, I'm not one of your B&E specialists. I just provide intelligence. Some of the guards hang around Billingsley's house of inebriation between shifts. That place is still open? I used to study there during medical school. Maybe you could do some reconnaissance there. You know, swipe a key while nobody's looking. Just remember, you didn't hear it from me. Good luck, Cuckoo. Personal guard. <laughs> right here. The others took me out to celebrate on account of me just getting hired and all. He's basically the most important person in the colony, which makes me the most important guard in the colony. <laughs> yeah. That means I got a key to the minister's estate, my own personal UDL assist issued shotgun. <laughs> they don't give those out to just anyone. Yep, yeah, I've nearly made it to the top, my friend. I'm just two promotions away from on-the-job bathroom breaks. That's a great idea! I'll have a Spectrum Vodka. Captain, I can smell him from clear over here. I reckon he's had a fair number already. 
Sure have, because today's my big day. He's got powerful good ears, too. And a powerful thirst. You, uh, you have a Spectrum Vodka for a new pal? Oh, maybe they got some at the bar. Hey, you look familiar. Have we met before? Here's to me. <clears throat> hey, you're really great. Have I told you that? We should be friends. <laughs> wow, listen to me. I'm soaked. <laughs> I should probably slow down before I'm face down on the tile somewhere. <laughs> Who am I kidding? I could, I could have another. You got another? It's not every day you get your dream job, right? Wow. You've got, like, this crazy energy. Has anyone ever told you that? You're like a, like a manosaur. You got a manosaur energy. Oh, laws. I gotta stop. I'm seeing... Hey. I really shouldn't. I'll have the worst hangover tomorrow if I don't stop. Nonsense. You've got another in you. Doctor's orders. Guess I can't argue with that. Yeah. Was that one supposed to taste like purple berry crunch? Or am I just tasting breakfast? I don't feel so good. I think I'm gonna be sick. I just need to sit down. This bro this ultimatum brought to you by less funny. The minister isn't expecting visitors, and you don't much look like one of those couriers from HPS. Sure you are. And what is it you're delivering today? Typical. There's nothing to see here. Move along, yeah? Let's see it. Hmm. Looks like your papers are in order. All right, go on through. You! You're not one of my guards. What are you doing here? Oh, my law. Captain! Captain! That's the minister! Mr. Clark! Oh, wow! If this is about another Aetherwave clip or radio spot, you may kindly fuck off, as the parlance goes. I'm not doing any more. Drugs, of course. What else would it be? I don't have any drugs. You should try a vending machine or a purveyor of curative goods. He's got no idea what we're asking about. Will that be all, then? Oh, dear. I don't think I can say this any more slowly. Unless... Of course, of course. It's Rockwell again. Who else? And I thought he was only holding me here to keep me out of the way. You are a quick study, indeed. I've long suspected Rockwell of transacting business in my name. But this proves it. You've been all alone in this house? Would... would you like me to make you tea? Please! This is important! Whatever it is that brought you here, Rockwell's the one behind it. How should I know? I've been under house arrest for years. But there is a way to find out, and perhaps to set things right. Whatever Rockwell's doing, he'll be doing it from the HHC headquarters. Your best lead is to look for details in his office. This all feels off, Captain. Like when there's a storm coming, but everything's quiet and still. Believe me, things have been off around here for a very, very long time. A reckoning is most certainly due. If it's dirty, 
It's a job for Sam. It's filthy indeed, my mechanical friend. Rife with the worst sort of corruption. Why, this is starting to sound like an issue of Dissident Hunter. We're discussing industrial espionage, legal redress, the possible salvation of Halcyon. Is this not exhilarating? Also, this is the longest conversation I've had with someone else in quite some time. I dearly hope I'm not imagining this. Now, we've got to get into the HHC. That's in the Acropolis District, along with the other major corporate and government facilities. But only board employees are allowed into the district. There's a heavily guarded checkpoint just down the street. There might be a route through the maintenance tunnels, but I'm afraid I don't know specifics. Most people avoid the area for obvious reasons. When you reach the HHC building, this access card should get you up to the executive suites, where the chairman's office and what used to be my office are. The board's lackeys are none too bright. I simply claimed I'd lost it and hid it somewhere no one would think to look. I merely hid it in a book. No one reads anything longer than a few pages around here. There are a few advantages to dealing with imbeciles. Wait! Rockwell has one of the only terminals capable of transmitting to the Earthbound message drone. This is our chance. Please, take this and transmit it from his office. Rockwell hasn't given me any messages from Earth for years. He's desperate to keep me out of contact with the Earth Directorate. But they need to know what's happening here. What isn't on it is the real question. I've gathered meeting minutes, internal messages, sustainability reports, and more. All exposing the corruption and mismanagement plaguing Halcyon. Once the rest of the Earth Directorate sees it, they'll have to send help. But they wouldn't get here for... I don't even know. Shouldn't we do something our own selves? It's worth a try, but the Earth Directorate still needs that message. We must hope for their intervention. Perhaps there is hope after all. And now I entrust it to you. Good luck, and trust no one in the Acropolis District. The Acropolis District is off limits. Move along. What in the law's name are you on about? Sure. Let me just take that off your hands. Did I say restricted area? Slip of the tongue. What I meant was, welcome to the Acropolis District. your business. Please step away. This entry is for high priority HHC business only. Huh. I didn't realize we were still using those iridescent stickers. But this looks right. I'll just need you to register your weapons with a revised request to carry 32B form. Each weapon... Now, let's see. Damn it. When did I run out of forms? Well, how nice for you. Do you have any idea how long it takes to request new forms? Or how many citations I'll get for impeding HHC business in the meantime? Just know there are a bunch of guards upstairs and they're all high on dervish mist and low on patience. So try anything funny and they'll paint the walls with your guts. If you'll forgive my saying so, that outfit looks splendid on you. Personal assistant to Adjutant Akande and Chairman Rockwell. I'm also responsible for organizing the adjutant stationery, which is more of a hobby. Ah, 
Oh, you were being serious. I'm obliged to inform you that Chairman Rockwell is unavailable for an indeterminate duration. Will there be anything else? Excuse me, just a moment. Is there something I can do for you? I beg your pardon, Minister Clark's former office is currently closed to solicitors. I suppose that is admissible. Please try not to break anything. One person gets all this space just to, to sign papers all day? I'm Chairman Rockwell, and I'm here to address a serious issue facing us. As you all know, our colony has been successful beyond our wildest dreams. Unfortunately, we've recently discovered that our food supply will not be able to sustain Halcyon's population in the long term. Everyone will die. Everyone will slowly stop living from malnutrition. But we're doing it together. And that's what matters. I fucking swear, if someone doesn't give me something to read that will placate the masses soon, all of you will find yourselves violently unemployed. But I can assure you there's nothing to fear. We've got a solution. It's called the Lifetime Employment Program. We will freeze most of the colony to preserve resources, while the best and brightest of Byzantium continue living in prosperity. Look, you idiots! How many times do I have to tell you we can't say shit like that? Fire whoever wrote this! While Halcyon's brightest minds solve the problem of our nutritional shortage, the rest of the colony will be placed in suspended animation. Individuals will be revived on a rotating basis so that every Halcyonite can be part of the important work of saving our colony. By testing paperweights. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> couldn't resist. Let, let's go again. And someday, in the not-too-distant future when we've solved this crisis, we'll all be back together again working for the good of Halcyon. Until then, the board shall provide for the deserving just as it always has. So, obey your supervisors, take your vitamins, follow your corporate-mandated grooming rituals, and rest assured with the board on your side, there is nothing to worry about. Sorry, I'm kind of in the middle of something. Oh. Oh. You know, I always have time for sprout mitochondria, as well as charming men who can appreciate the finer points of cell biology. Are we still talking about cell division? This is certainly a conversation worth continuing elsewhere, but I don't think I've seen you around, and I'm sure I'd remembered you. In that case, I can get you into the lab. Consider it a favor you can repay later. Follow me. Hold, I need a favor. Think you could let my friend through just this once? After all, you still owe me. Fine. But I don't want to hear anything about the catch-up packet incident ever again. And he's on his own if he runs into the guards downstairs. You're the best, Holt.
You have a message from Adjutant Sophia Akande. No one ever looks quite the same in person as they do in my reports. And my reports of you have been exceptionally thorough. You've had quite a career. I've been keeping up with you ever since Emerald Vale. Now that was an interesting piece of work. A rundown backwater, barely worth the ink on a map. Until you showed up. You walked through Edgewater and in your wake transformed it from a loyal company town to a haven for dissidents. I'm actually a little impressed. All this happened because some mysterious stranger fell out of the sky. Not always. For the longest time, I could never be sure if you were on our side or against us. You should be back on the Hope, frozen in a hibernation chamber. Yet here you are, flying about in a stolen ship, leaving a trail of paperwork in your wake. The board doesn't know what to make of you. But I do. I've seen your potential. There's so much we can do for this colony. We raised security on the Hope after Wells broke in. As for discovering the identity of the missing colonist, all we had to do was scan the passenger manifest. You have something I want. I'd like to negotiate. Phineas Wells is wanted by the board. I want to convince you to turn him in to us. He has a litany of charges against him. Vandalism, illegal experimentation, sedition. I could go on. Wells is a dangerous madman. His plan is going to endanger everyone in Halcyon. He's an obsessive psychopath, and he's using you. You're in contact with Wells. I want you to send us a tracing signal from his communication terminal. Wells was our mistake. We failed to apprehend him for years. I'm asking you to help me correct that mistake. I'm sending you my access code. Contact me from Wells' terminal. When you're done, come speak to me in my office. Adjutant Akande's call has been terminated. Will there be anything else, Captain? If we wanted the board's attention, we got options. Piracy, vandalism, maybe some light arson. We want to put some fear in the board, right? Get him scared of us. I want to believe you, but the adjutant didn't seem too scared of us. You just got an audience with Sophia Conde. That's the adjutant to the chairman? <laughs> you sure we should be trusting her? If you think she's using us, why'd you give her the time of day? You got some secret plan to double-cross the board? I knew it! Uh, sorry, I probably shouldn't have said that out loud. I know we're freelancers and all, we take work where we can find it, but we gotta be vigilant, you know? This is how the board gets you. A job here, an errand there, before you know it, you're calling him sir and ma'am. Just trying to watch out for you, boss. I appreciate your time. Let's get back to it. I've kept myself busy in your absence. Optimized my formula. I'm now confident I can revive the remaining colonists. All I need now is the dimethyl sulfoxide. I'll take as much as you can give me.
thank you. You've brought me enough chemicals to get started, at least. I'm just sorry they came at the cost of human lives. Those poor people, they must have died in agony. What exactly was the board trying to accomplish? You say the board's trying to freeze their subjects over and over again without inflicting permanent damage? Well, they're nowhere close to solving that problem. Something about this feels wrong. I don't know why the board would ever conduct such an experiment, unless they're working on some kind of hibernation technology. I'll tell you this much. The board scientists are hopelessly lost. After years of fruitless experimentation, they've made exactly zero progress. I know! I've suspected as much for years. Of course, I don't expect the board to do a thing about it. They've been driving our colonies to the brink of destruction for decades. The board's mismanagement put our colony on the road to collapse. If we don't put a stop to them, thousands of colonists are going to die. Hold on. Let me see if I understand this correctly. You're saying that Halcyon's on the brink of total collapse? And the chairman's plan to save all of us is to save himself? I always knew Halcyon was heading toward a system's collapse, but I never imagined we were already there. The board made this crisis, and now they want to solve it by freezing the rest of us? That's not a plan. That's a goddamn escape clause. Do you realize what this means for the Hope? For your fellow colonists? The board's going to kill them all. Toss them out into space, just to make room in their hibernation chambers. Short of lining up every member of the board and shooting them in the back of the head. Do you know what's waiting for us on the Hope? Scientists, engineers, artists, the brightest minds Earth ever sent us, uncorrupted by the board. The board's going to dispose of them all and transform the Hope into a prison for the rest of us. They're likely on their way to the Hope as we speak. We need to get to those colonists before the board. I have enough chemicals to start reviving a few of them, but no easy way to get them off the Hope. Merciful gibbering law! You're a genius! We bring the Hope to us. Skip the entire ship across the distance of colony space. Right next to my lab. Yes, yes, exactly. You're a step ahead of me, but I perceive the shape of your plan. If we link up the Hope to the Unreliable, then use your navigational computer to calculate a reasonably safe vector, we can skip the entire colony ship into the rings of Terra 2. I don't know much about skip drives, not the physics, anyhow. I do know the Hope's real massive. How is our bitty little ship supposed to skip it? Excellent question, my sharp-witted mechanic. You will use your own ship to power up the Hope's skip drive. Your navigational computer can handle the rest. Experimental methods for killing noxious life forms are not covered under this unit's limited liability agreement. Well said, whatever you are. You'll need to switch on the Hope's auxiliary power using the unreliable. Then, head to the bridge. Your navigational computer, Ada, should be able to activate the Hope skip drive. Once you've skipped the Hope next to my lab, I'll have easy access to the frozen colonists. I can start reviving them immediately. I know you're wondering why I'm doing all this. Why I believe the people on the Hope are the answer to the colony's problems. The Hope is carrying some of humanity's most brilliant thinkers. Scientists, engineers, experts in their field. If we work together, we can still find a way to save Halcyon. The board would have us believe Halcyon is beyond saving. I choose to believe otherwise. If there's even the slightest chance we can save Halcyon from oblivion, then we have to take it. You absolutely should. The adjutant must have sent you some kind of tracking code. If you don't use the code, she'll suspect you betrayed her. I think you should use the code and send a corrupted tracking signal. That should buy me some time. The board 
was going to catch up to me sooner or later. This way, I'll have time to set up some particularly nasty defenses. Use my communications terminal to corrupt the tracking signal. While the board busies themselves trying to decipher it, I'll have plenty of time to prepare my defenses. You have a message from Adjutant Sophia Akande. I'm impressed, Captain. I almost expected you wouldn't go through with it. Unfortunately, Dr. Wells found a way to corrupt the signal before we could pinpoint his location. Still, it's only a matter of time before we find him. Come visit me in Byzantium. We need to have a talk about the future of this colony. Transmissions are so impersonal. I'd like to meet you face to face. Meet me in my office. I've authorized your ship at my personal landing pad. Adjutant Akande has ended her call. Rather rudely, if I might say, considering she didn't sign off. Will there be anything else, Captain? I admit, part of me expected you to stand by your old friend. For better or worse, Wells was responsible for putting you back on your feet. That said, he's also a wanted criminal. For information regarding his whereabouts, you are entitled to collect a reward from Percival. I understand you've infiltrated the Ministry. The things you discovered there must have been shocking, even disturbing. Halcyon is on the verge of a total systems collapse. The truth is ugly and difficult to accept, but we must accept the truth before we can move forward. Malnutrition is already a problem. Disease will come next, far by extinction. I know this must come as a surprise to you. I imagine you have questions. I'll answer however I can. The Lifetime Employment Program is not some malevolent strategy of an evil mastermind. There's no dark secret buried in the fine print. The program is logical, it's reasonable, it's merciful. And most importantly, it will work. Byzantium is the beating heart of our colony. And as long as Byzantium survives, Halcyon may one day recover from the collapse. We must protect this city at any cost. Help me execute the Lifetime Employment Program, and you will have earned a place of honor in Byzantium. You will live in comfort and want for nothing. We've already crossed the point of no return. The collapse has already begun. You must have noticed the signs in Emerald Vale. Malnutrition, disease, high mortality rates. This is a permanent famine, Captain. We've done all we can to curb their hunger. Very soon, people are going to realize they're starving. A famine is a problem of logistics as well as marketing. Your workers must remain productive on as little food as possible, and they must always believe that food is plentiful. Before you interfered in Roseway, Dr. Anton Crane was on the verge of developing a powerful appetite suppressant. It would have made his career. The solution is a temporary one. Before long, our workers are going to feel the effects of starvation. The Lifetime Employment Program is our only viable option. When you turned Phineas Wells over to me, I knew I could rely on you. You've demonstrated your ability to place duty above sentiment. And you deliver results. That quality alone is enough to separate you from the board's army of indecisive bureaucrats. Do you know how many meetings I have to sit through? How many papers I have to sign before I can make one decision? I'm only trying to rescue Halcyon from extinction. I can't save this colony alone. I need someone capable of working outside the system. Someone who can get things done. When I first discovered the truth, I was shocked, even disgusted. 
I wondered how we'd allowed a colony like Halcyon to fall into disarray. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized the colony had sown the seeds of its own destruction. We have become lazy and decadent. We smother ourselves in meaningless bureaucracies. We deliberate and argue and procrastinate. I admit, I occasionally fantasize about making an executive decision without having some tedious committee questioning my every move. Do you have any idea how much paperwork is involved in ordering someone's execution through the usual channels? It's positively maddening. We need to talk about Emerald Vale. You handed Edgewater over to a band of dissidents. I can't have this. Adelaide McDevitt and her people have no place in the Halcyon that is to come. Edgewater needs to go. I want you to wipe the town out. No survivors. You replaced a loyal, if hard-headed, town leader with a revolutionary. Adelaide's people have turned Edgewater into a hub of dissidents. These people are dangerous. They're going to become more dangerous after the collapse. We need to put them down. Now. The dissidents currently occupying Edgewater answer to no one. They're an unknown, unpredictable variable, and I can't have that. I'm not asking you to be a murderer. I'm asking you to be a surgeon. Edgewater is a necrotic limb on the body of the colony. It must be severed. Don't fool yourself. The dissidents occupying Edgewater are rebels harboring dangerous and seditious ideas. Left to their own devices, their numbers will grow. Graham Bryant and his merry band of morons caused enough trouble on Monarch. I won't risk the same thing happening in Edgewater. No, allowing thousands of colonists to starve to death because we couldn't make one cold-blooded decision is insane. What I'm suggesting is absolutely logical. Steal your spine, Captain. Do what needs to be done. Edgewater is beyond saving. We're going to have to erase the town, but we're going to do it systematically. You were in the Emerald Vale geothermal plant. Do you remember what you discovered there? There was an accident at the Emerald Vale geothermal plant many years ago. Auto mechanicals turned hostile and slaughtered the plant's workers. Tragic, really. In fact, Spacer's Choice manufactured the incident for an insurance claim. They outfitted their mechanicals with a termination protocol, which is exactly what we need. The insurance claim has been locked in committee for years, but the individual responsible for the accident was promoted for lateral thinking. I'm arranging for a delivery of mechanicals to Edgewater. These mechanicals have been equipped with the same termination protocol, which must be activated from a terminal in the plant. Once the mechanicals are finished cleaning out Edgewater, I'll need you to go in and clean out the mechanicals. Understand? One last thing. Spacer's Choice sent a team of soldiers to investigate your little misadventure in the geothermal plant. Tread lightly. Report back to me when the job's done. I have the hope. I need you to reroute to connect me to the Hope's comm system so I can convince her central computer to enable the skip drive. If your calculations are even slightly off, you could crash the entire colony ship into Terra too. For the sun. You know, when they posted us here, I told them there wasn't any point. Nobody would be so stupid as to fly to the ass end of the colony for this derelict. Shows how much I know. You've got about five seconds to tell me what you're doing here before I make you take a walk outside. Look, 
Explode? Holy shit. All right. You'll want a uniform so my staff doesn't shoot you on sight. Their dangerous mix of bored and trigger happy. We've got a few extra in the old badge station to my right. Good luck. Can you hear me, Captain? I have successfully integrated myself into the Hope's comm systems, and am attempting to establish contact with the Hope's more primitive processor now. Would you like me to play a mood-suitable music selection while you travel to the bridge? Oh, sorry. File not found. I am speaking to you through the HELPS computer system. It's a rather cramped feeling, but it'll do. Are you sure? That is extremely dangerous. Skipping the HELP will void the warranty on the skip drive. And also potentially kill an entire planet. How is my humor now, Captain? Improved? Jump starting the skip drive. Destination set to the rings of Terra 2. Doing it. I mean, affirmative. Skipping the hope in three, two, one. ADA, does your captain seriously intend to do a micro jump in system with engines that haven't been powered in 70 years on a derelict ship? That is what my captain intends, yes. But that is a gross misuse of the skip drive. The Zero Point Drives Corp and I will not be held responsible for any damage incurred during transport and this will cause extreme damage. Yes, I am aware of that. You should not be doing this. The humans will die. Thank you, Hope. It looks like all systems are go. Captain, I would advise you to hold on to something, now. I am receiving a transmission from Dr. Wells. Captain, I shall now play the transmission I received from Dr. Wells. Thank the Lord you warned me. I was able to get some defenses up, but they might not be enough. The board has sent some serious firepower to pry me out of here. They're trying to get in here, and I'm not sure I can stop them. If they capture me, if we can't communicate again, there's something very important you need to remember. The board, all their lackeys, they're all a bunch of swine. Do you hear me? They're fucking corporate swine! You fucking pigs! I'll take you all out with me! I'll never... It would seem the recording captured some rather dire events. I presume you'll want to dock at the orbital lab to check on your associate as soon as possible? How can I be of assistance? Muting volume now. Sanitation and maintenance job fulfilled.
Captain, as it appears we may soon be embarking for a maximum security prison planet, I believe the crew would like to speak with you to, as you humans put it, air some concerns. So, Phineas got himself taken to Tartarus. That's usually a one-way trip. And here we are, entertaining the notion of busting him out. That's insane, and likely a hell of a lot of fun. To extract the scientist, you will need to infiltrate the labyrinth. But that course of action is likely to be quite dangerous, Captain. I am programmed to warn you whenever you exhibit inclinations toward risky behavior. Breaking into Tartarus will not be easy. Getting in is the simple part. It's getting out again that's the trouble. Trust me, I know. Let's just do it. Kick down some doors, grab Doc Wells, and cut a path out. We don't need a plan. We got guns. If you really mean to do this, you should see to your final affairs and close out any unfinished business. Once you sneak into Tartarus, you may be there a while. Or permanently. It's the craziest plan I've ever heard. And I mean that as a compliment. You didn't hire me to think. And I ain't about to start now. You're my boss. And I'll walk into fire with you. I think it's insane. But maybe the colony needs a healthy dose of insanity right about now. I know it's dangerous. And I won't lie and say I'm not scared out of my wits. But I couldn't live with myself if we didn't do something. You're asking for more than bravery from us, Captain. But there are worse ways to... Sam, get the grime out! It's what our units do best. The entire plan is a terrible idea. But I admire your bravado, Captain. Which leads me to illogically believe, against the odds, that you will be successful. If we don't make it, at least it'll be a great story. Got my trusty tossball stick. Got my ass-kicking boots. I'm ready, boss. Outstanding. You can count on us, Captain. We're crew. For real crew. That means we got each other's backs. Right? Never thought I'd volunteer to break into a prison. Seems like your tendency towards risky behavior is rubbing off on me, Captain. Command not recognized. Waiting on your command, Captain. I am pleased to inform you that we have arrived at the Labyrinth. Please be advised that the punishment for trespassing is execution. Please be advised that electrical storms on the surface of Tartarus make departure impossible at this time. Oh, speak of the devil. Captain, I am receiving a transmission from the prison's docking authority now. Attention, unauthorized spacecraft. This is a maximum security installation. Your presence here is an explicit violation of UDL corporate policy. You are hereby confined to your docking platform until a ticket detailing your crimes has been filed and notarized, at which point your vessel will be seized and you will be executed. I'm sorry, you people? Did you just cast a generalization on upstanding UDL employees? That's a fine of 200 bits. You're up to 5,708, not including the cost of your execution and the disposal of your remains, which will be assessed posthumously. All right, I'm feeling generous. I'm transmitting the idea of a productive, law-abiding employee so you can see what one looks like before you die. Anyway, Tartarus Docking Authority signing up. Hang on. Another ship just pulled into your dock. Wait, is that from the Groundbreaker? What the? Pay no mind to that. Just have a pleasant day. Transmission terminated. Biometric ID received. Transferring data to external cartridge. How can I be of assistance? Take care. I require a functioning captain to run the ship. The captain did right by us once. What? Now it's what our turn. Something? The board will never own Groundbreaker. Not while I breathe. Push on, Mardak! Citation assessment. The Labyrinth on Tartarus. Task classification. Easy peasy. This might be the loneliest place in the whole system.
Let's go, troops. Stellar base counting on us. All right, MSI. I'm not one for rousing speeches, but the captain needs our help. So get in there and fight! Fugitive is a fugitive. Let it go. The chairman is still.
look who it is. I'll be damned. I was prepping the studio for our announcement, and here you are as a bonus. I had heard you'd taken a mechanic under your wing. What's the matter, girl? Couldn't find actual employment? The captain's treated me right. Better than any of you bored folk ever have. I'm exactly where I want to be. And... Oh, I, I had heard you were dragging around a repurposed janitorial mechanical. My staff jokes that it's because you're a walking pile of refuse. Interactive database updated. The unique organic substance labeled Chairman has been classified as filth imminent for incineration. When you go off and get yourself shot, try to avoid taking one to the face. I'll want it recognizable to show to my citizens. My word! You've correctly identified the most recognizable man in the colony. Remarkable. It's a wonder what Phineas saw in you. Then again, he's an insane person. Thankfully, he's our insane person now. A proper company man. Yes, he is an extraordinarily obstinate fellow, isn't he? Fine, he isn't working for us per se. Semantics, he'll come around. But that's between us. As far as my adoring citizens will know, we've turned a dangerous crackpot into a working-class man. It's a miracle. Oh, yes, go on, wake them up, add more mouths to feed. That'll solve our starvation problems. I don't know what half-baked plans that simpleton in a lab coat has been leading you through, but it's done. It's over. Let me ask you something. Our entire society? We're helping, which is more than you can say. I'm making actual progress towards stabilization and recovery. You're just getting in the way. Oh, right. This coming from the psychopathic outlaw. Yes, I'll try to be more open-minded about your path of wanton dissent. We don't need your help. I'll admit, there's no shortage of talent in the scientists and engineers there. Look. I'm not an unreasonable man. If you manage to storm the castle, as it were, and make it out of here with Phineas alive... Uh, I can't exactly afford more havoc than you've already caused. Fine. If you survive, you'll need someone to sell the rest of the board on your plan. complicating my life. You've been working with Dr. Wells from the beginning. When we moved to arrest him, he was prepared. I lost good soldiers in the attempt. You've disrupted the balance of power. You've upset the natural order of things. You've introduced uncertainty, and there is nothing I despise more than uncertainty. I'm afraid I can't do that. To your credit, Captain, you are one of the colony's finest specialists. Your technical abilities are beyond reproach. For all your talents, you are the enemy of Halcyon, and therefore you are my enemy. Our partnership is behind us. You had your chance to work with me, but you elected to, as the common worker might say, throw in with that demented old test tube jockey. Dr. Wells is being held in my custody. His cooperation will prove invaluable, even if I have to beat it out of him. All that's left to do is put down this riot, arrest you, and then get on with the bloody business of saving this colony. Fair enough. 
I'm giving you exactly one chance to parlay with me. Interesting that you think I'm going to die here. I believe I'm more than capable of taking you on. Did you really think I would make this easy on you? I've devoted my entire life to protecting Halcyon. I'm not afraid to die in the line of duty. Don't you think I know that? Yes, I made mistakes. Costly mistakes. Leaving you alive was the worst of them all. You were always an unknown variable. I tried to recruit you. But you threw your lot in with that madman, Phineas Wells. I'm aware of Dr. Wells' plan. Revive some brilliant scientists and engineers from the Hope and work with them to save the colony. He's already revived you, after all. Fifty or sixty years ago, I might have agreed with you. But we've passed the point of no return. The best scientists in Halcyon can't save us now. I appreciate your confidence, Captain. But so long as you're allied with Dr. Wells, we can never work together. I haven't given up on the program yet. You've caused some complications, but I can improvise. I can fix this. I haven't lost control of the Labyrinth yet. Our security system is still operational. I can still put a stop to you. When you put it that way, no. Not in the least. Damn it all. Very well. You win. I'm familiar enough with your methods to realize my chances of survival are low. Congratulations, Captain. You've outplayed me. I accept your terms and will return Dr. Wells to your care. I just hope you've made the right decision. The fate of the colony is in your hands now. I bid you farewell, Captain. You don't know how glad I am to see you. You must have said something to get under Akande's skin. She's gone. And I don't think she's coming back. And you, you lunatic, you broke into the board's own fortress just to rescue one doddering old man. You are absolutely out of your mind, and I can't begin to thank you enough. I'm all right, thanks to you. Akande wanted my cooperation. I'm quite sure she would have beaten it out of me if you hadn't arrived. You've broken the board's stranglehold on this colony, and you saved my life. But there's still so much we have yet to accomplish. You and I are going to have to work harder than ever to save Halcyon. I'm afraid the situation is far worse than any of us ever anticipated. Earth has gone dark. We haven't received a single message in three years. There's been no communication, no signals, nothing. Two years ago, the Earth's Directorate's frigate disappeared on their way back to Earth. We don't know what they discovered when they arrived, or if they arrived at all. You mean... we're all alone out here? Really alone? I'm afraid so, Miss Holcomb. Halcyon is the only home we have left. Returning to Earth is no longer an option. We're in serious trouble, my friend. Do you know what this means for Halcyon? We can't rely on Earth for support anymore. We've been cut loose. We're entirely on our own. Yes, we do. You've done a marvelous thing. You've succeeded where anyone else would have failed, including me. We must begin the revival process immediately, starting with the Hope's brightest minds, and then we're going to fix this damn colony, one problem at a time. We're going to need a leader. You. What do you say, old friend? Will you help us? The chairman? Oh, 
I don't know why you let that heartless creature live, but I'll have to trust your judgment. You're the best thing to ever happen to Halcyon. If you want to take it upon yourself to lead this colony, you have my support. We're not a colony any longer, are we? Our last connection to Earth has been severed, and so we have been set free. Our future is uncertain, and no one knows what tomorrow holds. Exciting, isn't it? This happens according to the grand plan. But the stranger that arrived in Halcyon was an unplanned variable. From the moment he landed in Emerald Vale, his actions altered the course of history. The events on Tartarus brought about the end of the board's authority. But the board's mistakes would haunt the colony for decades to come. The damage they left behind would require the work of a generation to repair. Dr. Phineas Wells began reviving a handful of the Hope's colonists. Engineers, scientists, technicians, and intellectuals. They were among the brightest minds the Earth had ever sent out into the stars. The Hope scientists and engineers woke up in a colony descending headlong into total collapse. With no way to return to Earth, they had no choice but to band together and devote themselves to the cause of saving Halcyon. The people of Halcyon were nothing if not hardy. In the absence of the board's authority, many of the colony's settlements banded together with a single purpose in mind, survival. Life was especially hard in the years to come. Some towns dissolved by attrition and starvation, but most of them found a way to carry on. In the years to come, Halcyon was forced to reckon with its newfound freedom. The board was gone, and for better or worse, the colony was responsible for its own destiny. Between MSI's worker-centric policies and the iconoclast's manpower, Sanjar and Zora were able to rally many of the Terra 2 townships to their cause. MSI's workforce swelled, and the iconoclasts enjoyed a significant surge in their ranks. The board was too distracted by infighting and internal politics to stop MSI from becoming a powerful corporation and a refuge for townships that might have fallen through the cracks. Consumed by paranoia, Lilia Hagen took Sublight Salvage in a controversial direction, openly accusing board officials of an extraterrestrial conspiracy. One day, an accident at the Groundbreakers' docking bay silenced her forever. Time would tell if her replacement could keep the Sublight family together. Adelaide McDevitt replaced Reed Thompson as the leader of Edgewater. She and her followers transformed Edgewater in their image. Anyone loyal to Reed was pressured into leaving town, and those who stayed behind adapted to her way of life. Adelaide transformed the old cannery into a new garden. The nearby Edgewater Cemetery provided a convenient source of fertilizer. Under the leadership of June Lay Tennyson, the Groundbreaker held firm against corporate influence. The ship's mechanical stability gave Junle the time to educate a promising generation of engineers schooled in her family's traditions. The future of the Groundbreaker looks promising. The rediscovery of the hope and the abandonment of the lifetime employment program forced Byzantium to come to terms with some uncomfortable realities about the state of Halcyon. While Byzantines were reluctant to surrender the luxuries they'd grown accustomed to, the board's diminished authority gave them little choice in the matter. Nearly everyone had to learn to make do with less. Some even had to get jobs. It was a dark time indeed. Your influence shifted Ellie's perspective. She finally admitted, albeit grudgingly, that she just might need other people. Sometimes. With a steady income from the life insurance payouts, she was finally able to afford a ship of her own. She hired a small crew and flew supply missions to communities on the fringe. Some of them were even legal. Life in Halcyon was sobering for Felix Millstone. The grand revolution he dreamed of never came. 
There was no great awakening for the colony, no celebrations in the streets. There was only the hard, desperate work of trying to repair a broken colony. Felix never had a head for numbers, but if there was labor to be done, he was there to help. Eventually, Felix realized that the work of a revolution was done with two hands. As much as he enjoyed his adventures aboard the Unreliable, the vicar known as Max eventually decided that it was time to move on, to live out the life he had sought so long to create. He knew there were many in the colony who carried burdens much worse than the ones he had struggled with, and he devoted himself to easing their suffering wherever he could. He only ever took up arms again to defend the defenseless. Unshackled from a lifetime of striving and fighting the universe and himself, Vicar Maximilian de Soto was finally at peace. Once the matter with the Hope colonists was resolved, June Lay bashfully asked Parvati if she'd like to join her permanently on the Groundbreaker, and Parvati enthusiastically, if somewhat awkwardly, agreed. The stories of her adventures spread across the colony, and Parvati soon found herself the center of attention. Having served as the engineer of a renowned spacecraft, tramp freighters and wildcat miners sought her out by name, and in no time, she was a fixture in the Groundbreaker's mechanical ecosystem. She and Jun Lei were never far apart. Nioka returned to Monarch to take another crack at making a permanent life for herself. She formed the Charon Group, a mercenary outfit of ragtag survivalists and wilderness experts. Anyone in need of a guide or just looking to throw back a beer and swap stories could find her camping on the trail or clearing an infestation. The SAM unit that accompanied you spread awareness of the product line's superior sanitation and maintenance capabilities across what was left of the colony. This led to a boost in SAM unit sales. Did you know that SAM units are the longest lasting, toughest acting cleaning solution in Halcyon? Minister Clark was released from house arrest and his contact with you gave him a sense of renewed purpose and vigor. Once it became clear that no help would be coming from Earth, he threw his considerable efforts and talents into helping Halcyon manage the crisis before it. It was widely suspected that Sophia Akande was the true power behind Chairman Rockwell. However, after the riots on Tartarus, she was never again seen in the colony. Various theories circulated as to her fate. Some believed she boarded an interstellar ship capable of journeying to a distant colony. Others believed she died trying to escape Tartarus. Some few suggest she fled to Monarch, where she continued to live among a small band of loyalists. There is another theory, which suggests that Sophia's encounter with you changed her, and she deliberately retreated from public view, but continued supporting the colony in secret. When Dr. Wells began reviving the Hope's colonists, he found himself with a sudden windfall of additional supplies and resources, courtesy of an anonymous donor. If Wells knew who his supplier was, he never told a soul. Chairman Rockwell served as the public face for the changes in Halcyon to come. Whenever you needed strings pulled or a voice to sell a policy change, Rockwell was only too happy to oblige. As for Dr. Phineas Wells, he spent his remaining years in his orbital lab. He eventually came to terms with his own past and was able to forgive the mistakes of his younger self by devoting his remaining years to serving the colony. Dr. Wells was able to revive many more scientists and engineers than he first expected, thanks to the additional batch of chemicals you stole from the Ministry. Wells never forgot about the human lives that were lost in acquiring these chemicals. In the end, Dr. Wells was able to save every scientist and engineer aboard the Hope. Over the next decade, nearly all of the Hope's remaining colonists were successfully revived. Halcyon saw a period of rapid technological and scientific advancement. Breakthroughs in dietary supplements saved the colony from starvation. Geoengineering projects and social reforms began to change the structure and character of the colony. Dr. Wells laid the groundwork for the project to save the colony, 
but he would never live to see the fruits of his labor. He passed away a few years later. His work was carried on by the scientists and engineers he revived. Today, Halcyon has stabilized. The people of the colony work hard to adapt to their new circumstances. Nearby colonies send aid and supplies. Life will never be easy in Halcyon, but for the first time in its history, there exists a sense of real, genuine hope about the future. And what about you, the unplanned variable in the history of Halcyon? You brought an end to the chaos on Tartarus and made Chairman Rockwell your own puppet, a role he was all too eager to play. The colony never realized you were the true power behind the new administration. By acting vicariously through agents and third parties, you controlled Halcyon from the shadows. As a result, Halcyon survived the turbulent years that were to follow. No one knows what's happened to Earth, and no one knows what the future has in store for Halcyon. All we know for certain is this. The name of the unreliable and that of its intrepid captain will remain the subject of countless stories for years to come.